state government. Its objective is to help to formulate suitable policy or provide a suitable solution for a specific problem using ICT and emerging technologies in digital arena. Forums will promote blockchain technology and its usage in public administration and government agencies. The forum aims to develop as an intellectual platform, a community with wider acceptance and shall be more focused on public services. Its goal is to contribute to digital economy towards Atma Nirbhar Bharat. Welcome to inaugural event on Blockchain Revolution 2022 by Blockchain for Productivity Forum in association with Broadcast Engineering Society, the Institute of Engineers IETE Centers, PAN India and IETE Alumni Association. In the special endeavor to, uh, to bring Blockchain for Productivity Forum, BES and IETE alumni and IETE centers together, let's first discuss about the collaboration Blockchain for Productivity Forum and BES in a fully progressive way. Uh, let me first introduce Blockchain for Productivity Forum, the main organizers of the event. Blockchain for Productivity Forum is incorporated for disseminating knowledge among people, cooperation and centers and state government. Its objective is to help formulate suitable policy or provide suitable solution for a specific problem using ICT and emerging technologies in digital arena. Forum uh, will promote blockchain technology and its usage in public administration and government agencies. Now talking about its collaboration partner, Broadcast Engineering Society, BES. The society was established in April 1987 with the main objective to promote the advancement and dissemination of knowledge and practices of broadcasting in the field of radio and TV and to enhance the knowledge of broadcast engineering professionals and projecting the interest of broadcast engineers at national and international level. Be he S has approximately 2,500 individual members and 40 corporate members. BE is one of the founder members of Engineering Council of India. It is affiliated to Society of Broadcast Engineers, Indianapolis, USA, with an agreement with National Association of Broadcasters, USA. It is also working closely with Asia Pacific Broadcasting Union, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, UNESCO, IGNU, Prasar Bharti, and Ministry of Information and Broadcasting Government of India. The event also being supported by IETE Alumni Association and IETE Centers. The Institute of Electronic and uh, Telecommunication Engineers is India's leading professional society devoted to the advancement of yeah. science and technology of Government of India. Uh, Knowledge of Government of India has recognized IETE as zero and also notified as an educational institute of national eminences. IETE Alumni Association was uh, registered in 2013 as a non-profit uh, society and is dedicated to bringing together the IETE alumni community on a common platform to build another channel of personal and professional support to members through self-help within the community. IETE alumni are spread the world over and figure among who's who worldwide. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to introduce Dr. Shiv Kumar, who will be enlightening our esteemed audience about the ongoing topic. Dr. Shiv Kumar, Director General, Blockchain for Productivity Forum. Uh, is a skill builder, mentor, and innovative solution provider for IPv6 network design and security, cybersecurity, blockchain, and industry 4.0. Possesses 3.5 decades of multi dimensional experience in telecom, IT, and digital technologies. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Uh, how's the weekend vibe? Uh, I would like you to request now to please pour in some resourceful thoughts. Our audience will be. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shelly, for the nice information on the blockchain for the productivity forum on the, you know, the, the one of the collaboration partner, Broadcast Engineering Society, and also IET, the IET Alumni, Alumni Association. Uh, thank you very much. And good morning, all of you. It's really excellent, very nice weather here in Delhi. And uh, here inside the digital room, the virtual room, we are going to create the warmness through our excellent speakers the, throughout the uh, country and the globe, we have got it. So ladies and gentlemen, respected, we have the chief guest of the event today, uh, Dr. Suresh Chand Babu. He's the executive director of the SATS, which is the organization under the 
principal scientific advisor, PSA to the government of India. We have the guest of honor, Sri G. Naren Nath. He's the guest of honor of the today's function. And we have the chairman of our Bharat Broadband Forum, Dr. Shatya N. Gupta. Then we have the dignities from the, you know, our uh, KB Damodaran sir, the CEO, and we have the governing council members. We have, uh, we have the people, eminent dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen. Today, uh, we'll go comparatively fast. We will, we have decided to cut down the general talk and uh, we have uh, basically decided to give more time to our speakers. Sir, I'm giving the brief of the day today, how we are going to go ahead. Are you getting my screen? Yes. Yes, sir. We are. We are. Yeah. So this is the day two of the blockchain revolution 2022. This is the theme is blockchain for the governance and the social impact and uh, emphasis will be on the efficiency, security and the trust. The event will uh, has started say 1030, it will go up to four o'clock. And our supporting partners are the SATs, STPI, we have the Alumni Association of the IIT, then the CDAP, IIT Kanpur, and we have the various centers across India from the IETE. To begin with, uh, after just a brief introductory talk uh, from my side, we will have the, from SN Gupta sir, the chairman blockchain forum, he will be welcoming the, all the audience. Then we have Sunil sir, he is the president broadcast engineering society and additional director general of the Prasar Bharti. Then we will have the support partners uh, from the IIT, uh, various centers and the, and, and the IIT alumni, uh, Dr. Sitaram Babu, then uh, Dr. Niranjan, Dr. Parag Walankar, then the Dr. J.K. Mandal and B.V. Rishi. And then we have uh, Lieutenant General Rajesh Pant, uh, who is basically uh, traveling to Australia. So he has sent a message, we'll play his message. And uh, we have requested uh, Sri G. Naren Nath Joint Secretary, National Security Council, Secretariat of the PMO to be there and uh, we, see the, we see him. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, then we have Chief Guest, Dr. Sarat Babu, sir. I see, uh, see him also. Then we have technical sessions from uh, Sri Raj Kapoor, uh, Dr. VK Murthy, Chris Kojins from the UK. Then we have Dr. Sandeep Sukla from IIT Kanpur. We have Ms. P.R. Lakshmi Ishwari from the CDAC, is the head of the CDAC Hedrava Center. Then we have on the panelists. So we have decided that there will be a technical session separately, then we will have a panel discussion. And on the panel discussion, all will be open for the question and all will be able to switch on the video and ask the questions. So the panelists will be Mr. Sunil from the Indian Broadcast Services. Then we have Onop Balsa, then Mr. J.A. Chaudhary, then we have uh, Mrs. P.R. Lakshmi Ishwari, and it will be followed by the concluding remark, and we'll give the brief about the next move of the forum, what we are, what are the activities which has been planned. Already we have a couple of activities planned in the physical mode, as well as on the online mode. So subsequently, we'll have from our CEO, Dr. K.V. Damodaran, he's the blockchain forum CEO, so he will be giving the, he will be concluding and giving the vote of thanks. So, dear all, are you all set? Should we start? Are you excited? Yes. Great. So without taking much time, uh, I hand over back to Sally. Uh, thank you, sir, for sharing your vision and ideas with us. Um, I thus feel immensely honored to be part of such a prodigious event, which embarks visionaries and bring forth ardent and eminent personalities. Now, moving on, ladies and gentlemen, uh, now gracing the occasion with his brilliant ideas and surplus knowledge, uh, Dr. Satyan Gupta, I welcome you. And uh, before going in depth analysis of today's discussion, allow me to introduce our, our uh, respected guest. 
Dr. Satya N. Gupta is Chairman of Blockchain for Productivity Forum and Bharat IPv6 Forum, Secretary General ITU, APT Foundation of India and Chairman Bluetown, India and BIMSTEC, South Asia. Satya N. Gupta is an analyst, author and advisory on ICT-related policies and businesses. He worked as principal advisor, try and at level of additional secretary in the government. He authored a concept called Job Factory, Converting Unemployment into Entrepreneurship. His recent research hotspot as managed services got recently awarded PhD by Commonwealth Vocational University. Welcome, sir. Welcome to this uh, huge, uh, hugely success webinar. Uh, please, I would request you to enlighten us uh, with your vision of uh, words. Uh, may I request? all others to keep their mic mute and also while eating anything please uh, please put off your video off thank you sir please put your mic uh, on the mute thanks for all your support thank you sir go ahead sir okay thank you sally and dr shri for such a elaborate introduction of myself and the forum good morning everyone honorable uh, Dr. Sharad Chandar Babu Garu, the chief guest, and honorable our friends, uh, Mr. G. Narendra Nadji, the guest of honor, and all our eminent speakers of the day. It's indeed a great honor and pleasure to be talking. And as uh, Dr. Shiva mentioned, I'll be brief, and especially I'll avoid the repetition because a lot of work is already done by Madam Shelley. Actually, the broad uh, blockchain for productivity forum has have been mentioned and we have registered it as a trust because trust is the biggest thing which blockchain brings to the table. If someone asks what blockchain does for me or what blockchain does, according to me, blockchain have a solution to any problem on the earth actually. So it's like Aladdin ka chirag, what they call it actually. But one thing if you have to say about blockchain is they bring the trust actually. So I actually call blockchain bringing a booster dose to the digital infrastructure. Till now we have been talking about the digital infrastructure and we have been talking access to all transparent open access, all these things. But trust is still missing there actually and that is what blockchain brings so it's it's a booster dose for the digital infrastructure and from yesterday also you would have seen the blockchain actually have the 5t paradigm in its elements and attributes the top of the t's of course is trust then what it brings to the table is transparency. The next one is traceability. Traceability is such an important thing. As you know, we are having a debate on the WhatsApp messages, the fake news. The WhatsApp message till now, the regulators and security agencies are struggling actually, how to reach to the origination of a WhatsApp message blockchain can bring that kind of traceability the tamper proofness actually blockchain though it is a series or a chain of blocks but whatever block is there in the blockchain it cannot be altered it is immutable tamper proof actually they use hash digital signature and the cryptography to achieve that then it is transactional. The, any transaction which happens can be actually controlled there. And that is what is make it a trusted technology or a technology which brings trust to everything and especially to the digital infrastructure, which is still having some kind of gray areas as far as trust is concerned. And I'm really happy to welcome our G. Uh, uh, Narendra Nadji, actually, who is the father of the trusted source portal in the country, which is first time in the world 
that a government security agency have come out with a pragmatic and a paradigm shift on the how to test whether a equipment is trusted or not and the starting point is again the traceability the source itself how to reach to the source and how to make sure the source of the equipment what we are using is trusted because that is the starting point and so we will be listening from narendra nath ji about that so with that i will not be taking much time of course i just welcome all of you our guest of honor our chief guest all the experts which are will be speaking and it will be highly technical and i will call it a, it will be a booster dose than the yesterday and i am very happy to welcome lot of our participants who were there yesterday they have also come back even on a saturday so that shows their interest and that shows the our experts uh, Uh, who will be speaking that people really want to know and if i go by yesterday thing everything was simplified clarified and now we are there to learn the technology behind the blockchain and how it happens thanks a lot uh thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for taking time uh, from your busy schedule to be the guest speaker at our seminar your presence and wise words help us <laughs> apply our course in the best uh, possible way especially sir uh, why you comparing blockchain with aladdin ka chirag and booster dose i hope uh, it boosts transability trustability in coming years um, now moving ahead uh, to our next guest a guest who doesn't need an introduction a visionary whose integrity insight and inclusiveness have elevated the standard of leadership role let us heartily welcome shri sunil shri sunil is the president of broadcast engineering society and is additional director general with prasar bharti he is heading the international relations marketing distribution and center archives division at corporate level with over 3 decades experience in the field of broadcast engineering he has been member of the technical advisory group in sat coordination committee of isro shri sunil is winner of the abu broadcast engineering excellence award for 2018 He recently got elected to vice chairman of the Technical Bureau of Asia Pacific Broadcast Union. Had been a panelist international jury for ABU awards and one of the judges of Association of International Broadcasters UK. He is also governing council member and honorary treasurer IETE. It's a great honor to have you here, sir. Today, your presence at the event made the day truly remarkable and blissful. I would uh, now request you to please share some of your thoughts with us and further enrich the session with your insightful comments. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Shelly. Eminent speakers, distinguished guests, my brethren, council members of BES and IIT, chairman IIT centers, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me a great pleasure to join you all to the second day of this conference today. focusing on blockchain for governance and social impact with emphasis on efficiency security and trust i on behalf of the india's public service broadcaster prasar bharti broadcast engineering society of india and iet welcome you all again to this event to take forward the discussions on this technology for transformation towards sustainable and resilient societies and to witness the insightful deliberations from the experts today Eminent speakers shared their vision yesterday with deep insights and very informative and inspiring findings. I congratulate all the speakers for their outstanding deliveries. Friends, by now we all know that blockchain is, in basic terms, a secure and encrypted digital database shared by all parties in a distributed network, and any transaction that occurs in a network is recorded, verified, and stored in the database. and visible to all the participants creating an unalterable transaction log which essentially results in a golden source of truth that everyone can trust that's primarily one of the reasons why it's called the technology of trust i briefly touched upon yesterday with my views on the use of this technology in the media and entertainment sector covering data security and monetization options implications for tv advertising licensing fees and royalties 
two way payments audience and broadcaster and this technology as the ultimate disruptor for cable and streaming services and to briefly reiterate the media sector is always innovating harnessing the latest and greatest technology to create and distribute content in this so called battle for eye and ears great innovation brings great hurdles and the media industry certainly has its share digital piracy in accurate royalty distributions fraudulent content and erroneous data to name just a few and that's where the decentralized ledger system blockchain comes in blockchain has the potential to transform several markets within media and entertainment but particularly those where participants would benefit from the security and transparency that blockchain would offer such as distribution of payments funding monetization and contract enforcement as content creators place media behind subscription based paywalls they may be missing out on revenue from consumers who aren't willing to pay for an entire subscription but who would pay a smaller fee to read a single article or binge watch a season of television show so essentially blockchain has the potential to increase profits for content creators and media companies and provide real time consumption based pricing this is one number 2 the centralized structure of the blockchain as explained yesterday by mr andrea could enable content creators such as musicians or writers to directly distribute their work to the consumers bypassing traditional distribution channels and leaving a larger share of revenue for content creators themselves this could impact everyone from the large media houses to independent bloggers helping artists from a direct relationship with the consumers third the collection and distribution of royalty payments in the music business has only become more complex and opaque with the growth of music streaming services each time a song is streamed online or played in the background of a tv show for instance the distributor must compensate the music's copyright holder of course disputes can arise over the accuracy and compensation rates of such royalties fourth smart contracts as mentioned yesterday by professor akhil damodaran built on a blockchain and attached to a given piece of music could add precision speed and trust to the process by executing contract terms automatically among eligible parties this would allow more accurate tracking of a song's usage song's usage quicker the royalty payments and more transparency over contract terms and the division of revenue among artists and stakeholders it would also likely disrupt or eliminate the role of the copyright collection associations which currently act as the centralized intermediaries in gathering payments for right holders and fifth illegal file sharing still remains a major problem for media companies while the blockchain has the potential to solve that problem with the blockchain content owners have full control and visibility of the consumption and number of uses of the individual songs and or movies therefore piracy and copyright infringements are nearly impossible an embedded blockchain mechanism tracks usage on streaming services radio stations television etc and automatically accumulates credits or disburses actual payments to the respective copyright owners and the ott platforms like netflix amazon's prime video and many more are the live examples today we are watching all this and the last on the cyber security from sony and disney to hbo and netflix hollywood has seen its fair share of hacks and data leaks in the recent years and it makes sense the stakes are high and many who work in the industry aren't always paying close attention to the internet security best practices blockchain employs sequential hashing cryptography and decentralized structure making transactions highly secure and virtually impenetrable for the hackers so for the media blockchain's potential benefits for the media industry primarily lead to the distribution monetization payment and transactions copyright tracking and cyber security blockchain's greatest characteristic stems from the fact that its transactions ledger for public address is open to view in financial systems and business this adds an unprecedented layer of accountability holding each sector of the business responsible to act with integrity towards the company's growth its community and the customers with the blockchain ledger each time an exchange of goods is recorded on a blockchain an audit trail is present to trace where the goods came from this can not only improve the security and prevent fraud in exchange related business but it can also help verify the authenticity of the traded assets friends having said this 
I'm delighted that we will hear from the distinguished speakers from both the public and private sectors today again, who will tell us more about the use of blockchain in their respective fields, ranging from financing to managing supply chains and the identity management. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the presence of our chief guest, Dr. N. Sharchan Babu, Executive Director SETS, Lieutenant Dr. Uh, Dr. Rajesh Pan from the PMO, Joint Secretary, uh, PMO, Mr. Narendra Nath, Chairman, Blockchain Foundation, Dr. S. N. Gupta, CEO Blockchain Forum, Dr. Damodaran, CEO India Blockchain Alliance, Sri Raj Kapoor, CEO Dr. Murthy, IIT Vilai, CEO Dragon Sale, Mr. Pelser, Mr. Chris Cousins, Mr. J. H. Chaudhary, uh, Professor Sandeep from IIT Kanpur, Dr. Shri Kumar, speakers as well as other participants for taking time to join this session. I wish you all a fruitful, insightful, and productive sharing today. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for briefly enhancing the uses of this revolutionized technology in media and entertainment. How in coming years, it will be more beneficial for the industry, therefore eliminating problems like copyright and many more. Thank you, sir, for enlightening and entertainment presentation. You nailed it. Uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, now moving on uh, to our next guest, uh, please allow me to introduce uh, Dr. Sita Rambabu. Dr. Uh, Sita Rambabu has 24 years of work experience in software engineering, worked in USA and Singapore for five years on multiple SAP projects. He's director of MVCR Engineering College and Matrusri Engineering College at Hyderabad past governing council member for education in Polytechnic Colleges of Samania Graduate Association. Uh, he's governing council member for the Institute of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering and past vice chairman of Hyderabad Center. Uh, also, he's past EC member twice for Board's Broadcast Engineering Society Hyderabad Center. Uh, welcome, sir. Welcome on board. Uh, we would like to know your constructive feedback on this ongoing discussion as we are very keen to learn and grasp. Welcome, sir. Uh, thank you very much, madam. I, I should uh, at the outset uh, thank uh, Shuji for uh, having uh, uh, made me part of this uh, event. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful event. To be very honest, uh, the Blockchain Revolution 2022 and beyond. And uh, uh, thanks for... Uh, uh, um, Satya Gupta Garu, Shukumarji, and uh, Damodaran. We are actually, in fact, going to have uh, uh, the uh, MOU with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the Blockchain uh, for Productivity Forum. In fact, we would like to go in a big way at uh, Hyderabad Center uh, since we are very active and we also want to have uh, this blockchain to be percolated to various college students. And, and also, and also, not only that, we also want to take this further to the government, also government, uh, state government of uh, the Andhra Pradesh or the Hyderabad, uh, uh, the Telangana Center. And uh, I should also thank uh, the um, our uh, governing council member uh, Sunil ji, since I'm also part of the Broadcasting Union Society for having uh, come coming uh, for having come forward with uh, such a great event of uh, blockchain uh, knowledge percolation to to all its members and also to the IET sharing that also transforming to the IET, IET members also. Uh, I, since I know the impact and the cascading uh, event that to follow after me, I would like to be very brief and also uh, thank the organizers for having come up with uh, such an excellent uh, topic on blockchain, rolling of the digital economy through usage of uh, various advanced technologies and uh, percolation of knowledge. So I thank the organizers for a wonderful event and uh, hope the event would be a success. Thank you and thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. I want to express my utmost gratitude uh, for taking out your precious time surrounded by inspiring and charismatic personalities. Whatever you do, always give 100% unless you are donating blood. <laughs> Moving on, Fox, I uh, would like to welcome our next guest speaker, uh, Dr. Niranjan Prasad. He's working as an additional director in Defense Electronics Research Laboratory, a premier electronic warfare research institute of DRDO under the Ministry of Defense, Government of India. Served to the nation for more than three and a half decades. He's member of governing council of IETE New Delhi and chairman skills development and industrial coordination committee of IETE. He's instrumental in the establishment of outdoor military radars and EW system testing center for the first time in India. 
Welcome, sir. Welcome uh, to this hugely success webinar. Uh, we would like to know your valuable insight to this discussion. Uh, can you hear, sir? Am I audible? Yes, audible. Yeah, I, I, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, very, very much, very yeah. much. Yeah. Good for it, yes, yes Shaili. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is my privilege. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sri Kumar ji, uh, Satyan Gupta ji, and uh, organizers of this national uh, important event. Uh, I really appreciate as a part of uh, my defense initiative, working on defense research and development organization various programs. Uh, we are very much concerned and also we appreciate the technology. The first introduction of technologies goes into the merit of the defense uh, infrastructure development, the weapon development, missiles, air, aircrafts, and so on. And we are part of that. Here, the blockchain, which is a which is mother of disruptors of all disruptive technologies. My role in the Institution of Electronics and Telecom Engineers as a chairman of uh, National Skill Development Industrial Coordination Committee, I have to make a, some kind of uh, ecosystem between the academics, uh, the researchers, and the industries, how to uh, give the, the actual uh, impetus on the, the required training on the technologies that are coming in, whether it is Internet of Things, whether it is cybersecurity, uh, blockchain, which obviously is the important topic of today, as well as uh, we are also focusing on various components of uh, our future war fighters, as far as India is prepared to go for, wherein all those technologies, all those combinations of technology will be embedded and to make the smart weapon system, to make the things cognitive, adaptive, and have all kinds of reali realism in that. So we are very much focusing this blockchain initiatives into the uh, training components uh, across all 65 uh, centers in India and abroad uh, through IET. Uh, this is a very good opportunity that I've been given to talk about the blockchain. Blockchain is going to revolutionize at a multi-layer platforms, giving the security of the data, then the clarity of the transaction, one-to-one, -one, many to many, and so on. So I believe this is going to revolutionize and government of India, since we are from ministry, we always uh, talk with the various uh, ministries across ministry, uh, what is the belief uh, with PMO advisory that we uh, this blockchain minus cryptocurrencies, obviously our Indian uh, digital currency is going to have a place that has been given in the budget, uh, is going to play a very important role with the help of blockchain technologies, which we have right now. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to give brief words about what we are going to do in future. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for throwing light on technology, playing essential role in defense arena, making us proud, strong, and solid. Uh, thank you so much uh, for outstanding presentation. You, your talks seem to provide much needed encouragement and patriotism. <laughs> Moving on, uh, let me, allow, allow me to please uh, introduce our next guest, Mr. Parag Walinjkar, Chairman IETE Mumbai Center, scientist working at uh, Baba Atomic Research Center Mumbai. At present, he is Chairman of IETE Mumbai Center, an experienced chairperson with a demon, uh, demonstrated history of working in the education management industry, skilled in management teamwork, product development, strong business development, and professional. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining us. Uh
Mr. Parag, uh, can you hear me? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm there. So, I respected dignitaries. My fellow yeah. from Welcome IIT. Welcome, sir. Welcome, yeah. sir. Thank you, Shelly. Uh, respected dignitaries, my fellow for I, uh, from IIT and all participants, good morning, one and all. Uh, thank you for the nice introduction, Shelly. Uh, let me first thank the organizers and particularly Dr. Xu for inviting me to the gallery of panelists. The rear applications of benefits of blockchain in media has been very clearly and eloquently brought, brought out by Mr. Sunil. And I think yesterday's session was also good. So most of the speakers, they might have talked on this technology. I strongly believe teaching is one-way communication, whereas training is two-way communication. And I guess definitely we need skilled engineers in this domain knowledge. So under IIT skill development program, IIT Mumbai Center started a training program on blockchain technologies in 2021. The technology being specialized, we signed an MOU with uh, the industry leader, Mr. Snapper Future Tech for providing the training to the young engineers. Everyone is contributing towards implementing this technology in India. So, well, I congratulate the organizers for such a wonderful program and I wish a grand success to this event. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much for your stimulating speech. Your comments are extremely helpful, sir. Uh, progressive and uh, essential. Thank you so much. Now, moving on, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to introduce our next guest, Dr. J.K. Mandal, Chairman, IETE, Kolkata Center, a professor in University of North Bengal. He had been ex-dean faculty of engineering, technology, and management, ex-joint director, Center for Remote Sensing Applications, NBU, working in the field of network security, remote sensing, Sensing and GIS application, image processing security in MANET, uh, wireless networks, unify computing, 26 years of teaching and research experiences, industrial research collaboration with Logic Tech India Private Limited. Nine scholars awarded PhD under him, total number of uh, publications is more than 281 in addition to publication of five books from Lab Lambert, Germany. So welcome on board. Uh, would like uh, and request you to please nourish our knowledge bank and pour in some thoughts and shed some light. Welcome, sir. Welcome to this webinar. Since Dr. J.K. Mandel is not connected on board, he's not uh, connected. Oh. So maybe some technical problem. I will just call him back. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, nonetheless, uh, Dr. Mandel is not available right now. Therefore, we can, uh, the show must go on. We can uh, move on to our next guest. Uh, our next guest is uh, B.B. Rishi, retired from MTNL as Deputy General Manager. After serving for 38 years at present, he's Chairman IETE Delhi Center and earlier served as Vice Chairman, Treasurer and Honey Secretary. Uh, would like to request you uh, to please nourish our knowledge, sir, and pour in some insightful thoughts and encourage us as well. Uh, Mr. B.B. Rishi. I think there is some technical issue going on. Uh, am I uh, audible, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Uh, yeah, can somebody respond, you. please, promptly? Yeah, we are getting you. Okay, okay. Yeah. So maybe in time uh, go to the next. Go next, please. Okay, okay. So now uh, it's. A glad because this morning is filled with desires, hopes, and dreams. Therefore, uh, we need to make the best of it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, moving on further to our next guest speaker. Uh, we would now like to play a very special message. Uh, this is uh, Lieutenant General Rajesh Pant, who is not in the position to attend uh, being uh, on foreign tour. I would like to read this brief biodata uh, 
while playing this message. Uh, Lieutenant General Rajesh Pant is an internationally recognized cyber security expert. He holds a PhD degree in the area of information security. General Pant brings to the table an interest, interesting mix of military operations, academic excellence, corporate governance, and uh, cyber security wisdom, security and trust. Prior to this appointment, he was the head of Army Cyber Training Establishment. He served in the Army Signal Corps for 41 years, wherein he was awarded three times by the President of India for his distinguished service of the highest order. Therefore, I would request my technical team to please uh, play this message. Uh, are you getting the speech or no, sir? No. Uh, not not it. It. Not it. Uh, sir, we cannot hear the speech. Uh, one it's minute. Audible. No, cannot. One second. Yeah, audio, audio is not. One second, one second. Yes. Uh, greetings of the day to all uh, attendees of now? this uh, event. Yes, sir. And, um, as you can see, I am out of the country along with the... Sorry. Now able to see now? Uh, greetings of the day to all attendees uh, of this uh, event. One minute. And uh, as you can see, I am out of the country along with the External Affairs Minister in Australia for a quad meeting. But I had promised Dr. Ashif Kumar that I will give a message for this uh, very important and interesting event entered around uh, blockchain. And uh, uh, some of you may be aware that we had given a national... Sorry, sir. My, my mistake. Uh, greetings of My the day mistake. to all attendees of this uh, event and uh, as you can see I am out of the country along with the external affairs minister in Australia for a quad meeting but I had promised Dr. Ashif Kumar that I will give a message for this very important and interesting event centered around uh, blockchain and uh, uh, some of you may be aware that we had given a national blockchain project to IIT uh, Kanpur where Professor Maninda Agarwal and Dr. Saurabh uh, Shukla are working on it. And as a result of that, uh, recently the Prime Minister awarded the degrees in IIT Kanpur uh, as an offshoot of that project. As also the uh, bravery awards that were given to children around 26 January also were based on blockchain technology. Uh, then the other day, the additional Chief Secretary of Karnatak, Mr. Chawla rang me up and he was praising how the land record system has been revolutionized uh, by the blockchain technology and uh, it's happening everywhere in all the states today and I was so happy to learn that there is one Mr. Abhishek in Hyderabad who has created an Indian blockchain protocol called 1101. So uh, lots of uh, interesting things happening around the country and I'm extremely great, uh, glad that this event is being organized uh, uh, based on this workshop and I wish the event all success and I will look forward to a report uh, at the end of the event. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you, sir. Ladies for going ahead, so, ladies and gentlemen, this was Dr. Rajesh Pant. Uh, our team would like to extend huge thanks. Thank you, sir. That's so generous and kind of you. Despite of your tight schedule, you ensure to make us smile and our morning bright. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. I know uh, it's Saturday and everybody is in. Uh, less stress and more chill mode. Therefore, don't want to kill the weekend vibes. Now, without further ado, moving on to our next renowned guest. Uh, please allow me to introduce guest of honor, Shriji Narendra Nath. Narendra Nath is working as Joint Secretary, National Security Council, Secretariat for Cyber Security, R&D, and activities by different entities of India in the government, 
public and private sectors, and in international bilateral and multilateral relations. Prior to this, uh, he was Deputy Director General, Department of Telecommunications, Government of India, with overall responsibility for the policy formulation and implementation and matters uh, pertaining to telecom network security of India. He has over 30 years of uh, experience in the areas of network security and law enforcement assistance and network. He was conferred with the award of Sanchar Shiromani by the Department of Telecommunications. He was associated with Telecommunications Standard Development Society of India as member of the GC. He was also a director on the board of Tata Communication Limited and is currently on the board of Nixi. He is the coordinating chair for India for the Quad Critical and Emerging Technologies Working Group. Uh, thank you, sir, for motivating and inspiring us with your uh, amazing bio data. Therefore, I would like to uh, ask you to please uh, pour in some valuable thoughts and uh, meaningful insight to this webinar. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you uh, to the organizers for giving me this opportunity. I'll start off, you know, uh, where General Pant uh, was mentioning about the national blockchain project that we had, uh, we have been, we are funding, uh, and it's still going on uh, with IIT Kanpur and the results of that project, which you mentioned, where we had, you know, uh, the, the current, the recent convocation that was held in December, uh, where the Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister of the country was in attendance, uh, and uh, the digital degrees were awarded. And they, they were awarded, uh, you know, it, they were awarded through the platform of the blockchain project that we had funded. In addition, uh, the Pradhan Mantri Rashtriya Bal Puruskar Awards for 2021 and 2022 uh, were also awarded by the Honorable Prime Minister and uh, to all the, ki all the kids who got it. So this certificate is available on their mobile devices. In uh, addition, uh, you know, under the blockchain project, uh, you know, the, under the blockchain project, one of the things about the blockchain project is that uh, a, a startup was uh, incubated uh, called the CRUBN. Uh, and that startup is the one that actually is doing the work, uh, coming out of the research and, uh, you know, uh, commercializing it. So there's a land records project that we are doing in Karnataka. And it's it's being it's going on very well, and uh, as Dr. Pant has mentioned, uh, they're really happy about it. And with the learnings that has come, because land records is a very uh, sticky affair, you know, across the country, and uh, with the learnings that have come out of this project, and I will say that one is the technology part. There's also a lot of administration and uh, part that is involved, uh, and uh, Karnataka government has really come up with good processes uh, for that. So the learning that's come out of it, uh, we plan to actually extend it to uh, and offer it to other states for streamlining the land records process across the country. The other area where uh, the project is working on is in the medical records. Uh, because that's one very important use case with digital health records. And you know, when you go from one hospital to another hospital, and we, when you go territorially uh, across the different geographies and you want to have continuation of your treatment, it's very important for the current attending doctor to have uh, access to medical records. So when we have uh, the framework in place for exchanging of medical records across the country, uh, this the blockchain technology would be very useful. And one of the use cases that the IIT Kanpur is uh, looking at is um, you know, for the medical records, and they're doing, trying to do a small pilot in Kanpur itself before we extend it across the country. We have, I understand that uh, we have Professor Shukla today afternoon, who's going to come and talk more about it in this regard. You know, I, I'm very happy with the structure in which uh, I was going through the structure of this current day's program. And whatever technologies we talk of are, you know, for the benefit of uh, the human benefit, the societal benefit, the national benefit, and generally for the whole world as such. So we have an important session on the SDG goals, and that is uh, the goals that have been agree agreed by all the countries as ones that, you know, holistically looking at human 
improving the human development index. I mean, I would use a short term for that human development index uh, for improving that. And blockchain, yes, is is uh, going to play a big role in that because blockchain is one that talks of transactions and immutability of transactions, trust in transactions. And when you talked of transactions, the transactions across, you know, they across, exist across. Whether you talk in terms of voting for electing our uh, governments, whether you talk of health records, which I've already talked about, whether we talked of education records, you know, certificates and all. We have uh, many cases where uh, there's a lack of trust in the certificates that are, uh, you know, submitted by candidates. So educational records, blood banks, the public distribution system, subsidies, the, you know, giving of subsidies. Then uh, the other important part with Mr. Satya Gupta had mentioned about uh, the supply chain. Uh, where how do you actually ensure the security of supply chains? So, so wherever we have this transactions, you will find that talk, blockchain is going to help in addressing many of the issues with the current mechanisms of handling transactions and how do you have immutability of the records and also transparency in the transactions. So that way, uh, I find that the what you with the program that you've uh, got for today is. Uh, addressing a very important concept. It's not that uh, the country has not started work in this area. We as a country, you know, uh, we generally uh, have a tendency to nowadays to catch up with the rest of the world and be at par with what's happening in the rest of the world. Uh, the meeting, uh, the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology had come up with a document on the national strategy on blockchain in December 21. And we already we also have a session I see from uh, Mr. Murthy today. Where he's going to talk in much more detail about that national strategy on the blockchain, where we, they talk about a national blockchain framework. They talk of a blockchain as a service. They also talk of human resource development, which is very important because once we have the human resources in place, I think they will take care of everything else. The institutional mechanisms for that. And some of the use cases where blockchain would be applicable, like e-sign, the e-permanent, digital locker, some of the things that as you go through the document that you find that they are there. It's also talked about uh, sandboxes. You know, one of the things about uh, any emerging technologies uh, is, and especially with digital technologies, is the low entry barriers for development of the technologies. But the biggest challenge in this is the, you know, the demonstration of the use cases. Development of the technologies. And that is where, uh, you know, the sandbox would be very important. And uh, we have to develop uh, sandboxes where it's, uh, organizations which do develop uh, these blockchain technologies will have a chance to, you know, test those technologies there and then prove it there so that uh, there's greater adaptability uh, in the markets. The other one that's been talked about, work for which work is required to be done is in the legal and policy area. Uh, to take care, of, I mean, to actually get into this uh, sphere of, uh, uh, you know, having all digital records and having uh, how the digital records are handled, getting them, uh, getting into that. And other areas, the regarding cross-border solutions. How do you have, when you have international transactions, how do you have cross-border solutions? Especially when you have people developing multiple platforms and blockchains, you know, coming on multiple platforms the interoperability within the nation across the different platforms and also interoperability across uh, national borders for addressing the transaction requirements across international borders is work that has required to be done. Uh, having said this, uh, I would just uh, briefly touch on uh, certain other aspects of uh, blockchain which are there. Since I come from uh, the security background or from the National Security Council Secretariat. One of the applications of the blockchain is, you know, the Bitcoin or uh, you will say cryptocurrencies and the transactions in cryptocurrencies that's happening and the requirement for the country to, you know, adhere to international obligations especially with regard to the FATF, you know, the Financial Action Task Force, which is actually looking at uh, 
anti-money laundering and uh, the combating on uh, financing of terrorism, which actually they've been actually working on this area. And there are some obligations that have been put as in the recent report uh, that they have given, uh, which is in the form of an updated guidance on virtual assets, uh, obligations on intermediaries, licensing requirements, supervision mechanisms which sets out certain requirements of country of, of, for the countries uh, to ensure that all the financial mechanisms, including the blockchain mechanism of cryptocurrencies is not used for financing of, you know, for counterterrorism, uh, the financing of terrorism and also for money laundering. So that is where we have to have regulatory mechanisms in place. And that is where, you know, the issue of traceability of transactions is important. And access to law enforcement authorities for those transactions is important. So when we, when we talk about, you know, the cryptocurrencies or the technological solutions that are there and the implementation mechanisms, these are certain aspects that have to be taken care of so that our obligations towards AML and CFT the anti-money laundering and the combating of for, you know, financing of terrorism uh, are uh, you know, fulfilled. And also the, we enabled our uh, law enforcement agencies to fight uh, crime and uh, so that there's a traceability of that. In this regard, uh, since I've mentioned about cryptocurrencies, I would also like to mention that uh, we recently, the talk that's happening about having our own digital currency, digital fiat currency. There are uh, certain initiatives um, that are there. And uh, in this regard, I would specifically mention about the digital currency global initiative. Uh, that is uh, that the ITU along with the Stanford University has started. Where they're working on in areas of uh, the architecture, the interoperability requirements and use cases of digital currency, uh, or digital fiat currency, and the policy and governance mechanisms that are required, and the security assurance that is there. One of the important areas of work that is happening in this area is in the ontology. As with any new and emerging technologies, you'll find that the ontology is very important, especially when work is happening in uh, different countries. For all of them to understand uh, you know, how does it have to have the same terminology and have the same meaning for the terminology so that across borders and across verticals now, especially because blockchain is going to be uh, applied across different verticals of the economy, all of them understand uh, in each other. So the ontology, uh, especially for describing the various operations and transactions is an important part. And that is one area of work that is really in a serious way it's happening. What one of the things that uh, this uh, digital currency uh, is uh, expected to do is how to actually increase financial inclusion. Financial inclusion is a challenge for us, and the Digitan, uh, you know, initiative of the government of India has really helped in uh, getting a lot of the unbanked into the banking system. But then, when we look at uh, blockchains, blockchain technology, and uh, the digital fiat currency. We have to look at ways about how to uh, facilitate financial inclusion, especially, you know, where uh, we have issues of connectivity, and uh, the people have to make transactions, peer-to-peer -peer transactions, and uh, storage of value should happen for the peer-to-peer -peer transactions where there is no connectivity, and uh, with near-field communications uh, mechanisms. How do we actually integrate it back end into the uh, digital infrastructure for the uh, digital fiat currency? So there are some technological challenges which are there and uh, there's a lot of R&D work that's required to be done. So this is where you know, we have to uh, look at establishing, identifying the problem statements. And India, for example, has created its own financial stack and uh, they're also in the process of creating a health stack. So I think we should be in a position to create our own uh, uh, blockchain stack uh, and initiate work in the research areas in all these respective areas 
so that we take a leadership position in this area and contributes to contribute towards uh, the global standards development also in this regard many of the projects that we are doing now is uh, on you know pilot basis on you know regional basis and all scalability is one of the aspects that is really talked about when we talk about uh, blockchain that is a problem statement that has to be addressed when you have go to global scale the other is uh, you know the right to be forgotten is one aspect you know that people have been talking about especially with regard to the uh, social media companies about how to enforce the right to be forgotten and with blockchain having immutability as a uh, part and the permanence of records how do you enforce this uh, right to be forgotten is uh, is one area that actually we have to look at uh, there are some good initiatives especially under the future skills prime program of the government of india for uh, under for blockchain also uh, then uh, yeah the other uh, thing that we have to actually look at is the post quantum because you know blockchain is based on cryptography and with uh, quantum communications and quantum computing and uh, coming up counter crypto cryptography coming in post quantum uh, blockchains how they would be is one area of work that is required to be looked at some areas where uh, some work has happened uh, with respect to data exchange especially in the smart cities projects that are happening we have the iudx indian urban data exchange platform that's been created and uh, that's a good platform for exchange of uh, you know common framework for exchange of data among the smart cities so migrating that to a block blockchain could be a one important part, part we have large scale deployments of iot devices that's happening the tra has given a recommendation for the institution of a national trust uh, center for iot devices uh, for the iot service providers okay uh, so in the national trust center itself you know could be a good basket case for a good case for uh, implementation on a blockchain platform currently of course the way it's being the pilot is being done uh, blockchain is not being considered but i think that would be a good way for looking at a blockchain platform the other challenge uh, uh, i look at is uh, we have some requirements for data localization and how would actually address the total data localization issues when we have uh, blockchains uh, crossing international borders and how do you enforce that is another area the other area of work uh, that we should look at is you now we can't assume that we know that you know there have been instances where the cryptocurrency platforms have been breached so we just can't assume that you know the security is uh, ultimate so we have to examine the security aspects of that and evolve the security audit and security assurance mechanisms and how do you actually look at uh, the audits for this uh, blockchain is one area of work that is required to be looked at so i've just you know broadly mentioned cer certain areas of work that is there and uh, one thing good is that we have some uh, a good body of individuals who are working in this area good body of institutions that are working in this area as it's been mentioned the, by the previous speakers there are state governments we have taken initiative proactively in implementing blockchain uh, in some of the transactions that are happening so and this it's an exciting area but then uh, we have to look at it, that in a holistic manner both from the use cases both from that not assuming that it is secure but looking at the security aspects of the blockchain and also uh, addressing concerns regarding you know the green technologies and the consumption of energy uh, which are you know some of the aspects that uh, people talk about and looking at the whole thing as holistically for human good is one thing that we should all look forward and with these words i thank again the organizers for giving us an opportunity to talk on this platform thank you very much Mr. Nath, the summing up, we can say that be it education, voting, banking, public distribution system, connectivity, nation security, and safeguarding people' interests, the technology will be initi initiating wonders in coming years. Thank yeah, you, yeah. sir.
Thank you, sir. Your words you. of wisdom uh, will under, undoubtedly motivate our audience in building businesses, uh, leading a purposeful life, creating their very own success stories, achieving significant milestone and overcoming their fear of failure. Thank you. Uh, now moving, in, uh, moving on, ladies and gentlemen, I'm uh, profoundly delighted to take an opportunity to introduce the chief guest for the day, Dr. N. Sarath Chandrababu. Dr. Sarath is uh, presently working as the Executive uh, Director of Society for Electronic Transaction and Security, Chennai. Over three decades of experience in R&D, project implementation and coordination, education and training at SETS, he's leading the cybersecurity team working in hardware security, cryptography, and uh, network security. He initiated AI for Cybersecurity Project Management Group at SETS and uh, also a walk-in cybersecurity education and research lab. Prior to joining SETS, he worked as Executive Director, CDSE Bangalore, and he was Founder Director of CDSE Hyderabad. He also worked at the uh, Department of Electronics, Government of India at various levels. He is uh, responsible for new R&D initiatives in the areas of cybersecurity, uh, ubiquitous uh, computing, IoT for smart city system software in national supercomputing mission. Uh, we are keen to learn, grasp, and attain maximum enlightenment. So welcome. Uh, you know, because they say that never stop learning. When we stop learning, we stop growing. Therefore, uh, I request you warmly to please add some crisp insight. Thank you, Sally, for a very elaborate introduction. And uh, I just have a presentation if you agree to share. Is it okay? Most welcome, sir. We are looking forward. Full screen, please, sir. Yeah, you are able to see? We are able to see. Put it on the full screen, sir. Yeah. So good afternoon. And uh, first of all, let me thank uh, the Blockchain uh, uh, Productivity Forum and uh, Broadcast Engineering Society for inviting me to be part of this uh, uh, interesting a webinar on blockchain revolution, uh, especially focusing on blockchain for governance and social impact with an emphasis on efficiency, security, and trust. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Satya N. Gupta, uh, Sri Sunil, Dr. Shiv Kumar, and all the distinguished uh, members of IET and Broadcast Engineering Society uh, for uh, making me part of this one. And as uh, Shaili just now told, learning is uh, continuous. I always take an opportunity of uh, such invitations to upgrade uh, my own knowledge. Okay, as the technology is changing so fast, it's really not an easy task for all of us to you know, know everything every time. But I'm very happy and delighted to see very briefly though, but uh, everything was covered by Sri Sunil in those five to 10 minutes. And Dr. Narendra Nath has given the glimpse of what to happen right from the, you know, the basic technology, right from the tamper proof to uh, post quantum level of things. He has taken us through the journey and also national level interesting things. So I just use this opportunity, though some of the slides would be repetitive, I would assure you that I keep moving fast wherever it's already taking over two days. We have been trying to understand what is the blockchain. And uh, so, this just to give you a small quotation and uh, yeah. sir request you to uh, make it full screen uh, audience are asking yeah, yeah. yeah sure sure we'll do that go to presentation presentation uh, yeah yeah is it fine is it fine no, sir. Uh, Not can you make it full screen? Full screen, sir. Slideshow. Slideshow. Full screen, yeah. In the slideshow, you can make it full screen, sir. It's still not, sir. F it's still it's not the slideshow, sir. Sir, F5, F5. Uh, where are you? F5. No, sir. Uh, first one, from beginning, yeah. 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 Is it fine? No? 
not the slide i think they not press it uh, he has not pressed it <coughs> either press f5 or, uh, or custom the... slide so you can go to the slide show sir once press press uh, f5 on the bottom of the screen uh, there is a uh, i can you press that then it comes full yeah, screen. that also we did all possibilities yeah. and stop sorry Oh, we redo it. Yeah, please, sir. 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 Sir.
and after the validation the block is added to the uh, existing blocks so it's a process that uh, one transaction gets submitted one thing is you can see that all blocks which were already created or intact they cannot be removed so this gives a very brief thing we also call blockchain as a distributed ledger technology right so uh, it is the all data is uh, distributed for the different nodes of the network and the complete uh, ledger is uh, actually copied in all the places right and each block data will also contain the data with the timestamp and the, the transaction details it will also have its own hash and also hash of the previous block right so if you can see the second uh, uh, rectangle here you can see the hash of first block 7f7 is going as a previous hash to the next block and similarly c5s is going to the next block and if you see suppose an intruder a hacker tries to change something in a block you can see in the bottom that hash changes because he has changed some data so it has become 6 hs but this is when it, the transaction goes to the next block that is seen that it is not the right hash so it is immediately identified so that way uh, we have a advantage of the hashing of the data uh, each data block is having the uh, you know the benefit of nobody can tamper the data so you can see the right hand side a to b what we earlier have a transaction a trusted party for uh, signatures and all that now with this peer to peer communication uh, we can avoid trusted party by which we can actually save the uh, time as well as the cost of the third party uh, related thing so this just gives you a simplistic picture of the uh, distributed ledger and hashing of the data if at all an attack happens still it's just not possible uh, because it will be immediately recognized right so this is uh, just now narendra uh, nath ji has told us that the national strategy on blockchain is uh, has as a document available on wiki's uh, website and uh, everyone can download that it has it covers various layers right from the chain layer to platform layers various platforms and smart contract layers asset layers and so on so forth until the domain applications like finance governance health etc so this uh, the, the entire document covers what is the vision vision objectives technology overview strength weakness opportunities and challenges analysis national international scenario and suggestions from public consultation and so on so the also it is uh, giving you the outcomes targeted for the next 5 years so it's a interesting thing uh, done by the consultation with various agencies are uh, open for public for uh, comments and after from industry and so on so forth and the document was uh, to the extent possible recognized to the requirements of the indian context so this is a kind of a uh, good document i think which will be useful i just because we are talking about blockchain in the context of security uh, security framework this is just to say that security code security is required and device requires security and communication requires security right security monitoring and analysis security configuration management these are all available and today more talked about thing is the data protection right all these components somehow can be used to, in the context of the blockchain and the blockchain can be used to uh, take care of uh, this data protection code security device security communication security and so on right so the um, this uh, various uh, possible uh, ways blockchain can be used in uh, you know security is uh, standard security protocol uh, is an autumn it is considered to be blockchain uh, security protocol is considered to be an alternative to end to end encryption and uh, it is also useful in iot because it's a decentralized environment and iot devices are distributed over geographically spread areas and it's possible to look at uh, you know the localized uh, computations and see that those uh, uh, distributed nature of the blockchain technology would be effectively used in iot in fact if you do the literature survey most of the papers published more than 60% of the papers published in blockchain are connected to the iot device and its security so it's another good uh, expectation is decentralizing the domain name system so that the attack won't happen at one place and uh, the uh, distributed denial of service attacks could be reduced so the and similarly data storage systems uh, blockchain would be more useful you know wherever data storage is stored for example our uh, country's other data and so on and so forth so it could be talked about and one more important thing is especially iot context uh, distribution of patches installers and firmware updates that could be used in using the blockchain technology 
So this is these are few things that uh, we can think of using. And I'm just bringing here, uh, you know, no topic can go without connecting to artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, right? So somehow we can connect up. Even if you Google it, uh, blockchain and AI, you will find thousands of uh, links and uh, uh, enormous amount of research happening and solutions happening. So the I'm not going into the details of what is AI, ML, DL, but all, uh, what all we know is AI is uh, inspired by the human intelligence. How do you mimic human intelligence? And uh, uh, ML is machine learning, mostly statistical techniques it uses, and deep learning goes with the using of artificial neural networks. And we know that it's, things are happening, right? So here, the one context I want to bring here is artificial intelligence and cyber security. They enable each other. AI enables cyber security. That is, cyber security solutions like intrusion detection system, intrusion prevention systems could be more made more intelligent, and zero-day attacks could be identified by connecting to uh, using AI techniques in the cyber security. Similarly, cyber security is also important to protect artificial intelligence algorithms because there is a data poisoning, there is an algorithm poisoning, there is a model attacks. So all such things could be thought of, uh, you know, uh, safeguarding the AI. Right. In fact, I just wanted to say that task force, a task force report under the chairmanship of Professor Ravindran Balraman, under the you know, guidance of PSA office, was made. The task force report is available on PSA office website and also on the website of SETS that talks about cybersecurity for AI and AI for cybersecurity and what the research areas are available and so on. So, this is similar to that. Now, AI would also uh, influence blockchain technology and blockchain technology also would influence AI. Similarly, what we talked about AI and blockchain. In fact, I could have made a, all three circles together, enabling each other. Okay? Uh, uh, all two to the power of three, eight ways it could enable uh, each other. Or, I mean, AI, blockchain technology, and the cyber security. Right? I, uh, he is, basically, AI can enhance the efficiency of blockchain systems because blockchain systems deal with a lot of data. And it can be a top layer to uh, help the blockchain systems to be more secure and all. Similarly, blockchain technology can safeguard AI systems where especially the data poisoning and model attacks and you know, algorithm poisoning can happen. So uh, this is a kind of uh, an interesting uh, thing. And uh, once again, as I told you, a lot of research is happening and a lot of activities are happening, especially the always more centered towards uh, data protection kind of a thing. And also, it, uh, using AI is also helping in monetization of the, you know, the produced data and sharing the data to the specific individuals, working on privacy aspects and so on. Okay, so these are two ideas. In fact, uh, though I am not going to tell everything here, explainable AI is an important thing. You know, AI systems are black box systems. Decision, what it takes, we do not know how it has taken. So we are talking about the today fake, uh, uh, news, fake photographs, and then the biases and all that, right? So uh, we need the system. Why it took a decision? So for that, we have the totally new paradigm of AI that is explainable AI, right? If you go one more level, there is a responsible AI also, which where explainable AI becomes subset. The importance here is these intermediate step. The uh, for example, if you take a deep learning neural network, intermediate layers. What's happening? We must know that is where blockchain can be helpful because it knows it can preserve the data uh, and it can continue to uh, add new data and so you know you can uh, data provenance that is you can go back to the history and see where from the data started and at every step what happened so that helps you to work on explain, explainable AI, which is an important thing that is how blockchain would help in explaining the AI. and data for AI, so obviously the personal data securing in the blockchain databases in an encrypted manner and also it will help in fixing the price for the um, data share. And similarly, AI would help for the blockchain. And as I indicated, it would improve the, uh, you know, the detecting attacks automatically. As I told, it's more effective in zero-day attacks and so on. And privacy of users' um, data that is also enabling AI algorithm to work on users' device to personalize the content without taking it to centralized network. So this is, uh, I'm skipping this slide, but you know, this idea is the blockchain is used and AI are used together uh, in COVID-19 pandemic related, especially to high speed testing uh, by a German company, Act AG, using the blockchain and AI together to see that the uh, testing happens so that the mayor, uh, 
the data privacy is maintained in all those aspects. And finally, they were able to demonstrate that 20 minutes they would be they were able to do all by taking care of other things. So the speed is provided by AI and the security was provided by the blockchain. So this similarly smart homes, smart cities, we can use these AI and blockchain for making sure that data is taken uh, preserved. And especially when you talk about the health kind of uh, sectors where personal data is to be preserved and blockchain would be more useful. So the other things, ed education, just now uh, one of the speaker told about certificate distribution. In fact, uh, uh, Dr. Narendranath has told that the uh, Honorable Prime Minister has issued certificates which are issued through the blockchain. As a best example, in e-education, today everything is uh, online and even why not certificates are issued. And uh, we know that certificates, fake certificates come and many universities, uh, even abroad universities, they say that there are a lot of fake certificates created at, uh, across the globe and that they finally when they verify with the actual institutes and all they find that verify, but it takes a long time whereas if it is maintained the certificates etc are maintained in a blockchain repository as given here uh, you would be able to uh, uh, improve that is the, there is no way the fake certificate could be produced the uh, once the institute verified this uh, this diagram show complete uh, loop of uh, you know, issue of certificate to the student to the uh, when he goes for an employment or to the other university for a higher degree, he can, uh, the, uh, this, these institutes, uh, either employer or the next academic institute, can cross check with the digital uh, blockchain uh, data uh, repository and uh, uh, give uh, cross check in no time. This is a very time, otherwise, earlier it was a human, uh, I mean, uh, through various communication possibilities, it used to take time. Right? So, as I told you, blockchain for IoT security, they even call it as a blockchain of things now. And because the, this is one of the key uh, research area, as I told you, people are using blockchain for uh, IoT. You know, IoT is uh, actually everyone is worried about IoT, use of IoT only because they are a little worried about uh, uh, its security. But you, blockchain is going to give away and it in fact helps IoT to grow as earlier we talked about by 2020, 20 billion devices or 50 billion devices. That kind of a thing, well, I think now once the blockchain is a, you know, the platform on which IoT systems are developed, whether you call it as a smart cities, health systems, or agricultural systems, or energy systems, so all these things could be easily done. So this is uh, just to give you, uh, I'm not going to talk on quantum uh, computing and all, but when you talk about cyber security today, we're also worried that quantum computer is going to come, and already there are reasonable demonstrations on quantum supremacy demonstrations by Google and IBM is both are uh, working on many other Microsoft and Intel. Everyone is working in quantum, uh, developing quantum computers the, because basically our Moore's law is getting affected. Semiconductor devices are, uh, so the feature size is now three nanometers can reach, uh, reach not below. It's not possible because quantum effects itself will stop. So quantum computing has become an important aspect. So the uh, there are uh, the main worries is there is a sure algorithm which can work on a quantum computer which can actually break the RSA algorithm and by as you can see the previous uh, thing um, this says uh, very you know conservatively it says that 2048 bit RSA can be broken by a computing system by 2026 by one seventh probability and 50 percent probability by 2031. So now the speed at which the systems are getting developed, as Google demonstrated, 72 qubit system, we are uh, not sure whether these years are really too or can be still forwarding, I mean, coming a, a bit early. So uh, asymmetric algorithms like RSA and also uh, ECC, elliptic cryptography, and all those algorithms are uh, getting affected by the source algorithm. And similarly, symmetric key AES kind of algorithms are uh, Grover has come out with a quadratic speed of searching by which AES kind of algorithms, you have to double the size. If you are today happy with AES 256, if the quantum system is there, at least you should double it to quite well. So similarly, Shaw algorithm and so on. So RSA, EC, elliptical and uh, DSA kind of things are no longer safe. And you, you know that blockchain is using AES and RSA kind of algorithms for their <laughs> encryption. So it's important to see uh, two ways of safeguarding the blockchain for future is use post quantum cryptography as Dr. Narendra has indicated and uh, this challenge uh, outcomes outcome uh, 
few algorithms they have identified which can be used like AES and uh, SHA like that. They have come out with and similar to RSA signs for digital signatures. They have come out with some algorithms which could be uh, used, right? So and uh, that is one way. That is use uh, replace the quantum uh, algorithms which may be atta attacked by quantum computer by the post quantum algorithms. These algorithms are expected to be um, you know quantum computer is not in a uh, you know they are complex to even quantum computer that those mathematical aspects are it is not able to play so this is another solution quantum key distribution key distribution <coughs> normally happens on a classical channel uh, which is not uh, security proof whereas if you use the quantum channel using the quantum principles the uh, secure key distribution can happen securely and that secure key distribution uh, cannot be affected by the uh, attacker because any uh, attacker trying to observe it will uh, collapse the information so uh, there is no way uh, attack can happen so this kind of foolproof um, globally secure systems can become part of the future blockchain systems so there are two solutions in the context of quantum use quantum key distribution for the key distribution or use the post quantum algorithms right so these are the post quantum algorithms listed by uh, NIST, that is National Institute of Standards Technology, USA. Um, the final round it has given uh, like uh, lattice algorithms and code-based algorithms, multivariate algorithms, and so on. I'm not going into the thing. Only just we should get, have a feel that while blockchain is actually used for securing with its encryption, hashing, and uh, uh, maintaining that, and also using digital signatures, it's also important for us for the, to be future-proof to work on. Uh, the these uh, you know the way they use post quantum cryptography based uh, digital, uh, blockchain uh, technology or make sure that uh, quantum secure blockchain one of the few uh, student phd student and iit indoor professors they have come out with uh, a paper uh, which is quantum secured blockchain that is uh, quantum uh, channel uh, the key distribution happens that could be actually used uh, in the uh, line of the blockchain uh, uh, you know the blocks so where blockchain layer will be there one will be, there will be a quantum secured blockchain which is uh, blockchain with two layers first layer is qkd network with uh, pairwise communication channels that permit establishing information theoretically secure private key for each pair of nodes so this is uh, just to give you an idea that quantum is uh, computing can affect so we have to better be prepared for that okay with this i would like to conclude uh, uh, with a, another quote on blockchain, uh, I quote, if you think about any multi-party process where shared information is necessary to the completion of transactions and the coordination of activity and the exchange of value, that's where blockchain technology can be put to good use, unquote. Thank you for the patient listening. Thank you. Uh, sir, I feel uh, honored that uh, I was given this opportunity to speak about you and your accomplishment, your years of research, depth of understanding, and your ability to present the subject in such an interesting way produced one of the most memorable seminars in our group. The subject intrigues me, and I plan to learn more. <laughs> Now, moving on, ladies and gentlemen, I'm highly honored and uh, feel privileged to have given this opportunity to address everyone on this very special occasion. And adding to this pleasure, would please now request our NGN guru, uh, would like to propose vote of thanks to Dr. Satya N. Gupta. Welcome, sir, once again. Yeah, thank you, Shali. Uh, Good afternoon, everyone. Actually, it's indeed a great learning for me, and I will, I think, also feel that all the participants who are there, more than 100, some of them have come back, are also benefited. I'm really thankful to both our chief guest, Sharad Babu Saab, and also our guest of honor, Narendra Naji, for bringing so many new innovative aspects, huge cases, solutions, and technology to the table. Both of them have used the word value, like how the blockchain stores the value, how it exchanges the value. According to me, it also enhances, it creates as well as enhances the value. That is why the blockchain is also called internet of value like we have a internet of things 
So, but blockchain is internet of value, which is very likely. And we are really thankful to our guest of honor, Narendra Nadji, for bringing so many huge cases, some which are already happening, especially this land record in government of Karnataka, actually, this land, which is a part of asset management uh, feature of the blockchain. And that has really delivered on the ground and solved one of the most complicated issue, which is resulting into a lot of litigations uh, by using blockchain. And other huge cases, of course, the certification which happened in the IT Kanpur also, where Honorable Prime Minister, who was the chief guest for the convocation, awarded the blockchain created degrees and certificates. And incidentally, our forum, now I call it your forum, is also trying to give you a blockchain-based certificate to all of you who have spoken here and who have participated there. In addition, Narendra Nadji brought out some very key huge cases or requirement or what I call problems. Like one is the data localization issue, which is coming actually. And other, of course, is the post-quantum uh, issues, which will be coming. And uh, so we are really thankful to Narendra Nadji giving us idea, National Press Center, and what government is doing. So our forum will try to be associated with your uh, companies whom you have given the job and also to your great organization. And Dr. Shad Babu, actually, you both have complimented each other. Whatever problem uh, Narendra Nadji is uh, actually uh, uh, introduced, you already had the solution for them, actually. Your concept of distributed quantum secured blockchain, actually. That is what can handle the post-quantum issues raised by Narendra Nadji and especially your quantum key distribution, symmetric private key, and then also how it can complement AI, ML, DL also to each other. As I had mentioned in the beginning, the blockchain provides the booster dose to the digital infrastructure, which you have mentioned. So it can really help. And it basically brings a layer of trust. And that is how it complements. Other thing uh, which came out from Dr. Sharad Babu is music to my ear, and that is the decentralization of domain <laughs> name system. Actually, our other forum, Bharat IPv6 forum, which is trying to make the country Atam Nirbhar in connected. So we are trying to create a uh, domain name system for the new internet in the country. At the moment, they are centralized in US and Europe, actually. All the domain name servers of the world are centralized there. And now because there is a solution called decentralized of DNS <clears throat> for bringing the security, for bringing the resilience, and we are almost there actually. We are doing a separate project there. And this is a great thing. So there is a, I think, idea that both the forums should also collaborate. Bharat IPv6 forum plus broadband for productivity forum because they can complement each other. They can solve the problem of each other. So with that, so I'm really so thankful IBA, to both our IBA, no, guests for bringing okay. new IBA, paradigm IBA. on IBA. the technology side, on the huge cases side, application side, and way forward to all of us, all our partners can get something there, can do something there. So with that, I'm really thankful to all of you actually for who have spoken in till now and our guests of honor, chief guest and all the participants. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Gupta very well said that the technology enhances value. Uh, the vast discussion over here therefore has enhanced, boosted, nurtured our knowledge and enlightenment. Uh, what is the calculus of innovation? The calculus of innovation is really quite simple. Knowledge drives innovation, innovation drives productivity, productivity drives economic growth. On this note, please excuse me. Now from here, would like to hand over this platform to Dr. Shiv Kumar, who will be outshining the technical session. Take care, have a fab weekend. Namaste, Jai Hind. Thank you, Sari. It's a great work. And thank you, our chief guest, Dr. Sarath Babusa and uh, 
uh, our guest of honor, Sri G. Narendra. Uh, it's really wonderful insight you have given on the use cases, you have given on the social problem, you have given on the national problems, you have given the what should be the priority uh, we, the, as a forum, we should set it. So I have noted a couple of them, so shortly you will find, uh, especially related to the quantum computing, how the blockchain and the computer, uh, quantum computing can play the role. And uh, sir, now, uh, before moving to the technical session, uh, I would request uh, Dr. V.K. Murthy to be uh, ready, sir. Uh, let me read his profile. Dr. Murthy, he is the currently working as a CEO, Innovation and Technology Foundation, IIT Bly. Mr. Murthy is beheaded for bringing out the national strategy on the blockchain technology 2021 from the meeting. So ladies and gentlemen, we are going to hear on the national strategy on the blockchain. So during 2012 to 2016, he was holding the charge of the executive director CDI at Noida. He also served as the executive director Nilet. Earlier, Dr. Murthy worked with the MIT for 35 years. He took the VRS as a senior director, scientist G, and group coordinator R&D in IT and NKN. He served in various capacities dealing with the knowledge-based computer system development, quantum computing initiative in the country. He was heading the software industry promotion during 2005 to 2007. Dr. Murthy has been conferred prestigious West VIK uh, Industrial Research Award for the year 2020 in the information and the communication technology. Let me welcome Dr. P.K. Murthy. Sir, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, it was my great pleasure to spearhead the National Blockchain Strategy and it was released by the Honorable Minister last year on December 2nd, uh, 2021. And this document is now available for the public uh, uses. And also the unified blockchain framework is being uh, developed by various organizations spearheaded by CDAC and uh, NIC and IDRBT and uh, SETS Chennai. And these are the main participants in that. And I'll just highlight some of these important activity of this. Let me share my screen. Uh, uh, is it visible? Yes, sir, it is. It is. Make it full yes, screen. Sir. Yeah. Make the full screen, sir. Yeah, it is. Yes. Yeah. So I would be it talking can... about national sir, blockchain. Yeah. Sir, may I, may I request to make it full screen, sir? Yeah, it is now full screen. No, not yet, sir. Yeah, I'm sharing the screen. Okay, let me stop it and then stare it again so all others please keep your uh, mic mute sir please ensure your mic is always muted yeah let me share my screen again is it now full screen yes sir please yeah. go ahead sir thank you sir fine fine thank you so I will be talking about national blockchain strategy towards providing trust and transparency in various e-governance services, how this unified blockchain technology and the national strategy will spur the uh, e-governance activities in the country. So before, uh, yeah, before going to just demystify what is the blockchain technology, I think uh, most of you are aware uh, people are talking about various digital currency and current currency and uh, various things. Let me just talk about why this uh, confusion is there, why the blockchain is initially identified as the backend technology for the cryptocurrency or digital currency, and which is now being used for various other purposes. If you just see any of the Indian rupee, one rupee, if you see the note on the, I can show the pictures here, it says that government of India and on the top of it, it shows government of India and it is signed by finance secretary. So, and it says that it is the value of this is one rupee. That means the actual currency by Indian currency is signed by the finance secretary and it writes government of India, it is one rupee. 
But if you see any other note apart from this currency note, on top of it, you can see that's 100 rupees note or 500 rupees note or 200 rupees note or 2000 rupees note. It is their Reserve Bank of India and it is 100 rupees it is written and it is say that guaranteed that by the government of government of india and here it is mentioned that i promise to pay the bearer 100 rupees and it is signed by the reserve bank of reserve bank govern, governor of reserve bank and it is not government of india so that means the actual currency of the government of india is 1 rupee but Government of India authorized the Reserve Bank to press to print the currency and release and distribute and maintain this currency. That means any organization which, which authorizes, which is being authorized by the government of India, can in fact publish currency notes or equivalent notes for currency for various applications. So, for example, we can see that the food coupons of Sodaxa coupon, it is mentioned at 50 rupees or 20 rupees. So, these are actually meant for food coupons for the corporates, but in most of the uh, provision stores for groceries, you can use this coupon for getting this. So, that means any item which is there and which is recognized by a community can be used for various other purposes as well. The other example is that normally for purchasing the milk, we use the token from the mother dairy. Some grocery stops around that mahalla, you can also use the same token for purchasing other stores as well. That means within that community, it is recognized as a simple currency or a token that can be useful for various other applications as well. So other good example is that in the campus tokens that are there the, for the canteen coupon, those coupons will also be used in the nearby stationary stores within the campus of colleges that we have all experienced. So that means blockchain, uh, the digital currency challenges that are faced is that if you are converting the same technology into digital mode, you will be getting uh, the digital currency is made just a digital file or an image. So original or its copy is similar. But unlike in the other cases, either Sudaxo Copan or other thing, replication is very, very difficult. But in the digital world and replicating or copying into many, many copies is very easy. So the original and then copy, it is very difficult. So it can be tampered very easily in a digital manner. So regulated and unregulated, no authenticity will be there. So it is difficult to trace the total number of coins in circulation or total number of money in circulation. So one can easily multiply the currency. Thus, one has to keep track of the numbers. So no trust in transactions. Because there is no trust in transaction, you have to difficult to keep track of validity of the transaction as well. So security is also not assured, then no trust is there. So if there is no security, no trust, and nobody will try to use it and the economy will uh, spoil. So in order to avoid this, to address the above technology, there are information technology solutions are there for the digital world for using this currency. So that means uh, to address these challenges through IT, prevent multiple copies, you can use encryption. And traceability of everyone maintains the nodes, that is the ledger, that is Everyone is maintaining that ledger, is, that is what is distributed ledger, and get the authenticity regulated by the government or a trusted group. So in order to get the trust, you will have the consensus algorithm in the blockchain. So to avoid care, careful and in a trusted care and in trusted uh, group, you have to have a consensus mechanism. So for participatory by all secured and connected, many nodes, you can have it so that a multiplication will be there and so that no single point of failure will be there. So to incentivize the node maintains a crypto token or government issues a, some with a some sandbox. So to reduce the storage, indexing uh, hashing is done. That is where the blockchain. So to connection through a secured internet, VPN. So blockchain technology, which is there as a backend technology for the cryptocurrency, which has all these features, and hence it is much more robust and trusted and it provides traceability and transparency.
So these features are being exploited and it can be used. So this blockchain technology has a transparency, time stamped, immutable, and no single point of failure because it is a distributed ledger. Everybody will be having a copy, even a few copies are spoiled and the nodes, nodes are not working, the other nodes can take over. Irrevocable and it is it can be programmable. So these are the silent features. With these features of this technology, blockchain technology can be used for various applications in, in general. So it facilitates the process of recording transactions and tracking assets in governance or a business network. So it can be an asset, can be tangible, a house or a car or a cash or land or intangible like intellectual property such as patents, copyrights or branding. Any of these things we can use this technology. So anything of value can be tracked, traded on a blockchain network, reducing the risk and cutting costs for all involved enabling and verifiable verifiability and tamper evidence features are there for the blockchain purpose. So with this, the blockchain finds many applications in the government as well, other applications as well. So building trust with citizens, for all citizen services, we can provide a trusted environment, improves transparency and accountability, speed up the transactions, protecting sensitive data, and reducing the cost, improving the efficiency. So that is the advantage of this blockchain. So in the national scenario, we see that many of the states are adopting blockchain for the e-governance applications. In Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, you might have seen that many of the blockchain databases, cybersecurity, healthcare, for all these applications are being used. Uh, Andhra Pradesh, not only Andhra Pradesh, Assam, Delhi, and Goa, Gujarat, and all the states are being used. And recently in Telangana, you might have seen that there was a POC conducted for elections also, Gram Panchayat and Municipal elections. So blockchain startups are also, there are many startups which have come up. I think to my knowledge, there are around 500 to 1000 startups which are there within the country who are all working in various applications of blockchain technology. In fact, in the whole startup world, AI, ML, data analytics, and blockchain, these are the few major areas where most of the startups are working today. Technology startups, basically. So blockchain pilots deployment in India. Yes, several use cases has deployed. Many of our friends also have mentioned some of the use cases, proper, like property registration and management system, certificate verification system, and citizen-centric health record management, eliminate counterfeit drugs for supply chain management, and fintech b2b transactions many of the banks are adopting blockchain technology and many more applications are coming so several startups industry academia national r d labs and government organizations are all using this so many applications have gone beyond pilot deployment to almost some large scale live applications are being used in many of the uh, many of the across the country many of the applications are being deployed so a need was felt to have uniform standards, interoperability, and scalability. So blockchain as a service to various stakeholders. A country of this nature where you are having 1.4 billion people are there, you need to have at least a scalable system which can be used for at least a few crores of transactions will be there at least of this nature. So for that, so I will talk about some of the use cases that have been deployed. The property registration by CDAC for Telangana government in Samshabad district has been there, has been deployed. So one of the first initial applications. So it is based on the survey. The following are the most common irregularities: double registration. So 90% of the property cases are there in the country, or because some of the people are sold same property for two people. So double transaction, double registrations are happening. Producing fake documents for registration and insider attack, traditional databases are related to databases and data modifications are being held. So the requirements for this use case is electronic ledger, reliable, time stamped and tamper evident. Obviously data blockchain technology provides these things. Providing a non-repeatable proof of proof of each transaction is also is there. That is the feature that blockchain can provide. So implicit linked document, title, history, verification, all, all of these. 
So some of these requirements can be done using the technology, blockchain technology. So that is a blockchain based property registration management system has this facility before the blockchain technology was adopted. That is where a buyer will go to the sub register office and up, apply for the transfer of application. Sub register verifies that application, generating check slip for number and assign some regular document number and it will go to the local database. So that is how earlier the registration is being happened and the buyer will give the document to the seller. So now using this blockchain technology, the verification of the owner details are done, check slip is generated and encumbrance and it will go to the blockchain ledger and verifies that whether any particular document, any particular other owner is there or not. And accordingly, encumbrance certificate is generated that will be given to the revenue department and verified by this and then only the seller can buyer can sell this uh, seller can buy uh, sell this uh, property to the seller so what are the advantages of this innovation and novelty in the value addition in in the pre deployment of this blockchain technology title and ownership verification is not done but post deployment it will be done and alert will be given if it is the document has already uh, title ownership is already there with somebody else so addressing the internal attacks is also cannot be done before the internal earlier one. Now you can, because it is a tamper evident mechanism in the blockchain technology, you can have this as well. So income bearer certificate is also automated and it will be given earlier it was manual. So that means you can enhance the speed of transactions and database is a centralized database and here it is a distributed database and detecting the double registration is cannot be possible in earlier case before adopting blockchain now it is possible so some of these advantages are there using the blockchain technology now the efficiency yes you can have the efficiency of 75000 registrations are already migrated and 11 nodes across uh, various centers are there in telangana government and 3000 to 300 3000 to 330 transactions per minute are happening so the Speed is reasonably good for these applications. Now, same application has been deployed, similar application was deployed by certificate verification by NIC. In Rajasthan government and Karnataka government for CBSC, they have implemented it. It is for the verification of uh, the CBSC 10th class certificates and which were stored in blockchain. Recently, IIT Kanpur also adopted blockchain technology for uh, their, their degree awarding their degree. And also IIT Bilai has uh, uh, implemented it through DigiLocker, the digital certificates have been issued. So some of these use cases are there. And also verification can be done by various, either you can use the local bodies or students or education institution. And single source of the proof is available for this purpose. So traditional versus blockchain based verification of certificates. Suppose an organization or an employer wants to verify a student's credentials authenticated or not. So earlier case, the organization used to send the records through a third party for verification and background verification is being done. But today using this blockchain technology, organization directly go to this blockchain where it is stored, where all these applications are stored and the student submits his credentials, the organization can verify this. So immutability in certificate chain challenges are the fake certificates and a lot of paperwork and expensive and third party verification need to be done. Now it advantage is that features it can have the certificates recorded in the blockchain eliminates need for dependency on a third party and it can be verified across the participating stakeholders within the same time or near real time. So easy verification by an institution saving a lot of time. The benefits are transparent, tamper-proof, paperless, no dependency on the third party. So most of the users are potential, potential education boards, universities, municipal organization, and corporates, whoever are the employers for these students. So blockchain in supply chain management, again, in for drug supply chain management, NIC is developing a lot of uh, use cases for this for various state governments, for public health department. It facilitates inventory, track, trace, verification, and reduce the risk of 
theft or fraud or immutability view of all the events through the out of the asset of life cycle smart contracts are being provided and enhanced financial management of the agreement due to the better transparency of the network so the challenge for that spurious drugs can be easily identified expiry drugs also can be easily noted and alert will be given to the person who is distributing the drugs difficult to ascertain genuineness but in the advantage of using the blockchain technology it manufacturers or suppliers will be able to easily upload their and security and securely store their order information powerful monitoring transparent and organized processes can be done so smart contract based automatic payment can be had and enhance traceability elimination of counterfeits and all the hospitals and uh, uh, seed manufacturers or maybe the drug manufacturers all these people can use this so while adopting any particular uh, blockchain technology in the past access value or proposition of blockchain te technology people are developing only people proof of concepts and similarly in the present case a lot of pilot deployments are being done and a, a few live applications are also being deployed in various applications so in order to adopt in the future it will adopt large scale applications which are there maybe country wide or state wide application need to be deployed so this hyperscale to adoption stage it is there and in future we are expecting that large scale applications will be there so when you are adopting for the large scale application e governance application scalability and transaction speed is very important security and analysis and data security and privacy standardization and interoperability that is cross cross platform and across chain protocols which is very important that means one application to other application data interoperability is also important so regulatory aspects are also important and ecosystem and supporting framework decentralized infrastructure so this national strategy talks about the carry out of advanced research to address various challenges towards building a national blockchain framework that means trusted digital platforms for various e governance applications collaboratively evolve blockchain technology stack and applications to leverage larger opportunities across the range of sectors by involving various stakeholders create skills based uh, skill base in the blockchain technology lot of human resource development need to be done and government to formulate working groups or councils and project review or steering committee so that a national blockchain strategy can be implemented across all government departments so a need was felt to uh, find out a unified blockchain framework to architect and unified blockchain stack for rapid end to end secure and scalable interoperable application and its deployment across large scale adoptions so demonstrate the and the evolved unified blockchain framework and applications in the distributed infrastructure so easy integration with existing services namely digilocker e sign and e praman for all the application e governance application technology stack with open apis and blockchain as a service that is another important so blockchain sandbox and one and infrastructure need to be de developed for the country as a test bed for developing a lot of solutions so with these things we have defined what is called a unified blockchain framework where different applications in the bottom line you will have a property chain for all the national blockchain for the property registration healthcare for a healthcare application blockchain healthcare application and supply chain management and education for each of these applications different blockchains are being introduced yeah, are being developed and which are stored in a single infrastructure which is there in in uh, national blockchain distributed infrastructure which is having having a sandbox environment for various applications so on top of it we can have different uh, hyperledger or platform that is required for storing the databases distributed databases or distributed ledgers either you can use hyperledger fabric or hyperledger sawtooth or evolved blockchain platform or any other platform which is there which can provide the distributed ledger facility and scalable consensus solution for various different applications you can have it on this and like this interoperability protocol for supporting cross chain transactions 
so if a per same person is having a health record as well as the property transactions it it has to be identified as a single person who is doing both the transactions and hence some of the data personal data or demographic data will be common it will be a seamless integration of this data for these two uh, two applications could be there so similarly in the domain specific smart contract layer or design the plot design patterns for the smart contracts also we can create on the top of it certifying authority and software security modules and protocols for this and on top of it asset layers are there different different digital assets digital assets and ownership transfers can be held so in the top layer you can have the different applications development and different stakeholders of academia or various government departments can use the same thing and it can be integrated with the digi locker e, e aadhar or e praman of any of the applications so these are loosely coupled different components and putting together all this into a single framework for and this is what we call a national stack india stack for uh, blockchain adoption so there are various stakeholders who are developing this either research team is primarily from the idrb t sets chennai and triple it hyderabad and cdac all these people and framework and integration is being mainly done by cdac and nic put together but when it is coming to development and deployment of, of the infrastructure and setting up of the infrastructure and the startup center phase and development of solution for large scale e governance applications mainly the nic and nixi are being used it and the stqc is provides the standards and certification testing and quality and certification and vulnerability assessment and penetration test is also being done by stqc so this is the broad cat, uh, framework that we sir, have adopted sir may i interrupt sir can yeah, you yeah, set please, your please. camera yeah can you set your camera so that we can see you fully yeah now oh. is now is much better so thank you okay okay sorry yeah so the last slide this is the last slide this is a national strategy that we are talking about it is a five years uh, pro project five years timelines that we are talking about so in the first year geog geographically uh, distributed shared infrastructure and foster r and d and then develop a complete uh, framework for this the one which i have showed unified uh, framework and in the second year this offering a blockchain as a service and in the third year large scale adoption for deployment of application and fourth year is promote of promotion of adoption of the global standards and in the final year we can have the lot of ai and other applications blockchain could be adopted for this enabling technology for global usage also will be there so this is the five year strategy has been adopted for adopting the national uh, the blockchain for the national e governance applications so thank you very much any questions i can answer yeah over to dr shukumar any questions uh any questions please so maybe no question at present sir it yeah. has been really wonderful talk and uh, i'm really really learned a uh, lot of things about the shukumar national... yes sir can i ask a simple question please please go ahead sir uh, sir uh, gave a very very uh, good presentation and uh, it's a very uh, in a detailed manner but i got a fundamental doubt uh, are the term digital currency and cryptocurrency synonymous to each other or there is any difference between the two it, oh people are using uh, synonymously but actually it is different cryptocurrency digital currency so there is uh, some of the countries are ad adopting crypto cryptocurrency uh, and digital currency digital currency is just a replacement of paper currency and cryptocurrency <laughs> is a little bit more than that it is an asset rather than it is a currency being used for various applications thank you very much sir thank yeah, you yeah but people are using synonymously uh, because digital currency wherever it is there crypto is also need to be there otherwise uh, the tampering and uh, other security features will not be there for that and and the digital uh, transaction 
Yeah. Uh, is altogether a different. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, digital transaction can be anything. No, if I am sending a document digitally to you, that itself is a digital transaction. Transaction, yes. Yeah, not necessary for the currency. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Any other question on the uh, framework? You know the national uh, blockchain framework, blockchain policy. So I'll go ahead, uh, sir. You very very nicely explained about the unified blockchain framework, your critical uh, national applications, and also you know the interoperability and the scalability, which is going to be the challenge and how to address the challenge, and especially for a country like ours which is having such a large population, certainly these are the uh, key challenges which blockchain faces. And uh, sir, the, you have al also given very insight into the, uh, the pilot project, various pilot projects. And in addition to that, you know, the, what is the stage of the projects what are being implemented in the, uh, across the country and across the industries, basically, then to the various sectors. And the use case on the property registration yeah, is, is for, especially for the country like India, especially for bringing the trust and transparency is really one of the uh, nice use case of the blockchain, which is going to touch the each and every individual of the uh, country. So thank you very much, sir. So it's a big, uh, really great talk, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So very much. Next speaker is Dr. Sandeep Sukla the professor from our IT Kanpo. Uh, allow me to brief about his biodata. Uh, Dr. Sandeep Sukla, sir, you are there? Yes. Great, sir. Sir, uh, Dr. Sandeep Sukla is currently a professor of computer science and engineering department at the IIT Kanpur, which he headed during 2017-2020. Uh, he is an IEEE Fellow, ACM Distinguished Scientist. His major research interest in cybersecurity and critical infrastructure, cybersecurity of IT OT systems, and application of blockchain technology in security and privacy. He is currently Associate Editor of ACM Transactions on uh, CPS, which is a cyber physical systems, and Journal of the British Blockchain Association. Also, he had been the editor in chief of the ACM transactions on the embedded computing systems during 13, 20, 2013 to 2020. Before joining IIT Kanpur in 2015, he was a professor in Virginia Tech, USA. He has authored over 200 peer reviewed journal and the conference papers and authored edited 10 books. He was awarded the Presidential Early Career Award in Science and Engineering, which is a P-E-K-C-A-S-E -E in 2004. The Bessel Award by the Humboldt Foundation in 2009, a Distinguished Alumnus Award by the Sunny Albany in 2007, a Ramanujan Fellowship in 2015. And also he's the one who is spearheading the national blockchain, which uh, Dr. G. Narendranath was talking that it is the IIT Kanpur along with the incubation uh, one of the incubation or the one of the startup company at the IIT Kanpur. So he's the one who is mentoring along with the professor uh, Manendra Gwalsa. So is, now you are going to hear the, you know, that how the technology is moving, how the blockchain is moving and, uh, you know, and he very nicely combined the blockchain and cyber security. I have uh, attended his number of lectures and recently, a couple of days ago also he was, delivering on the cybersecurity and earlier on the blockchain also he has delivered no more doubt. So, sir, we are really keen to learn from you. Thank you very much, sir. Please, platform is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, for, thank you for the kind introduction and the opportunity to speak at the blockchain summit. Uh, I hope you can hear, see my screen. Yes, sir. We okay. can see it very well. It's in full mode. Okay. So what I'm going to talk about is the blockchain's use in e-governance. Uh, we started this national blockchain project in 2018 when uh, Dr. Gulshan Rai was the uh, national cybersecurity coordinator. And uh, we continued this under the uh, uh, help of uh, doc uh, Dr. Rajesh Pant as well. Uh, and uh, our uh, charter was to develop a uh, set of frameworks 
under which uh, the under the national blockchain project so that uh, at least two e governance projects are done by the end of this project and this project uh, has already delivered uh, two projects uh, uh, successfully to the government of karnataka and also uh, we are uh, in the process of uh, delivering another project uh, to the Lucknow Development Authority in UP. And also we are working with multiple different, uh, different government uh, agencies currently. And most recently we work with the, uh, the uh, Ministry of Women and uh, Child Development uh, when uh, our system was used to give self-sovereign identity-based uh, certificates for the Pradhan Mantri Val Puraskar uh, 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 just before the Republic Day. Uh, and we also, uh, we using the same framework, we also uh, did the uh, convocation this year for IIT Kanpur where, where the Prime Minister started uh, our uh, you, uh, you know, blockchain-based degree program where we gave all the 1723 degrees of IIT Kanpur this year as uh, verifiable credentials on the on the blockchain so so we are already uh, we have delivered about four projects uh, uh, you know when our deliverable was uh, two so we are uh, uh, going ahead in full steam uh, and we uh, as part of the program that uh, was funded by the national security council secretariat we are we were also to spawn a startup which would actually be the implementation agency for many of these projects. And that uh, company, uh, I'm happy to report that the, that company has been in existence now for two years, uh, founded by four IIT alumni, and it is uh, doing very well. In fact, the Karnataka projects, uh, Lucknow projects, and the uh, self-sovereign identity projects are all actually uh, full in, in full-scale implementation was done by them when uh, we did the research in under the uh, uh, national blockchain project. So, so what are the things that I want to talk about? So I want to talk about uh, three of these four things that we are currently uh, involved in, in various, with the various governments. First is the property registration uh, uh, and what they are calling in Karnataka the Kaveri blockchain. Second is the uh, self-sovereign identity uh, blockchain that we have, uh, as I said, that degrees were given and some award certificates uh, by uh, the uh, Women and Child Development Ministry were given. And then I want to talk a little bit about our medical record uh, blockchain, which actually uh, was developed for the IIT Kanpur's uh, own health center, but uh, we actually completed this for piloting in uh, March of 2020, but then COVID came and, and still we are in, at that stage because uh, the health center got really overwhelmed in the COVID time. So hopefully in the uh, near future, we'll be able to uh, give it to them. And then, as I said, that we have been doing this integrity of procurement proje process project with the government of Karnataka, which is uh, complete almost uh, one month is left. and. Uh, the uh, the other thing that we have been uh, uh, nurturing is a supply chain blockchain. We have been talking to various organizations uh, about that, especially uh, the, the issue came about uh, when the COVID vaccination was going on, but that window is kind of closed now, but uh, we, see, we see this uh, more than just vaccine, any kind of cold chain type of uh, situation we can probably do. So, uh, so let's talk about the Kaveri blockchain property registration project. It's already running in two districts in Karnataka, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, so wh what are the challenges that we were uh, uh, you know, given when uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Rajiv Chawla, uh, who, was, uh, the, who is the, uh, uh, I think, additional uh, principal secretary uh, in the government of Karnataka, and he told us, that there has been some problems, and I, I believe Dr. Murthy was also mentioning some of these problems with the property registration. So the registered documents are susceptible to insider attack since the documents and index data are stored in database 
that is vulnerable to unauthorized access. And that has happened in Karnataka in several cases. Uh, there is no auditable trail of registration records that can connect all transactions done against a property, which forces buyers to go through complex activities for performing encumbrance searches. So, so what that means is that the lot of the thing that happens in the back end uh, are not, uh, uh, you know, uh, documented, and and also there is no uh, trail of uh, who owned the property, who transferred the property to who. You know, you know, easy. For, I mean, they, it's there, but it's not, uh, you know, available at the fingertip. Uh, also, reliably ascertaining the identity of the parties in a registration transaction time is time-consuming and cumbersome. Uh, which may lead to impersonation by unscrupulous elements. Uh, and uh, right now what is uh, happening is that uh, many times this is done, uh, uh, you know, with the uh, help of insiders. And that's how it is actually possible. Otherwise, uh, you know, you can do other KYC uh, to actually identify the people. And there is no digital or non-repudiable consent recording mechanism for parties to, in a transaction which creates possibility for disputes. So one way, uh, only way to record is to get the parties uh, to do EKYC verification using fingerprints of all parties involved. But EKYC is uh, requires connectivity and therefore uh, some offline mechanism would be uh, good, which can actually uh, be uh, verified uh, from the uh, blockchain. So what uh, what we have done is that uh, we our solution looks something like this. So first time somebody goes to do any kind of transaction on a property, his uh, other based verification is done. Or any uh, if they refuse to do other, uh, then they can do other type of KYC. But that KYC has to be then uh, permanently recorded. Uh, and for that, we have created a smart card based uh, mechanism and uh, public uh, private key based mechanism. So when you do the EKYC, a, a key pair is generated and the private key is committed into the smart card and given to the, to the person, which he can come back and use and uh, based on the uh, private key, we can identify the person and we can also, uh, we don't need to go back and do the EKYC again. And then, uh, and this smart card interacts with the blockchain for uh, the information. And then uh, there is a proof of concept, consent that is also committed to the uh, permission blockchain. So this now, uh, one thing that Karnataka wanted is that they had a nice, uh, already an IT system called Kaveri and what they wanted is that uh, intervene that uh, process, the, the hooks into this process so that the registration information and all kinds of uh, activities that happens on a piece of property should to be committed to this blockchain. So we have to actually integrate the blockchain uh, with this Cavity uh, blockchain property uh, registration interface. And uh, this is what it looks like once you log in. So you have the uh, various executants, their information, and the smart card based uh, signature that has to be there in order to actually identify the person uh, uh, you know, after the first time when you have the EKYC verification. And this is the card that was designed by us and the, the entire smart card was programmed uh, by, by us and then uh, the here is the uh, process and the status of the project. So uh, we had the uh, design completed and blockchain application development was done, uh, uh, you know, sometime early to 2021. It took some time to integrate that with UIDI uh, for EKYC verification directly. And then uh, we integrated with Kaveri last summer. Uh, then we did the smart card uh, design verification and testing, and then we started uh, hosting them around uh, around uh, September October timeframe, and then uh, we did user acceptance testing, and by November we were live. 
So, uh, so we were live in two districts and uh, you can see uh, this is the uh, dashboard at the, uh, at this, uh, at the uh, registrar's office. So you can see uh, the registrar can uh, search into the, into the blockchain and uh, find out various kinds of statistics about what has happened. And this is a few weeks so there were like almost 5,000 cards were issued. Uh, right now, actually, it is above 5,000. Unique cards were 4376, and then the deed registration number at that time was 2729. Now it is above uh, 20, uh, about 3,000. And here are some of the glimpses of the first day of uh, launch, uh, where some users were given out the this uh, Taveri key uh, cards uh, so that when they come back, the blockchain recognizes them. So the blockchain here works as a trust layer, right? So, so the hash of all the records are pushed on the blockchain. So we don't put the actual deeds, which would be which would make the blockchain very heavy. So we put them in the uh, you know some kind of a file system uh, with replication, uh, the actual records. But the hash of the records are actually on the blockchain. So whenever a record is retrieved. The, it is. It consults the blockchain. Uh, the system consults the blockchain to retrieve the corresponding hash, and the uh, the uh, the hashes are matched so that no internal manipulation of these documents could have been done. And uh, so, data integrity is therefore maintained on the blockchain. And the as I said, that the uh, the actual deeds are on the decentralized file storage uh, like IP, IPFS. Uh, and uh, that is uh, how the uh, system works. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty simple uh, architecture, and the blockchain is not heavy at all. So, so uh, right now this blockchain is maintained over uh, multiple nodes, and these nodes are actually, uh, uh, these nodes are actually in various Karnataka government uh, entities which are independent of each other, such as registrar's office versus the, uh, uh, you know, revenue department versus I, one node is in IIT Kanpur. So these nodes are in various jurisdictions so that there is uh, actually a, a sense of trust that happens. Otherwise, in uh, permission blockchain, there is a, an issue that it is not using, uh, you know, uh, proof of uh, work or a proof of stake. It is using Byzantine fault tolerant uh, the consensus algorithm. So un unless the jurisdictions are uh, actually uh, independent of each other, it is actually uh, not as trustworthy as uh, if you if if you have all the uh, nodes controlled by uh, you know same entity or colluding entity. So that that risk is always there in the permission blockchain. That's why we have distributed it in completely different. So the the nodes are being maintained. Uh, for their 24 by 7 uh, availability and connectivity by these entities, they don't have to do anything unless they want to manipulate. Uh, the, the, the smart contracts that are running on these nodes are actually uh, not to be manipulated by any of the custodians of these nodes. But in case uh, they do, the at least, uh, you know, two thirds, uh, so up to one third of the nodes, if they actually try to manipulate, even then our uh, blockchain will work uh, correctly. Now, if two thirds of the nodes will not, uh, will collude and try to do something, then uh, that is uh, going to uh, have uh, the consensus mechanism will not be trustworthy. But uh, these entities uh, where we have placed the nodes, they are not really touching these nodes at all, except if in case uh, they, these nodes lose connectivity or or uh, go to um, you know uh, you, you know the or or actually shut down something. Then we have to get them to do that. Uh, but uh, so so the probability of of uh, this nodes colluding is uh, you know reduced, and we are uh, in the process of increasing the number of nodes so that the probability is further reduced. Now coming to the how we get the digital degrees uh, with. Uh, the our self-sovereign identity blockchain. So 1723 degrees were issued at the 54th convocation of IIT Kanpur by the Honorable Prime Minister. And uh, so uh, these uh, degrees were actually uh, uh, created 
as what we call verifiable credential. Now, what is a verifiable credential? A verifiable credential is that when I get a degree, I have my name, my institute, my year of uh, graduation, my uh, subject, and my degree name, right? Now, uh, normally, and my it could also have additional meta information like my roll number in the institute and so on. So right now, if I if if I go to an employer with this degree, I normally give them a PDF or I normally give them a paper copy. Now, if I give them a PDF, then uh, they don't know whether I have manipulated it or not because the PDF is can be easily uh, manipulated. So. So the question is, how do I prove myself that, uh, that prove that this degree is genuine and the information contained on this degree is genuine? So one way to do that is that if the PDF copy is given to students with the digital signature of the IIT Kanpur uh, Dean's office, let's say. Now, what happens is that suppose in the, the same student wants to go somewhere where he wants to prove that he graduated in the year 21. So all he needs to uh, give is uh, his name and the degree year and nothing else. He doesn't need to reveal his roll number. He doesn't need to reveal his subject, et cetera. Let's say he's, he's doing that. In that case, uh, the PDF-based mechanism will not allow him to do only, disclose only those two pieces of information. It will actually have to uh, uh, give the entire PDF and they will have the other information. Now, in, a, in case of a degree, that may or may not be a problem, but in case of a, a something else, uh, some other kind of document, there may be other sensitive information in the document and therefore I want to do selective disclosure. That is, I want to only select my name and the year of graduation to uh, and prove that, well, I want to prove that this is genuine. So for that, each individual piece of data on this uh, degree has to be separately signed by IIT Kanpur and IIT Kanpur's key should be widely available, right? So then in that case, what I have to do is that I have to, uh, first of all, um, ask IIT Kanpur to sign every piece of data separately, as well as the entire, entire uh, document with their uh, uh, private key, but their public key should be available. So where do I make the public key available? One possibility is of course to uh, get a digital signature uh, sorry, a digital certificate we, uh, that we do for our website and then use that for, uh, you know, attaching with, uh, with the degree. But then there may be manipulation of that, uh, uh, manipulation of that digital certificate as well. We know that there has been cases where digital certificates uh, were given uh, in the name of Google and Yahoo uh, from uh, uh, authorities, uh, you know, uh, where, through random entities, uh, there has been other cases where digital certificates have been forged, like in case of, uh, you know, attacks on a Saxnet attack, for example, and many other, you know, uh, software uh, supply chain attacks. So therefore, what we have done is that we have put this schema of this degree, as well as schema, as well as the public key of the IIT Kanpur in a blockchain. So anybody can actually access that from the blockchain, but it cannot be tampered with because the blockchain is maintained according to consensus mechanism. So that's the, that is our SSI blockchain that we are maintaining across multiple institutes. And uh, so, uh, and we are actually uh, talking to various government entities if uh, this uh, nodes can be also maintained in various government uh, uh, organizations as well. And uh, this is uh, the, this is the, how the degree was given. Now uh, the think about this uh, that when currently when an employer gets a copy of my degree, it needs to call IIT Kanpur, and IIT Kanpur has to go through its records to actually confirm that this person is indeed holder of this degree. Right now, what what can now happen is that because we have created this uh, degree uh, in a wallet. The wallet is programmed to do a peer-to-peer -peer communication with the other, uh, with the with the what what we call the verifier uh, app. So the verifier app can actually challenge uh, this app that show me uh, your name and your uh, graduation year, and uh, uh, when the, per, uh, the a request comes to the wallet of this uh, person. The person selects uh, the parts that he wants to reveal, like the name and the graduation year, and that goes, uh, uh, you know, uh, through a secure channel, through an encrypted channel, to the other 
to the other verifier uh, app and the verifier has to check that the verifier has to go to the blockchain to download IIT Kanpur schema and the IIT Kanpur's uh, uh, public key and verify it. So, so therefore this is this becomes and then once they have verified once from IIT Kanpur, they can cache the IIT Kanpur's public key so they can verify other degrees without even having to go to the blockchain. So this is a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, verification. The other advantage of this is that suppose I want to prove that I graduated uh, or, uh, in or after 2021, right? So in that case, I don't even have to give you the exact year because the exact year will be probably reveal my age, for example. So what I can do is I can do a zero knowledge proof based communication with the verifier. So it will give me give a convincing cryptographic proof that my year of graduation is beyond uh, on or beyond 21, but I don't tell you when. It could be 22, 23, 24, whatever. So it will not be able, you, they will not be able to get my exact age, but they will know that it is, uh, uh, they will be convinced that it is, it is uh, beyond or on 21. So that's the other advantage that I can do certain properties of my um, credential, I can prove without actually revealing the exact number or exact data that I want to do. So that's the zero knowledge proof based uh, verification of uh, certain aspects of my identity. So that's uh, the third thing is that it is uh, the, this degree that it does not have to be like, uh, you know, uh, you, IIT Kanpur does not have to maintain this degree information uh, anymore after it has provided this because uh, IIT Kanpur uh, uh, has already given them as a verifiable credential. Uh, I, so therefore, uh, the uh, the entire information is totally under the control of the user and not uh, the uh, issuer. The issuer of the degree does not need to uh, retain. It may re archive it somewhere, but it may, may not retain it in online for verification. And that uh, reduces the probability of attack on the uh, on the store of its degree if it, if it remains online all the time. So that's the uh, other advantage. That's why it's self-sovereign. And finally, the, uh, anytime you want to prove that you have a degree or you have this birth, birth date or you have this uh, license number, we can convert like, you know, driving license, we can uh, convert other, we can convert PAN card, we can convert uh, uh, school IDs, etc., all into this format. So that there is no database maintained online. Archive database may be there, but online database, their maintenance always exposes the database to possible attacks and data leakage. So that will not, that will be reduced. So this is the whole idea of this. And so this was first uh, done, uh, first application of this idea was on the degree of IIT Kanpur. So it is tamper proof, uh, globally verifiable. So anybody who can, uh, you know, uh, uh, look up our, our blockchain can actually get the IIT Kanpur uh, key, uh, public key and can verify. Selectively disclosable and selective to user consent, right? So the user has the full consent on what to, uh, what to share. And as I said that this is how it is, the IIT Kanpur uh, on the blockchain publishes its schema and the public keys and this at the same time <coughs> signs the individual components of the degree uh, with the IIT Kanpur's private key. And then once the student has it, he can go to any employer or any uh, uh, graduate school or wherever he want, needs to prove that he has this degree, he can do this with this verification. So students can use this degree for instantly proving their educational qualification while applying for higher education in India and abroad. Uh, can also, uh, if LinkedIn and Twitter enables this, uh, or Facebook, etc., enables this verification. <coughs> Students can actually prove their degrees instead of just writing there that I have a PhD or I have a master's, whatever. Uh, so uh, whatever is uh, put on Twitter, LinkedIn, etc., can be actually uh, completely trusted. Can be used by the potential employers to do background check and can be used for upload degrees and certificates in online forms for exams and job applications. So uh, here are some glimpses of when uh, the prime minister pushed a button and the degrees were uh, sent to all the all the students and this was our uh, topper of this year. 
<coughs> that it shows on the screen the degree. Now, after this experience, uh, what we heard, and we don't know the uh, veracity of this, that Prime Minister actually uh, advised the uh, the people from the uh, uh, the uh, committee of this Prime Minister's Bal Puraskar to actually uh, tell us to do this for them because this year it was due to COVID. It was not a physical uh, ceremony. It was a, uh, a virtual ceremony. So apparently the prime minister himself, and we don't know the, uh, this we heard from via media, so uh, 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 has taken the initiative to actually use this to provide the degree. So so the, uh, the degree was uh, given, and this is what the degree looked like this year. Uh, sorry, not the degree. It was the it was the award certificate for innovation, for bravery, uh, for uh, uh, performance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it was actually uh, uh, you know uh, given in the presence of the uh, minister of uh, uh, child uh, uh, development and and women and child development, as well as the prime minister. These digital certificates were issued in on January twenty fourth. <coughs> so. Again, the same thing that the certificates are tamper-proof, globally verifiable, selectively disclosable, and selective to user consent. So, so I, now I want to show you how this can be used more broadly in the society. So uh, we'll show you this animation here. So Vidya wants to get uh, her degree from IIT Kanpur and apply for a job in Kruban, and then apply for a credit card in SBI. And here we are assuming and we are in talks with UIDI. We don't know what 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 whether they will want to enable this uh, on their uh, on their uh, site. But if they do enable, then this is how it will work, right? So so the Vidya first goes to the other site and does EKYC to prove her authentic uh, identity. Then other sends the other card as verifiable credential to her wallet. So now she has on her wallet, a, basically an other card, but in a verifiable credential form with the digital signature of UIDI on each piece of data on her <clears> other <throat> card. Now I have to, uh, then she goes to IIT Kanpur and proves her other identity. So IIT Kanpur knows that this is, uh, this is exactly who she, she is claiming to be. So IIT Kanpur uh, looks up her, their degree and and gives her a verifiable credential for, for credential form of the degree. So she gets the degree also in the verifiable credential form and her wallet is getting richer. Now she goes to Kruban. There she actually uh, proves her identity and then uh, either through other or through uh, her uh, degree. And then she, uh, let's say she gets a job. So then Kruban issues her a job certificate with her salary information, et cetera, all in the piece of uh, all uh, uh, verifiable, all, all as verifiable credential. Now she goes to State Bank and assume State Bank also has a verifier. So State Bank can verify her degree, her identity, her address, and from the job certificate, her income. And she can actually be, uh, her credit card can be instantly approved because she, she, she it's her job uh, and income proof she presents and there is no way to uh, suspect that it is wrong, right? So this is the kind of a scenario that we are <clears throat> envisioning. Now, there are other side benefits of this for a video of how this technology can enable password uh, passwordless login. So uh, please let me know if uh, you can hear the sound. So here is, uh, uh, you go to a website. No, no sound coming, sir, yet. No, so right now in this video, actually, there is no sound. Okay, sir. okay sir. So you see that you go to the website, it presents you with a, with a, uh, with a QR code, you uh, do this, then a request is raised to your wallet, you send your verify, verified credentials to the site, and that will basically prove your identity to the site, so there is no need for uh, you know, username, password, etc. So it's a password-based login system. So there is another video here where you have the uh, airline uh, travel, and this is for autofilling, right? So the autofill of the information can be done uh, like this. <clears throat> so, so you go to airline website, let's say, and uh, they present a QR code. 
and when you scan it, your uh, your this is the, on the right side your wallet. So you select uh, what what information you want to share with this site, and uh, then uh, the airline can actually fill this and issue you the boarding pass instantly. So other popular use cases will be in the uh, you know uh, onboarding clients, eKYC. Uh, applying for credit card, uh, employees verification, mortgage application in the banking and finance sector, travel and transportation. Uh, you can uh, convert travel permits, uh, driving license, vaccination certificate, uh, shipping documentation, uh, EKYC, all in this format. So they can be instantly done. So these are some of the possible use cases that, uh, but this requires a complete uh, acceptance of this technology across the board in various organizations, including government like UIDI and uh, you know, uh, the Department of Vehicle Transport, et cetera, et cetera, banks. So that, that is a tall order and we don't know if we can uh, work uh, you know, hard enough and convincing enough to uh, uh, make this happen, but this can happen if uh, there are enough uh, takers. So in education sector also, identity during exams, uh, digital degrees and certificates, uh, verified CV and qualification, institute enrollment certificates, uh, government also voter ID, passport, uh, identity access management, all kinds of applications are possible. So healthcare also, patient identity, health records, birth, uh, vaccination certificate, uh, and then other uses like password based login, password less login, authorized access, age verification, etc. And then, as I said, that the communication between the verification software and the other, uh, the wallet is uh, peer to peer and, and uh, completely, you know, uh, encrypted. So, and authenticated. So, that's the, the there is no eavesdropping there. The last thing I want to talk about, and I think I'm running out of time, but uh, I'll quickly go through this electronic health records with blockchain. This is uh, motivated by the fact that medical, so so we'll, I'll tell you how the thing, are, how the things are in IIT Kanpur. Of course, there are other centralized uh, medical uh, information management systems in big hospitals where things happen a lot, uh, you know, a lot more auto automated way. Uh, however, in our case, what happens is that we take a we take our uh, uh, health book to the uh, hospital uh, and make an appointment online. Actually, that that part is online in IIT Kanpur. Then we take our health book. The health, they insert a prescription slip inside the health book, and then we see the doctor. The doctor will actually write the prescription on this uh, on this piece of paper that was inserted, as well as a copy of that goes into the book. And there is no record with the doctor or with any information management system about my past disease. So if I use my health booklet, it will be very difficult to construct my medical history. So then, then uh, when I get a, when I, uh, the, the doctor orders lab test or doctor orders some medicine, then we go there and they don't keep any records. So, so they give me my blood test results, et cetera, or, or other kinds of results but they don't keep a record. So it's my duty to keep all the records. So they, that could have been also put into a centralized management system, but we don't have that. Then finally, uh, the, when I, uh, if I, in, in case there is a payment to be made, so the payment is made and then uh, instantly you get a receipt, et cetera. So, uh, but, but there is no uh, communication channel or uh, information management uh, uh, system that is there. Now the question that was raised is that if we do it in a centralized web-based system, it will work. We'll create various views for various types of uh, doctor will have one view to this. The patient will have another view to this. The lab uh, will have another view to this and medicine store will have another view to this. And it is possible to automate this uh, easily without blockchain. However, if you do it centralized, then there it becomes a huge repository of data and the data can be also manipulated by insiders or through uh, uh, cyber attack, et cetera, which means that uh, it's, a, it's a risk. And, and given that data uh, the privacy bill is coming up, it becomes an additional 
uh, risk of uh, being penalized by the regulators, etc. So therefore, what we have uh, proposed is that we'll keep all these records on a blockchain and uh, this uh, blockchain data will actually be encrypted. Uh, so therefore only uh, when there is a consent of the patient to decrypt the data to see it, and that will be transient. That is the, for the time uh, the, the data is to be looked at by the doctor or by the lab or by the prescription uh, and portion of the data, not all part of the data, then it can be done through what we call a proxy re-encryption. So data is encrypted with the, with the key of the patient, but the patient can ask a proxy to actually re-encrypt the data without having to unencrypt the data. The proxy can re-encrypt the data so that it can be seen by another person, say Bob. So Alice wants to uh, reveal some information to Bob, but he doesn't want anybody else to see it. So Bob is the doctor, Alice is the patient. So Alice basically, uh, when the doctor requests Alice that I want to see your past record, then Alice can actually tell the proxy to re-encrypt the thing from Alice's key to the doctor's key. And the, the, and the doctor will be able to see it, but nobody else will be able to see it. But then this can be also time locked, which means that doctor can only see it in a time window after which this re-encryption will be withdrawn by the proxy. So that is how this, uh, this, this thing uh, works. And, and we have done this, and this is kind of the solution we proposed to our health center, which uh, got, uh, they, they, they agreed to this and they wanted to run a pilot uh, back in March 2020, which is kind, kind of stuck uh, even today. But, but the, uh, the idea remains the same that the doctor, uh, you know, the patient goes for appointment, uh, the uh, appoint hospital uh, accepts or rejects the uh, appointment, then a patient sends a re-encryption key. <clears throat> but before that, you know, uh, the doctor, when the doctor, uh, the patient visits, the doctor requests a re-encryption key to the proxy, the patient gets a notification and patient agrees or disagrees. If it agrees, then the doctor gets to see the reports and uh, uh, the prescribes the medicine. The medicine, medicine is also locked, uh, you know, and, and then uh, with the doctor's key until the bill is paid. And when the bill is paid, then the prescription is unlocked for the patient and re-encrypted with the patient's encryption key. And then if patient goes to the uh, medicine store for the prescription filling, then the patient will have to actually uh, do a proxy encryption for the medicine store to see what the, what, what the medicines are, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the idea. So IIT Kanpur Health Center had 15 plus uh, doctors, 40 plus nurses and stuff, and 10,000 plus patients, including our uh, you know, retired employees, et cetera. So we were uh, positioned to actually do this entire pilot for this, uh, which uh, I hope will still happen uh, maybe this year. Uh, so I will not go into the stakeholder mapping and all that stuff. So we also developed a doctor's uh, user interface through where they can write prescription in handwritten, handwriting. So, and then uh, this will be converted to uh, ASCII characters and be uh, you know, stored in the database. Uh, so uh, that, that's the kind of thing. So, so uh, in uh, so to close this, uh, I would say that uh, uh, we at the National Blockchain Project, as well as the blockchain, National Blockchain Project incubated company Kruben, want to actually uh, do little more with this. So we had been looking at this uh, zero knowledge proof base. So we have done some work actually on. How to, uh, how to do data analytics uh, uh, with uh, zero knowledge proof, federated machine learning, and in some cases with homomorphic encryption. Uh, that the work is still in, in, in its infancy. Uh, we also uh, want to onboard uh, this, uh, the other institutions, health centers, if we can do that, and also integrate the financial stakeholders so the payment process is smoother. And uh, that might actually change the health infrastructure. It's not something that is uh, revolutionary. This has been, uh, you know, uh, a centralized information management system all over the world, uh, which uh, has all this smooth uh, transfer of data, etc. 
they uh, do, do some some of them do, use some cryptography but not all of them but this is with the blockchain this makes it uh, you know the data integrity uh, remains intact so so with that i will uh, complete my talk and i can uh, take any questions uh, as uh, if there are any sir before any question i would like to congratulate uh, iit kanpur and especially you and uh, professor uh, manendra agwal for creating the such a incubation and a startup which is basically which could get the national uh, blockchain project is a really great pride for the nation and for the iit kanpur so congratulations uh, congratulations sir uh, your talk has been really wonderful and uh, you know all the systems that you how you are solving the social problems and national problems and different uh, property whether is related to property is related to kaveri and ekyc and different or ehr so uh, thank you very much i think uh, we need some little more time in order to capture whatever you have uh, the food you have given and the stuff you have given so certainly uh, wonderful and thank you very much sir so thank you thank you we'll for the forward to uh, next speaker uh, mrs uh, lakshmi ishwari ma'am you are there Yes, sir. I'm there. So, so allow me to uh, read your brief profile. Though is, you know, that you are doing a lot of work, and but I will uh, take it a very brief profile. I'll read. Presently, uh, P. R. Lakshmi Ishwari uh, is working as a senior director and center head C. D. A. C. H. A. D. A. V. A. R. C. V. A. S. Involved in R and D in a security, focusing on the end system security, embedded security, mobile device security. and especially she is doing number of projects in the blockchain technology she is associated with cdac for past 21 years in the various r&d projects solution development capacity building initiatives and she has also early work with nit warangal for the two years so i am cutting short the uh, profile uh, because we have we are more keen to hear her, her and thank you ma'am uh, it was uh, of course a challenge in order to get your time and uh, Get your slot, but uh, thank you very much. In spite of your such a busy schedule and number of projects, like uh, Professor Sandeep Sukla is there, so same way you have been very busy. But uh, thankful, and I am very kind enough to Dr. Sarad Babu. He uh, he has connected me to you. So thank you, ma'am. Please thank you. Thank you, yours. sir. Hope I am audible. Yeah. Yeah. Screen is visible, sir. Yeah. Very fine. Yeah. The full yeah. Mode. Thank yeah. you, sir. So it's uh, my privilege to be part of this event and. Uh, uh I, it's nice actually listening to the experts in this domain uh, uh the topic uh, which i am almost in the similar direction like the other speakers have uh, talked about like sandeep sir so just like the way iit kanpur has taken up various use cases so even uh, with the uh, mighty ministry of electronics and it so even at cdac we have started working in this particular domain from 2017 so we will try to share our experiences uh, uh, in this particular domain so uh, like most of the members might be aware but i just want to see that i belong to cdac uh, i work from hyderabad center of cdac cdac is basically a scientific society under ministry of electronics and uh, uh, it uh, government of india and we are located across india at various locations and the engest center is silchar and the patna so and our headquarters is at pune so we are in different uh, technology domains and uh, the cyber security is blockchain is one of the vertical so this just this slide just gives an idea I, i don't spend much time in this so just gives an overview on the the way the uh, the the uh, like the way the technology is the getting the business value and all is increasing so you can say that as per gartner predictions like uh, so it's almost 2025 it's going to be 176 uh, billion dollars and uh, it's going to be 3.1 trillion by 2030 so this is the kind of predictions people are making on this particular technology so uh, before going uh, further actually just i thought i will try to talk about something about the way we are trying to look at the trust see ultimately like if you look at it uh, we were past actually in the nomadic age then presently we are more in the institutional kind of uh, scenario and uh, what we are talking is uh, over the period we can think about uh, the trust enabled through the program programs are the smart contracts see like uh, if you talk about nomadic age where the schools colleges and the banks all these kinds of institutions are not there the primitive age actually most of the time uh, the the risk and trust assess, assessment kind of thing 
So what is the risk involved in associating with a person or in a, a particular uh, the group of people? So by the, that, the, that is actually uh, carried out uh, through some kind of gestures, uh, facial expressions and other things like that. So earlier, actually, the kind of thrust is created uh, more towards the gestures and other things like that. But over the period when the man developed and all, uh, then when we created the schools, colleges, all these kind of things, the governance and all is come into picture. So we have the specialized people or the, who are the authorized people whom we are trying to trust and we have institutionalized the trust as evolved over the period. So now we have the trusted people whom uh, we are approaching and we can trust banks and all and uh, uh, the various stakeholders are verified and they try to keep a track uh, of all the transactions or whatever are happening. And gradually those institutions, when we moved to the digital age and uh, when we adopted the internet and worldwide web and all heavily, then all those things uh, we, we try to have the same institutionalized whatever we have in the physical world, we try to adopt them in the, the digital world by using the various technologies like in terms of the security, in terms of securing the communication or biometrics or authentication or, or access controls like that. We try to identify the threat modeling of uh, the various scenarios when we move to the digital for our institutional approach and we try to enable the security. So, but actually here, uh, the, over the period, what we are talking is we have a problem. Now, what we are looking at is something like instead of depending on the people, why don't we have the technology providing the layer of trust, okay, by having some kind of uh, decentralized environments and having some kinds of the programs enab enabled on top of that particular decentralized environment, so which actually try to provide us the layer of trust rather than depending on the, the, the trusted parties and other things. That's why now we are talking about uh, having some kind of trust protocols. So blockchain is something uh, which is trying in that particular direction. So the objective is to move towards enabling the trust uh, the, through the, the programs. So for that, actually what we are looking at, we are trying to take the amalgamation of all the various, the previously existing technologies to look at the, the hash algorithms or the encryption algorithms or distributed systems, all these things. So these are all uh, the uh, technologies which are available in the past, but all these things are integrated with the business value of trying to enable some kind of trust in our systems. So, so like if you look at our databases presently, which we are using is the institutional approach. So what we are doing is there are trusted people whom we are verifying with the passwords or biometrics or certificates and other things. Later, they are trying to carry out the transactions. But we are, we are facing problem in terms of through trusted channels, sometimes of malpractice happening. And at the same time, uh, what is happening is we don't have the proper verification built in our database and other things where we can say that, okay, so whether some kind of fraud happened or what kind of thing. Because most of the cases, our present database are uh, writable. Okay, it's not appendable kind of thing. So I can go and modify the things. Whereas if you look at these kind of things, the technologies, whatever we are trying to look at. So these are append only kind of things. So where you cannot, and there is a integrity maintained for all the transactions in a time sequence manner so that the tampering cannot happen. So the, for that, actually, with all this amalgamation, we give the name as blockchain, and it is uh, distributed across the various nodes so that the single point of failure and other things are not done. And uh, the consensus, okay, consensus-based recording happens uh, based on the, 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 the history available at each node and based on the current transaction details and uh, who is initiating the authentication aspects from all these things. So we are trying to uh, verify the transactions and then carry out the transactions and then committing the transactions and then finally uh, storing these details, transaction details on the blockchain. So we, we have moved from the, we are moving from institutional approach to something through the technologies we want to enable a layer on top of our, the network, which implicitly tries to provide the trust rather than depending only on the people. So that's where actually is the one. So if you look at it earlier, we have central bank, banks and other things who are the, which are actually giving the hierarchy of the trust created. But now we have something like that. The, this ledger, instead of storing at a central place, the time sequence storage, now we have maintained across all the different nodes and everyone has the details and it, the system is transparent. So any two people are based, uh, the nodes will try to enable the consensus and verifiability aspects and other things. So which helps to complete the transactions and time. So this is something uh, we are towards that. And if you look at the market, the in terms of the government, actually the global blockchain government market is almost like uh, 6.4 uh, 6 US dollar, uh, million US dollars in the year 2020. And it is expected to uh, reach to 39.7 billion US dollars by 2020 
seven and with a CJ, uh, CAGR of uh, almost 80.5. Okay. So if you look at the market trends and driving forces, actually, so the requirement is growing collaboration across organizations towards developing novel systems is one of the driving force and increasing usage of blockchain as service, like the way we move towards the cloud and offering various uh, the things as service. Now the, there is a tremendous increase in the need for blockchain as service and increasing adoption of distributed ledger technologies and high demand for cloud-based services. So these are the, the, the need of the hour. And when, since we are focusing more in terms of the government, the potential benefit uh, when we talk about why blockchain for government, so here we are dealing with the permission kind of scenarios. And here one is the building trust with citizens, that is it's the utmost important thing for the government actually. So this kind of trust has to be created with citizens. Citizens need to be uh, the, the, what is it, that they'll be, they should be happy and they should try to trust the systems in order to uh, carry out for a sense to activities and all. Improves transparency and accountability because so we, they are, it is maintained across all the nodes and we are trying to uh, keep a track of all these things in a time sequence manner and which is verifiable at a later point of time. So that's all for the accountability. Speeds of transactions, because instead of people, now the systems are trying to carry out through the smart contracts and other things. So definitely it speeds up. Protecting sensitive data, so we can store whatever required with appropriate layers of security and reducing cost and improving efficiency. Okay? So these are some of the things. So which helps us to that. Now the question is, the, so what is the value addition? Like what exactly we are trying to do here? See, uh, this technology or blockchain helps us to facilitate the process of recording the transactions and tracking assets. If you talk about any kind of system, so there is some activity, like any kind of things, like you, whether it is schools or banks or any kind of health department or any kind of things, actually. So we have some kind of the business objective defined and then various state stakeholders are involved and they're carrying out the transactions and we are keeping the, the details about the transactions and assets. So assets can be the various thing, like in the previous uh, Sandeep sir spoke, spoken about the land records, uh, that it can be a sorry, education certificate, it can be anything. So, so like the, basically for governance or business network, we can try to, in all these kind of things, we have uh, these kind of transactions that are happening. When you talk about an asset, it can be anything, it can be a house, car, farm, a producer, it's uh, in a, if you look at the food, the agri chain and other thing, farm produce, they're trying to use it cash or land or intangible things like intellectual property or patents, copyrights, branding. So anything of value can be tracked and traded onto the, this particular. So anything of value can be thing which re reducing the risk and the cutting cost and any enabling verifiable chain tamper in this. Okay. So now looking at the segments, if you look at the specific, uh, the, uh, the segments where uh, we need to use this particular thing. So asset uh, registry, like uh, the uh, land registry and other things, so we can have the agreements and other things, build MOUs, all these kind of things, contracts. So we can have the uh, the code uh, can be built. The computer code can be enabled on top of it in a tamper evident uh, proof manner. And that can be triggered uh, proper when appropriate events happen. Identity management and healthcare, education, public transport for vehicles. So you can say that uh, the vehicle from the, the time the vehicle is released from the store till the end of the lifetime of the store, all these activities can be Tracked and the, tracked onto the blockchain. So he quotes port evidence data, agreement full food supply chain, logistics, payments, voting, collaboration platforms. So all these things actually the the many applications where we can take the benefit of this particular. So this uh, slide basically I will not spend time actually just uh, see that every state across India uh, started uh, appreciating this particular technology almost from 2016 2017 onwards. Everyone has started taking some specific use cases. So where they tried for the, uh, the POC and then they have successfully carried out the deployments. So these are the details like uh, AP talks about in cybersecurity, healthcare and all. So similarly, if I take about the Telangana land registry, cheap fund operations, digital education certificate, Tamil Nadu in agriculture, healthcare education. And if you look at overall top three use cases across land registries, one, farm insurance and digital certificate. These are... Uh, when we try to compare, I think these are the top three use cases which are considered uh, for this kind of technology. So, so with this background, actually, we appreciate the technology. There is a value addition, so which is enabling us the layer of trust without uh, having the intermediaries or uh, uh, institutional kind of trust. And the, it enables the accountability, uh, verifiability, and uh, other aspects. So with all these things, the Ministry of Electronics and IT wanted to uh, explore this particular technology and uh, see that where all we can adopt this. 
So in that direction, they have given the responsibility to CDAC to identify some specific uses and uh, use case and work in this particular direction. So one of the use case which we have taken in 2017 when we started working is the, uh, the property record management system. Okay, so just like IIT Kanpur has taken up, we also started in the year 2017, 2018 period, we started this particular thing. So before we adopt this particular technology, so we have carried out a lot of background work. So one is actually why property registration? See, whether it is possible, first of all, with the existing platforms, whatever blockchain platforms are there, so whether they, they are able to support the performance requirements of the application domain, scalability aspects, all these things, we had a carried out detailed study. So then we felt that because property registration is something where the less number of transactions happen on a high valued asset. So what we thought is definitely there is a need. Uh, it's a high valued and less number of transactions and it is possible to implement with the existing the platforms, whatever are supported. So with this, we started and then we try to explore what all the present challenges we face with the, land, the property registration or land registration kind of thing. And then that became a driving force for us in the, the design of this particular solution. So when we talk about the property registration, these are the challenges which we try to face. So across India, actually, like if you look at not only across India, even globally also, if you look at it, many countries, Estonia, Ghana, and other countries, uh, they have started this particular thing. So everywhere we have these kind of challenges. So the main challenges what we face is double registration. The same asset is uh, given on two different uh, names and all. Producing fake uh, CLT documents for registration. People come because most of the time, the SRO will look at the documents and then he will try to initiate the registration process. And then other, the third point is actually insider attack or traditional database related attacks. So the, in some cases, what happened, even the trusted people at the institutions, they are involved in the, uh, the fraud and where they try to uh, manipulate the data. So if you look at it, these are the three typical challenges uh, which, are, which are faced normally with the property registration. Okay, so then we try to analyze so how we can try to address these kind of things with the, the blockchain enabled ledger. Suppose if you are going uh, for a ledger, so or if you say that I want to maintain uh, a ledger uh, the, for a property registration, what should be the desired features for? So definitely electronic ledger of property record, it should be reliable, time stamped. Okay, all the registrations or the transaction involved in the change of ownership from one person to the other, they should be in a time, time stamp manner, tamper evident manner, and it should provide non repudial proof for each transaction. I think we should be able to prove with the third party whether it is a course or something. So we should be able to prove whether this particular person is involved in the transaction or not. And implicit link to document, the title history. Most of the time, the citizens face a lot of challenges when they are trying to purchase some property from the other people. The problem happens that they have to look at who are the previous owners and other things. So most of the time, they, they go to the SROs, they collect the documents and other things from the database. But if you try to enable some kind of linking of all these property registration documents implicitly happens so that by just giving the idea of that particular property, we should get the details about all the previous owners. That should be stored in a time sequence manner, which will definitely use a lot of transparency. And the high availability, the ledger should be distributed to avoid single point of failure. So that is one thing. So it should be available at uh, multiple things so that if something is tampered and other things. And similarly, in case if some uh, malware or something like uh, uh, or some kind of uh, the security challenges happens and you lose the data, I think we should be able to recover it from other places. Okay, so these things, we, we try to look at the challenges, then we try to uh, see that how we can, what are the desired features. Then we try to, uh, like, uh, because we have taken one state, like the way they work with uh, Karnataka, we, we work with Telangana because we are located in Hyderabad. So what we have done is, see, this is something when we started, so we were not having any idea about the, the, the complete workflow of the property registration. The application was built by NIC. NIC uh, developed the application. So MIT is actually the initiating age ministry for to uh, take up this R&D activity. And the IT and C department uh, acted like a spark from the Telangana government. They are the people, actually the department actively supports the, the emerging technologies and always uh, extend supports in trying to adapt it to the various use cases benefiting the citizens and government. So they've acted like a spoke, we work closely. And because the interacting with the different state governments, again, uh, become a challenge for us. So the stamps and registration department gave us the, the domain knowledge and the, this thing and actual application details from NIC and uh, Spark is from ITNC. They helped us to coordinate with all these people. And CDAC is a technology partner for implementing this. And our approach was, 
rather than trying to think about building a system from the scratch. Because if you think about building a new system, which is already in place, and uh, what happens is actually, like, uh, see, one thing is it will take a lot of time to implement it. Another thing is, uh, see, when you want a person to uh, change the system to another one, there will be a lot of resistance. So what we thought is, why don't we try to benefit benefits of this technology and implement it in the existing system, system itself? So our approach was seamless integration with the existing system and workflow. So safeguard legal concerns and user experience because the regulatory act, whatever is there for land records, we don't want to change anything in that direction, but we want to extend the, the use of this technology to take the benefits of it in the existing workflow. So, so seamless integration with existing system and workflow, safeguard legal, legal concerns and user experience, harness blockchain benefits and quick adoption of the emerging technology. So quickly we wanted to adopt and demonstrate. So with this, we started. So the next step was trying to trying to understand what is the workflow. So what we have done is, see, we try to look at um, the important phases. So generally, if you look at uh, the, the, the macro level steps involved in the property registration. So the first step is with the document writers and other things like pre-processing of the data, where they try to collect the, the vendor vendor details and the schedule, the property details and the dimension details and other things like that. And then the first record, once the, they approach for the change of ownership, the first record created at the SRO office is a check slip will be generated, where the details about this particular, who is the current owner, like other, what is the property and who is the, the person going to purchase vendor venti and other things. The first record will be entered and a check slip number will be generated. So once it is done, the after that, there will be a specific period of time where the, the financial transactions and all will be completed. And then the, 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 the afterwards, when everything is done, uh, the, the fingerprint signature, photograph, photos, and, and other things are captured from the, the parties. And once they are uh, verified everything, then actually the, the regular document will be generated, which actually reflects the change of ownership. And the scanned copy of it is digitally signed and stored. stored. This, is a, this, is a, this is a process in the database. It is being happened. What we have done is we have extended the same system uh, by uh, creating a blockchain-based property uh, record management system for this. So what we have done is, see, these are becomes the two crucial steps which are important with respect to change of ownership of a particular uh, transaction. So uh, what we have done is, we have captured these details, the check slip generation and, and all these kind of things. We have put them in a time sequence manner into PRMS ledger. So what happens is these transactions, we are interfacing with this system along with NIC. We have enabled this interface so that these details are stored in the property record management system into this particular ledger. So all the transactions, the time sequence manner, tamper evident manner, they are all stored into this particular. Similarly, when the, the final document is generated, so we, we see what happens is like uh, sometimes there can be a fraud with respect to sale document also, fake document as well. So what we have done is, the proof of existence, that is uh, the verifying the content in order to verify the content of the document, the ownership and the time at which it is created. All these details are captured, proof of existence of this particular thing. We are trying to put the CLD document into the POE, proof of existence nature. And uh, like uh, the Sandeep sir was mentioning about interplanetary file system and other things. Here we also have an interplanetary file system at the back end where we are trying to store the records and all. So now this is the kind of interface system we have built. So what, what is the benefit we are giving after storing this is, one is the benefit to the citizens. So what is that is encumbrance search, there is a, the, the, the channel created, a interface enabled in the website. Okay, so where the, they are trying to, uh, they can get the details about the, the, uh, the previous owners and all. Now what we have shown to the government is that this encumbrance search by giving the ownership details, they can capture the details from the blockchain so that uh, so the citizens can have trust because they are not coming from database directly, but in a blockchain in a time sequence manner, whatever stored, they are going to be given. At the same time, whenever a, next time when a person approaches uh, the SRO for the change of ownership with that, so the, the, the SRO can try to definitely look at the details of the, the particular property from this, verifying that details from this particular. So that is the kind of, he can verify that and then he can continue the activities. Okay, so now these are kind of a system which we have designed. And uh, so buyer seller approach SRO. So generate the check slip number, which normally happens with the storing in the database and other thing. Now the second block, uh, bottom block is the one which we have implemented with the proper interfacing. So blockchain ledger and with the 
threat servers and the smart contracts required smart contracts and the open APIs through which we can interface. So verify verification, one of details uh, during check slip generation or citizens or any other department like uh, revenue or survey and settlement department, anyone who want to have the details, they can try to look at this. In terms of that. So, so these are kind of system which we have built. So uh, what is the innovation here in this particular case is that title ownership verification, if you look at in the pre-deployment, was basically based on the documents, whatever are produced, based on the documents. But now post-deployment, now we are looking, verification happens from the blockchain details. Addressing the internal attacks because the database modifications, if someone tries, these details are actually now we are storing in the, uh, the blockchain. If anyone tries to generate a new transaction, anything, because it is only appended, so you have the details about all other previous things in that in tamper evident manner. Encumbrance search is not manual or collection of the previous, but it is a automated, which is taken from the blockchain. Database is not centralized, now it is distributed. Double registration and fake document creation, because now it is in a time sequence manner, and uh, the, we have the proof of existence ledger, where we are trying to store the, the CLD document. So you'll be able to address these kind of things. And smart contracts, see now actually like um, the goal is the same system now, right now, uh, we have not enabled the complete vendor vendor directly interacting with each other through smart contracts and completing the change of ownership. That system, you're not, uh, as of now, the design is there in the system, but we are, it's not implemented because it is not there as per our regulatory act. But in future, we can think about, they did not even go to the, the SRO, the vendor vendor, they can, uh, uh, the, through the verification and other things. So the, through smart contracts and other things, they can try to complete the registration and they need not go to the specific SRO office also. Anywhere from anywhere, they can try to do. Okay, these are the kind of things. So this kind, this case study or this use case has given us a lot of experience actually in order to understand the technology, the value addition, and what will be the appropriate use cases where we can take. Because see, just adopting something, a uh, new thing and without so much value may not uh, the features because again, we'll be we'll add up a lot of overhead. But this has given us a lot of things. And so then the government has supported us in deploying us in the Semshaba district. The, we even actually migrated the records uh, which, which are in the digital from uh, digital form from 2008 to 2018 onto this particular thing. And we carried out the live transactions onto that particular system. Okay. So provides reliable uh, encumbrance search without any manual interaction. Ready. So, okay. Reduce the manpower efforts and revenue can be generated from citizen for each encumbrance. So now actually like uh, right now, uh, yeah, it was almost for more than one year or so, like it live transactions happen. But recently the government has started a new portal called Dharani portal. So where the land registrations happen. Now in the phase two, uh, there is a plan to integrate the blockchain into this particular. But otherwise the system actually we have implemented and uh, like even live transactions happen till 2020. So implemented across 11 nodes and even uh, at some of the state data center and CDAC uh, thing. And the statewide register, generally actually what happened, see, we need to look at how many transactions per minute uh, is uh, in this application is supporting and what the blockchain platform support, all this we have done. So statewide transactions uh, properties allowed 15 plus and transactions per minute for PM, PRMS can handle our solution is up to. So easily we can, even we have made the expansion plan also for adopting this particular thing across the state. So this has, uh, uh, we, we actually presented this in ISO TC307 working group. So, and it is accepted one of the, the, the use case uh, in this particular thing, because globally uh, from different countries, they identified different use cases. Uh, one uh, use case from uh, like uh, the land records, uh, which is implemented by us is uh, selected for this particular thing. So, and also we received the Scotch gold award in 2020 in government's domain and also uh, blockchain based uh, property registration, one of the four finalists in the Asia Pacific region for Gartner I Innovation Award. And it's the only one nomination, but though we are not in the selected finally, but uh, it's one of the nomination out, one of the nom only nomination from India out of the four finalists uh, uh, in the Asia Pacific region. So, so this is the, these are the learnings and it has given us a lot of things. See, like um, definitely see when we look at it, uh, because the, uh, the the simple application are which is very important though i say simple it's important we keep hearing about uh, fake education uh, documents degree certificates awarded sometimes we keep hearing uh, news like uh, the koti area of hyderabad the people get the fake degree certificates kind of thing so they the definitely because the, the the kind of the the features the blockchain technology provides definitely will be able to address this particular problem uh, straightforward we can address it so we thought okay with whatever infrastructure we have created with the poe whatever we made it 
we made it as a generic proof of existence framework so that any document can be tried to verify so this is our system which we see and another thing is one important thing is to like uh, the fake certificates and all another thing is when student gets an a job and other things the employer carry out the third party verification process so there we put some people they put some people which involves time as well as money to verify uh, the whether the certificates whatever are produced are proper or not so this simplifies this so normally if you look at it uh, organization prepare certificate uh, generally if you look at traditional systems student collects them submits to employers and uh, during the when when he selected for a particular job and all so they hire the 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 verification uh, hire third parties verification bodies for the background verification and like that involves actually some couple of weeks interacting with the organization either it can be schools or previous organization or other things whereas if you look at the blockchain kind of system organization prepares the certificates shares with the, uh, the it puts it um, uh, populates onto the blockchain and shares the receipt with the students their details about that particular thing so the integrity of that and id of that particular thing and other things now the student what he will do he will whenever um, he has uh, want to submit he just submit that particular thing and employer or whoever it is either maybe he is going for further studies to for ms and other things in all cases when they want to verify they can directly try to thrust this this becomes a single source of truth rather than trying to depend on the people so this is the system which we have built and we have we have given the certificates and all for all the workshops which sida conducted during the uh, the lockdown period and all on for all the online workshops and we are uh, planning to extend it to all our pg diploma courses so where every six months once we have the students around 5000 students uh, getting certificate from all sida centers we we are implementing this program. so it's not only that uh, verification this system is proof of existence we made it as very generic and we are trying to adopt it whenever they we work with the different departments when they come forward the base system will remain the same so another interesting use case which we have taken up is the, the e voting solution again actually like uh, telangana government has uh, uh, readily come forward to try this particular thing so actually this was almost like uh, i can say 2020 uh, october or sometime uh, there was a meeting initially like uh, with it secretary and uh, Telang uh, telangana uh, state uh, election commission there was a meeting that they are planning to have so initially they said that okay they want to have that solution to be implemented in a uh, uh, three months period but uh, anyway with, with all this kind of understanding the the present system domain and other things so but later definitely we almost took some seven eight months for the implementation and then we have carried out the dry run in the month of october in summer october 2021 so this is will say so how we approach this is again in the similar direction we have the domain people uh, that is the, the state election commission and we we have the itnc department which is the driving force the spark which helps us and they funded this project also to cdac earlier one was uh, mighty funded and we implemented whereas telangana government funded this particular activity and we have the technical expert committee uh, we have rajat mohana professor rajat mohana director of iit bilai and professor shivakumar from iit uh, bombay and uh, some other members actually they are part of this committee they used to guide us actually we used to have weekly meetings and all uh, in evolving the design of this particular solution see the idea is the, the when if i talk about uh, the e voting the idea uh, came into picture like actually uh, during the lockdown period see the many people senior citizens and other people are people with a, some some kind of challenges they face problem like when they uh, want to go to the vote uh, the boot and try to cast the vote so that time the idea was why don't we think about a solution where we can try to uh, uh, provide it uh, the voting can be done from the smart smartphone so this is all is the background so with this we started and if you look at it if i if i say that i want to enable a person uh, sitting at home and he has to cast a vote from the smart uh, phone definitely people say it's a, it's a challenging thing even in the present scenario where when people are going to the controlled polling booth and trying to cast even then there are a lot of challenges so people are not trusting the evm machines and people like the some kind of mob attacking and like lot of challenges we are facing now people say like uh, how how is it possible to think about a smartphone having different operating systems attack space is too high with different operating system different applications and we cannot trust any of this google uh, just uh, uh, downloading and all, like lot of fake applications and all so this is background is there definitely even when we entered into this but one thing was there in our mind that at some point we need to start this and with the, our like for the period whatever challenges we should keep addressing and maybe after couple of years we maybe we'll have a stable solution so with this we started 
and definitely blockchain is only one of the component in the overall system design the blockchain alone is not trying to address any kind of thing here see blockchain we used it basically because we have to keep track of all the attendance of the people and then show the the voting details in a secured manner okay in a secret ballot whatever the way we stored in the see in a physical uh, elections may whatever the way things happen all the domain understanding we had and then the same things we tried to implement them by using the various technologies okay so smartphone again we have the biometrics liveliness detection and then uh, the the device authentication we had the other uh, the based authentication also carried out other binded mobiles whatever are there that is become the one of the starting point to us and the face recognition and we we try to use the telangana uh, electoral data uh, where they have the vote the photo and all captured so from all these kind of things so we we had the system uh, the mobile level actually hardening the device and then we have the biometrics device authentication and the capturing the fingerprint of the device not just ima number we have something like that and liveliness de detection of the person and then uh, the securing the channel at the server end again when we are trying to store we, we have the blockchain based infrastructure created at the back end where we are trying to store all the uh, sequence of activities whatever taken in a voting process along with a separate uh, secret ballot on a separate blockchain stored uh, secret uh, securely till the time uh, uh, returning officer submits their the keys then only the voting counting and all will happen all that the way it is happen in the returning officer having a responsible like all those things are captured and implemented but here actually we have two phases which are done registration phase and voting phase what is registration phase is see when we conducted the dry run with the real people data in the kamam district so we opened almost 10 days 8th of october to 18th october for registration registration is the time where the citizen is trying to say the download the app and then he is registering for the e voting see it means that is the device be authenticated his uh, face will be detected liveliness detected everything and then once all these things are thoroughly kept uh, the verified and everything happens then actually uh, the he is enabled his registration process completed on the day of voting he can do it whereas the people who could not do that uh, the registration process because there can be a failure or who is not interested so they can go to the the physical voting booth and then do the cast the vote so that is the reason voting registration is done before because we have the the attendance and other things that records the or reports generated at the back end based on that we can identify that who has gone for the e voting and all so then uh, once it is done on the day of voting we we will say, enable a voting window say that morning 5 to night 11 o'clock during that particular period it is very simple so the the device authentic authentication is based is the connection just in two steps and uh, the way we have the kind of uh, uh, so what is that um, uh, like whenever a, they, they it, it will try to uh, uh, display the 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 what is that uh, the ballot and it will remain for some time and after it cast the confirmation assurance that whether he has voted to the right person and other things all these aspects we have taken care but definitely um, uh, the secret ballot and other things also with proper keys and other things we have taken care public private key cryptography and other things we have stored so that is how we have approached this particular thing and see definitely someone has question when we were making a presentation last time it's possible like suppose the husband can force the, the wife to or to cast to specific person it is possible actually see but what we are doing is uh, we are limiting from each device maximum two votes can be casted a smartphone two votes can be casted two people can try to bind um, uh, the, the one particular device for casting so but still there are challenges but in uh, the way the proctoring uh, centers are set up for carrying out the online exams and other things some advanced uh, techniques to monitor the things around surroundings of that kind of thing so definitely this can be more advanced and we can try to avoid so though maybe we not we not go to general elections and other things but in kind of department elections and other things like that people can definitely think about this solution this is another successful use case which you implemented so these are some of the ui screens which you have made it very very intuitive and the user friendly this is a ballot which gets displayed and um, actually they, they can give the feedback also at the end so we have consolidated the feedback given by all the users and it's uh, definitely it's very very promising and uh, people have accepted this actually uh, though initially we were thinking people may not accept but uh, definitely there was some kind of interest shown by the people so registration voting and then finally they have to submit the this is all about this particular thing. i i think uh, see this is i spent enough time on the use cases now i would like to just i think bk murthy sir also was covering uh, 
about the unified blockchain framework and all, but I will not take much time in that. I'll just take another uh, five, 10 minutes in, uh, to cover this particular thing. See, though, if you look at it, uh, the various uh, UI use cases and all, uh, uh, like people have proactively used, uh, adopted this particular technology and then started identifying the challenges in different domain and try to implement the use cases. But the challenge is most of the things are in the pilot or POC level. So the live systems are very, very limited. Okay. So some major deployments, if you look at it, like land records, education things, cheat fund management, drug supply chain, insurance like that, they have done it. Okay. So these are successful. People have piloted, carried out successfully. Even our learning is also in the similar direction. But there, there, if you want to look at expanding and taking it to the larger scale, there are the, the challenges. So now I think Sir was also trying to highlight this kind of thing. I just want to say that people are aware with the value addition. See, we are all aware that there is the potential for blockchain. You can enable uh, through uh, technologies, you can enable the trust that people have parity in that. And at the same time, we have implemented the various deployments and the prototypes we have implemented successfully in that. And uh, that this is successful. But if you look at it, now we are in silos. So one uh, see, uh, so we would have implemented from one blockchain platform. Others would have banks would have implemented another blockchain platform. See like that. Even if you look at it in the governance, education department, land records, and some other departments like that, there will be so many use cases. And if each one has got its own blockchain platform, uh, either we, uh, for a commercial one or open source one or indigenous one, if you have in silos, that will not fetch. So ultimately, we need to have some kind of unification so that uh, we can have onboard because the, there can be a requirement to have the access of data from one chain to the other, uh, all other things, interoperability aspects from one application to the other, all these kind of things. And we need to scale up this kind of deployment. So whenever you want to adopt it to other use cases or take it in a large scale deployment, one important thing is we should have a shared blockchain infrastructure, which is accessible across the cross domains. So that is something like that. So need for strong collaboration among all the stakeholders in the value chain, and we should have a some kind of the shared uh, emerge uh, shared infrastructure and cross domain applications. So definitely we moved from hype cycle to adoption and then from experimentation to pilot and people definitely say that okay, this, uh, there is a value addition for this particular thing, but strong collaboration and the uh, emerging of shared infrastructure is very, very important. So this is something which has driven mighty uh, to look at a national level blockchain framework. Uh, so geographically distributed national infrastructure for deployment of solutions for multiple platforms. We should support, see tomorrow if you have an indigenous platform, our own, we should be able to enable that. At the same time, some of the popular platforms, we should, the, so the uh, you, our stack should support with the appropriate open API so that we can onboard any application. See, because the kind of uh, the requirements we have currently, see, especially the manpower challenges, which everyone is facing now. See, uh, if you want really someone to gear up into the, complete understanding of the technology stack and then build applications. It's a minimum uh, period is six months, period to minimum period is six months. So now actually, if you look at the kind of the manpower we are getting, like uh, uh, they are hardly staying for one year or so with the, the kind of unstability we have with the industry. So I think the technology stack should be available with open API so that people need not worry about the underneath stack and the understanding of the details of the technology. They should be able to implement with the, the open APIs and build the applications easily. And also, we should have the, in the ecosystem, whatever is digital ecosystem, which has evolved over the period in our governance. All these things need to be brought into this particular thing and interoperability, cross platforms, cross chains, and other things. So, in, increase performance of smart contracts, scalability. Because now, actually, if you look at it, see the, the existing platform, all the platform will not support the, the all kinds of applications because the, the performance speeds, of, if you look at Visa transactions, credit card, it's too high. It will not be possible. So, and also enhance security for sensitive information and privacy enable. So the, these objectives actually the national level blockchain framework, which Sir was talking, actually, this is basically a MIT initiative, Ministry of Electronics and IT initiative. And actually they have identified different stakeholders like NIC is actually looking at hosting the infrastructure across the country and also offering the services through that particular thing. So now the, the like they are working in the direction and CDAC is actually like involved in the design and development of the platform. And uh, we also have the uh, the premier R&D and uh, the academic institutes like IITs, IDRBT, IIT Hyderabad, IIIT Hyderabad, IDRBT, SETS Chennai. Okay, all these the people are uh, involved in this particular thing along CDAC centers. So we are so for specific uh, thing like 
sets and uh, IDRPT work for the security aspects. So consensus and other things, IIT and other the people are working. So and similarly, at IIIT is also taking up something with the quantum related aspects, some advanced research consensus and other things like that. And we we take the responsibility of overall stack, CIDAC uh, teams, and also trying to integrate this kind of thing. And also, like whenever you talk about any of the present systems hosting web applications or anything like that, security assessment is a must. So we, before we try to host. So actually now here we need to understand and evolve some of the practices also. We are not clear how to carry out the complete assessment of a smart contract, whether it is vulnerability free. So for that, we have a vertical uh, component. We have teams actually available who are trying to look at the, uh, trying to evolve the guidelines, the process, tools, and other things which are required to carry out this. So this actually we started in the last year, 2021. And we are expecting that uh, the weeks right now we are the minimal demonstratable system is available. Now the uh, the infrastructure hosting uh, like uh, and then uh, trying to host the unified blockchain framework with the uh, 1.0, the first version we are expecting around June, uh, June to August we will be doing that. And further we are going to integrate the advanced and then on top of it we'll be building the applications. So different agencies can contribute and NIC uh, because they take uh, care of the different applications across India. They'll be taking a lead role and we uh, all agencies also will support that. So these all about the, the unified blockchain framework and <clears throat> our experiences in this particular topic. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, you touched up a different type of uh, e-voting solution and congratulations for the Scotch Gold Award 2020 in the governance, do governance Thank domain. You, also the Asia Pacific uh, Award, uh, which you are aiming for. Uh, really, thank you very much, ma'am. In the paucity of time, uh, we'll move forward and we'll avoid the questions here. So, but the, you know, it was, uh, I got a feedback that it is again one of the really excellent presentation and information you have presented. So, thank you, uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you so much. And and we'll see you. We'll see you in the panel discussion also, ma'am. Then we'll ask you the questions. Okay. Sir. Now. Uh, moving forward, uh, uh, Chris, uh, uh, Chris, sir, you are there? Uh, yes, I am here. Great. Welcome, Chris. Welcome, Chris Thank Cousins. You. Uh, Chris Cousins heads the team at Eve Exchange, a next generation crypto platform. So he's a man that who is uh, doing it by hands. And, uh, you know, from early age, he has been doing this, playing with it, I, I will say. So that brings together all the necessary features for individuals and businesses to harness the power of cryptocurrency. Chris is an early crypto adopter, 2011. So it's a really too early. Uh, Chris's depth of knowledge has a strong emphasis on the real use cases, education, regulation, along with the comprehensive understanding of the crypto ecosystem. He launched multiple crypto projects. So a lot of things we're learning. Christopher Cousins. Uh, known commonly as a Chris, uh, received a bachelor's degree from the St. Joseph University U.S. in uh, 2005. His, uh, 2005, his uh, early success as an equities and derivatives trader at several family, family offices afforded him to him the opportunity and uh, to develop the number of entrepreneurial pursuits in a variety of the leading uh, you know, sectors, uh, geographies, economic climate. Chris was the chief revenue officer of a leading ICANN. Oh, ICANN domain registry. Um, Chris, we also work with the ICANN in, uh, because we are uh, IPv6 men as well as, and as a significant experience managing international relationship with leading corporates at a uh, senior level. Uh, welcome, Chris. That's the platform is yours, and please throw all the, you know, enlighten us. Thank, thank you. Um, sorry, I, I just uh, was invited yesterday, so um, I didn't prepare an extensive uh, PowerPoint presentation as your previous panelists did. So I'm, I'm hoping that we could just have a nice discussion. No problem. No problem. You guys can uh, can can feel yeah. free to pick my brain about any uh, anything interesting that you want <laughs> to to learn more about. Um, thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Yep. Anytime. So um, how would you like to start? Would I, so the, I see that the topic is the evolution of the, the cryptocurrency exchange. So um, what, what would you feel would be most valuable for me to, to get into first? Uh, Chris, I think that you should initially introduce cryptocurrency because a lot of us 
are new to cryptocurrency and as sure. you keep discussing then we will butt in with our queries of the doubt sure sure and so so let's just keep it like an open format and anyone who has any question just just jump in like you did feel feel free to to interrupt me and uh and i'll be happy to uh to to, to get to your question and and you know try to answer it the best i can so since many of you are new to crypto i guess the best place for me to start would be uh, in the beginning of the, the, the very first cryptocurrency exchanges and, and more or less how they worked and how that's evolved to the situation we have today where they're doing billions of dollars uh, in volume a day and some of them are reaching incredible uh, valuations as a, as a business, uh, which, is, which has really only happened this, this past year. So uh, back in uh, the, the early days of Bitcoin, uh, you know, if you wanted to sell Bitcoin as to be able to, to use it for something, uh, it was, it was complicated. So you're all probably familiar with the pizza story where someone sent, uh, you know, what is now a very valuable amount of Bitcoin to buy a, to buy a pizza. Uh, and the original concept of Bitcoin was that it could facilitate, uh, trade between parties who, who don't need an intermediary in the middle and avoid the, the potential double spending problem. Now, what is the problem with this? The problem is that when you are dealing in a global scale, you do need a trusted third party because how do you know if the person on the other end of the world is actually going to send you what you bought? So this is where exchanges came into play because people just started to cash out Bitcoin for actual fiat currencies. and and doing it the normal way that they, they, they normally would uh, interact with money, which was using a third party. And a lot of times that, I mean, in my, in my viewpoint, that kind of negated the value of Bitcoin to begin with, because if you wanted to just buy something with fiat, then, uh, then that would be, you know, like, why, why would you need Bitcoin? You just, just could use cash. So in the early days of Bitcoin, it needed to get its, its footing in place. So uh, exchanges opened up to facilitate the, the uh, remittance of cash. So people who were investing in Bitcoin or had Bitcoin from, from some purpose or wanted to buy Bitcoin could. Uh, and the early days, a lot of those exchanges were, I mean, you would have heard of Mt. Gox. That was a Japanese exchange. And they were very basic. From a technological point of view, they were very basic. Uh, Bitcoin started being used as a as a you know currency actually in a in a in a kind of disappointing way. It really got its its popularity uh, back in the, in these times. I'm talking early two thousand early two thousand eleven twelve on the Silk Road. So I guess many of you guys have heard of the the Silk Road, and the Silk Road was a basically an illegal marketplace. Uh, and there's been uh, you know, movies made about it now, and uh, and the 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 guy who started it is is serving a life sentence in jail because basically what he created was the world's largest internet-based drug market, with Bitcoin as the, the 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 currency of this market. But that is really what was like kind of like the initial, let's say, very popular use case for for Bitcoin back in that time, and it gave Bitcoin a bad reputation. And uh, actually, back in those days, I was. Uh, starting to, to make a Bitcoin vending machine uh, business, but Bitcoin got so uh, such a bad reputation that I had to pull out of it because no one, no one was interested. So this, this is in 2013. Now, um, <clears throat> as things have moved on, exchanges have progressively had problems. So the, the next big hurdle uh, has been hacking issues. So exchanges uh, have a, a huge problem with hacking and they still do today. It's, it's not a month goes by where, where an exchange is not hacked uh, in one way or another. And this of course, again, threatens the, um, let's say reputation and trust in cryptocurrencies. So if you have your funds on an exchange and it gets hacked and suddenly you, you lose your funds, uh, that doesn't help you to trust cryptocurrency in it definitely doesn't um, help you sleep well at night, you know, especially if you have a significant amount of money uh, on these crypto exchanges, which many people do now because the, the prices of crypto have exploded over the last few years. So um, anyway, through my history, and, and I'm scar sorry that my talk is a little bit scattered, but so through my history of involvement in crypto and the observations that I've made over the last nearly uh, decade of experience with it, um, 
I come to a, to a conclusion that I needed to create a uh, crypto exchange, which would facilitate global trade. So for people who want to buy and sell goods, but then would also allow people to trade very securely. So those are the two core problems that uh, I wanted to solve. Uh, and now we have solved with, with, with Eve Exchange. So it's uh, really uh, important to, to get into how we solve it uh, and why it's important. So uh, I hope uh, you guys uh, kind of under, understand what, what I'm getting at with security point of view. And I would really welcome a lot of questions on security because I think that that is probably the most important thing that an exchange can offer to its clients is a high degree of security over your, your assets. And more importantly, not just saying it, but being able to explain why it's better and why it's more secure. So uh, if you have any questions on this, on this part, just let me know because I feel it's probably the most important uh, aspect when you're coming down to storing uh, crypto assets and, and how exchanges work with that. Oh, Chris, what I understand that uh, uh, any country, uh, the amount of uh, real currency of that country is in circulation, depends upon the economy and the economical status of that uh, country and the government controls that how much of the currency uh, is in circulation. Sure. And, and everything is government controlled and mm -hmm. the government is uh, responsible or is answerable to anything which is happening with regards to this currency. But in cryptocurrency, firstly, it is not a government currency of any, any government. Yeah. And uh, then why should uh, people go for a crypto um, uh, kind of uh, currency which is not uh, backed by the government or it, which is uh, not owned by the government. Okay. So I have probably a slightly different viewpoint on this than many people in crypto. I, I don't feel that cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum and things like that will replace fiat or government issued currencies. I don't think that they will. I think that they will be an alternative currency which gives you diversification away from what your government is doing with its own national currency. So let's say, for example, let's just take the, the last events of, of, of the last two years. There has been trillions of dollars printed by governments. So what does this do to the national currencies? Well, you can see that you know, there's runaway inflation right now because the money supply has been increased so much and money has become so easily available with low interest rates that it's actually really caused the, the, the like rampant inflation at a global scale. Um, whereas with Bitcoin, during the same time, Bitcoin went up uh, in value uh, tremendously. And I feel that the, the large increase in cryptocurrency values is really uh, largely due to the fact that actual fiat currencies have gone down in value so much over the last few years because of the, the rampant printing of money. Uh, the other thing I'll, I'll point out is again, I don't feel that that uh, cryptocurrencies will replace fiat currencies. I, I think probably governments will release their own versions, and I know many are working on it to release their own digital currencies, uh, which would basically function the same way they, the, the the government currencies currently do. So, uh, in the case of crypto, um, there is not more Bitcoin that is going to be printed. It has a fixed supply. Uh, it is a, a scarcity. Uh, situation. Whereas with the, the dollar, uh, it's constantly created, uh, there's this constant supply creation. So when, uh, when a government decides it needs to raise some money, they often sell bonds, you know, and in crypto, when we want to raise some money, we, we only raise money, we don't raise it in debt. We always, we always, you know, um, sell a currency and, uh, and, and replace it with, a, with another currency. And that's normally how it works in crypto, current, like in crypto world. So like if a, if a project wanted to raise funds, they would sell their own coins and, and return for Ethereum or, or another type of cryptocurrency. So they're never actually creating debt. Whereas you know, fiat currencies are always creating debt. So if a government wanted to fi finance a new bridge project, what they would do is they would sell bonds. And those bonds would be sold and they would be traded by global banks and global investors would buy them. And when the government needed to pay it off, they would go and issue some more bonds so that they could raise some more money. 
And in, in, you know, in the private sector, we would call that a, a Ponzi scheme because you never actually pay down your, your principal. You're just constantly recycling debt over and over and over. Um, and this doesn't really happen in crypto. Uh, in crypto, if a new project wants to get started, they make a coin, they sell that coin for other cryptocurrencies and there's, and there's very little debt. The, so I think that that's probably one of the main benefits of, of cryptocurrencies as a, as a speculative asset or as a hedge. Um, does that answer your question or do you want me to get into it more? So the question now is, uh, what are the risks and challenges with the cryptocurrencies? How, how does the value of a coin uh, initially... Uh, sir, uh, sir, Pandey, sir, Pandey, sir, let the others also ask the question, it will be better. So let sure. us not uh, make it a thing. Yeah, please. Risk and challenges, right. risk and challenges with the cryptocurrencies. Well, as a, as, a, as a very broad broad question, so so I think there's a number of challenges. I think the the largest challenge right now is is actually what we're doing right now is 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 helping people to understand it better, because um, that largely comes down to regulation. So so you know, cryptocurrencies do uh, they do need some type of regulation. I, I do feel that they they really need that. Otherwise, it it gets a little bit out of control, and. Mm -hmm. I think the most important thing that, that we can do as an industry right now is really try to inform and work with, with, with governments wherever we're, we're based out of to understand our business better and to understand how we can work together to, to make a good, safe uh, and growing ecosystem and not, and not kind of um, see it as a, as a negative thing. So, so we don't need to be scared of cryptocurrencies. Um, we need to, to, to look at them as tools for, for economic growth and we need to, like, I think the governments should really look to align themselves with projects and see them as, as partners that could help, uh, you know, enhance all of our interests at a, at a really at a global level, especially when it comes down to international trade. I think that's really where crypto can, can help quite a bit. Any other question from the participants? Uh, well, Chris, uh... We know, yeah. Uh, just hey, wanted to understand. You? I've gone through your uh, website, sure. so you you also uh, offer staking, right? If you can just throw more light on uh, the staking yeah. uh, that you have, uh, that'll be better, so that uh, participants can come to your website and then. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. No, I mean, so so staking is is uh, basically just a, is is a way of getting um, the supply reduced from from the, the the circulating supply of the coins in the market so that's helpful for us because in theory it should increase the price of our of our cryptocurrency because people are happy to stake it and more or less earn earn interest on what they are staking so with the eve token you can uh, you can you can buy that and you can put it on our our staking contract and earn 20% interest per year uh, to be able, you know, um, just for keeping your coins locked up. Uh, and that's the, really the essential goal of it. it. It also allows us to do a couple other things on the platform. So, um, for example, if you're a vendor on the platform and you're looking to sell goods, we do require that you stake um, an equal amount uh, of EVE in relation to what it is you're selling. So if you're selling something for $100, you need to have $100 worth of EVE staked. Um, your EVE becomes unlocked when your transactions are are successfully completed and we use this kind of as like a form of guarantee so let's say for example we have a new member on the platform um, he hasn't completed any transactions but he's selling a computer and um, for whatever reason the, the the buyer never gets that computer uh, we would then give the the buyer uh, the eve tokens so that they're basically made whole um, and they don't have that kind of uh, transactional risk. So we use the the, the token more or less as a, a transactional uh, risk control, uh -huh. uh, staking forms a part of that. Uh, and then aside from that, it has a has a, other roles in the platform. Like you can uh, stake a certain amount to get free membership. So you can uh, basically trade for free if you stake enough tokens. So uh, we offer trading on about uh, 300 different pairs. So okay. right now with more coming always. <clears throat> so if you stake those tokens, you'll, you'll be able to, to basically trade for free, which is, I think, a really big advantage uh, if you are an active trader, because you can spend hundreds of, hundreds of dollars a month of trading if you... I understand. You know. <laughs> so see, I, I just wanted to extend the question here. Sure. Um, well, you know, there are different exchanges that are available. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, how, yeah. would you, how, would, how would you convince somebody that you should visit EVE Exchange and how would you ensure security of 
keys yep. because I use hardware wallets personally. So how would you ensure the security of my keys and my assets? Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, first off, we, we never store your private keys. Uh, those are always your, your own keys. We uh, use a service called Fireblocks, which okay. is a institutional wallet provider. Uh, and uh, because we're a new exchange, we were able to build it from the ground up uh, with the most secure practices in the industry. So uh, our exchange is actually built on top of uh, the Fireblocks wallet structure. Okay. Um, so, so typically, like a traditional exchange, they just use a combination of hot wallets and 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 uh, and hardware wallets or cold wallets. Okay. Um, with Fireblocks, it's actually all like. Uh, um, it, there's no real distinction between the hot wallet and the and the cold wallet. It's all secured pretty much the same way. Um, the system allows you to make certain rules. So, for example, um, it would need multi-party approval for funds to be withdrawn uh, of any significance. So, what that means is, if someone did manage to infiltrate the system with some sort of some sort of hack uh, or even social engineering, you would need uh, multiple people in the company to to be able to approve those transactions. So. There is basically almost no way that that it could be could be hacked without uh, a significant amount of con of collusion, including collusion with Fireblocks itself. So okay. uh, yeah, so That's so you would, so, so basically it it creates a, an ecosystem where funds deposited can't go without multiple people in multiple different com uh, companies, including the the account holder to approve transactions. So everything's built natively with this technology. Mm -hmm. which I think is great because it, it really allows, you know, traders to, to, first of all, feel safe keeping their funds there. Um, I would say it's probably more secure than a hardware wallet. The, mm -hmm. the reason I say that is because your hardware wallet is only as good uh, as you maintain it. So uh, if you had it in your jeans pocket and then your wife suddenly washed your, your pants and, uh, you know, the washing machine uh, ate your hardware wallet, then, you know, your crypto has gone, right? So <laughs> that's an interesting uh, case. <laughs> so, so I mean, and, and it happens. It happens. I, I, it's, it's not a you can you can see it happening. Right? You, you plug your hardware wallet in, it goes in your pocket. Your wife washes your jeans. Boom. Money gone. Right. So hardware wallets are great if you are also great with securing them yourself. So let's say, for example, you know, you you are very, you know, like you have a program, you put it in your computer, you do your trade, it goes back into a safe. If you if you work that way, then hardware wallets are great. But um, there's always a human error element there. Um, Thank you, Chris. Uh, any other question uh, from other other participants? So, uh, Chris, uh, would just probably when you, when you, when you please when you please just not more than two questions, please. Uh, no questions. Oh, no, you know, questions. Others are waiting. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, it will become one to one. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Please. Follow. All right. So, so any other question saying. from any other audience, please? <laughs> okay. All right. You can understand it's a bit chaotic, uh, uh, Chris. But uh, it would be great if you can share some uh, information about your exchange, which we would probably uh, kind of uh, share it across to all the audience. And then they can probably. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll put a post in the chat so you, you guys can take a look. Um, yeah. No problem. All right. Open to questions uh, from any other uh, question from any participant. Otherwise, we'll move forward. Feel free, guys. You could ask me yeah. the craziest thing you want. I'm really yeah. happy to answer. Yeah. <laughs> your, the, greatest, your, your, uh, the crypto questions you were afraid to ask, you could you could ask. <laughs> All right. Probably yeah, yeah, offer yeah. some offer some uh, you know uh, tokens on uh, for the questions. Maybe you'll see a lot of questions coming. Out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I want I want non incentivized questions. I want the, the <laughs> questions you really really actually want to know. You know. Yeah. So, All right. So with that, if there are no question, uh, moving forward, Chris is uh, really uh, we are basically just the learner for the cryptocurrency, and uh, sure. we are we are uh, many of us are scared, and you know that we are having many questions, but sure. uh, in the paucity of time, we are not opening. Maybe we'll request some time for a special lecture on the cryptocurrency, uh, like yeah. uh, having the lot of lot of questions may come basically, but. Uh, uh, we'll now move forward with our panel discussion. So, sure, uh, sure, yeah. So we have the, we have the panelists. I will open the my sheet.
we have the eminent personalities, the speakers on the panelist, uh, Mrs. P. R. Lakshmi Ishwari, you are there, ma'am? Yes, sir, I am there, sir. Great. So just now we have uh, read her uh, pro brief profile and she has given a nice presentation uh, just to reiterate that she is the senior director and uh, center head for the CDEC Hyderabad and recently she has done uh, a nice presentation an uh, hour before. Uh, next panelist is Ono Palsa. Ono, you are there? I'm there, yeah. Welcome, Thank you. welcome, Ono Balsa. Thank you. For ono Balsa is the CEO of the Dragon Chain Europe and co-founder of the Dragon Scale. Dragon Chain is a spin-off of the Walt Disney's blockchain arm, the USA. That's great. Dragon Scale has partnered with the IBA, Indian Blockchain Alliance, the Raj Kapoor's uh, Alliance, basically, in India to employ a strong, eco-friendly sustainability model to build and accelerate blockchain companies towards their goals. The Dragon Scale Accelerator will tap into the existing network of the partners to help blockchain projects as they scale up their business and prepare for the global stage. Dragon Scale Global CEO, Ono Basler, let's welcome him. He's ready to harness his experience at Disney Gaming in Europe to build with the Accelerator with Dragon Chain Technology as the foundation. Why not in India too? So, Ono Basler, you are welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you need to harness and we need to get the, you know, your knowledge and we need to download it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> next, next speaker. Uh, I think uh, there was some challenge. I got a call from uh, uh, Mr. J. Chaudhary, sir. You are there? So, he's not there. So, another, you know, the, the person and our chairman of our forum is, and for the benefit of the those who are, uh, should I read the profile of the, just for the our international partners, I will read just the data of brief profile of the our Lakshmi ji also. Uh, she is a senior director. She is into R&D, in security focusing on the end system security, embedded security, mobile security, blockchain technologies, so she's uh, working on the number of projects. She's for 21 years in the various R&D projects, uh, solution development, capacity building initiatives. She was in the professor, a lecturer in the NIT, uh, Warangal. So the moderator, now I will introduce the moderator of the panel who will be asking the tough questions. So, and another panelist is our broadcasting man. He is the, uh, Sunil sir, you are there? Yes, I'm there. Yeah, so Sunil sir, Sunil sir is a broadcast from the broadcast engineering. Uh, Sri Sunil is the president of the Broadcast Engineering Society and is additional director general with the Prasar Bharti, which is the public, you know, the our, uh, national TV. He is heading the international relations, marketing, distribution, and national archives division at corporate level. Over three decades experience in the field of broadcast engineering. He has done a lot of uh, things which uh, in the national and international and the overseas, I'm not going to add that. He has been a member of the technical advisory board in SET, a satellite that coordination committee of the ISRO. Uh, Sri Sunil is a winner of the ABUE Broadcast Engineering Excellence Award for the 2018. He recently got elected to the vice chairman of the Technical Bureau of Asia Pacific Broadcasting Union. He had been a panelist, international jury for the ABU and AV Awards and one of the judges of the Association of International Broadcasters, AIB UK. He's also governing council member of and honorary treasurer of the Institution of Electronics and Telecom Engineers, IET. Welcome you two, sir. Now our, our moderator. Moderator is Sri Dr. Satya N. Gupta, NGN Guru. Should I call him NGN Guru or IPv6 Guru or Blockchain Guru? I am really confused now because he does a lot of value to the everything. He's a chairman of the Blockchain for Productive Forum. He's a chairman of the Bharat IPv6 Forum, Secretary General of the ITU, APT Foundation of India, and, and chairman of the Blue Town India, BIMSTAC, South Asia. Uh, so Dr. Satyan Gupta is an analyst, author, and advisor on the ICT related policies and business. He worked as a principal advisor, Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, level of the additional secretary in the government. 
he authored a concept called job factory which earned him the you know he got the concept of the hot sports as the managed services and which got awarded him the phd by the commonwealth vocational university so welcome uh, our moderator dr satyan gupta and uh, now the floor is yours with the all the panelists sir. Oh, thank you. And uh, did we did we got the doctor Doctor Sandeep Shukla sir also? You are there, sir? Are you back, sir? So maybe Doctor Sandeep Shukla may join uh, later on. But uh, uh, can you take the floor, sir? Yes. Yeah. So thank you, Doctor Shiv, for such a nice introduction again and again, and so many things which you have told, which are not verified actually which are, I think, uh, they are, they may not be even true. So, but uh, I'm really thankful. So, that means, this. that means they need to be blockchain enabled, sir. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that, uh, thank you. And I'm really honored to chair this panel, basically, of so many experts which you have introduced. Let me admit each one of these experts who are member of the panel knows much more than me. That is for sure. That is why I'll be only asking the questions. So I believe they have the answers. Like I always say, blockchain has the answer for any problem the humankind have on the earth. So my panel, my expectation from the panel will be similar. And uh, uh, the questions, of course, will not be tough, actually. They will be very, very permittive, very, very, basically uh, this panel is mainly for the blockchain, for helping in achieving the sustainable goals, SDG, UN SDG, which are 17 and they are different. So uh, my question will be related to that also. And some from the core competency of the experts from whom we have already uh, seen the presentation. But just to start with, and let me not have any priorities, but I will like to go first to Mr. Ono Palser, the CEO of Dragon Chain Europe and co-founder of Dragon Scale, because he was not there in the earlier presentation, other than him all have spoken already. So uh, Mr. Ono, actually, I want to know two, three things from you just to bring everyone at par, basically you have been mentioning that you are helping or your accelerator is helping to uh, help blockchain projects at the scale up their business and prepare for the global space. That means we have incubators in India already like you have seen in government, IITs, CDAC and many places where we are startup. So I think you are next step above that an accelerator so that you can help our startups in blockchain to go global, to scale up. And that is the big challenge, of course, here. So I like to know how you propose to do that, uh, Mr. Ono. Yeah, thank, <clears throat> thank you for the question. Um, well, in general, we believe in the new generation of the people studying at the moment and are building their new future in this way. If you look to the 10 years, 15 years for the blockchain and ads, then they are the most important people who can, uh, can develop this in the right way. So we believe in the talents, in the talents of people in the university and going for the right direction and right way. And the blockchain is a good part of it that it's scalable and it's, it's mentioned to be scalable in more countries. So we want to uh, support that and we cannot support every project, but we will selective in a competition to see how we can develop. And we have some examples just to show how we can build it international way. And we have a bridge to, to Europe. We have a bridge to US just to, to, to give more attention and build them in the right direction. And we are supportive as coaches. Um, we have the wide network. And again, we are selective in the, in the project. So we cannot support everybody. It's a kind of competition and be selective as a, as a, as a company. And yeah, we believe um, that's the way of, of scaling. It's, it's the way of developing and showing uh, the blockchain what it can do. And 
it's a it's a complex uh, <laughs> a complex technology in general uh, to 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 learn. So we we try to make it very simple and and show more the the, the way it, what is usable for it. So more the the the, the possibilities. To, to build it. And I try to change the language just a little bit that everybody can understand. Um, and that's important. That's important, I think, in the in the economic way. Oh, thank you, Mr. Ono. You have really simplified it and very made your answer very clear. But I have a follow-up question to that. You also mentioned that you will be selective and there'll be a competition in picking up our startup so whom you can help to scale up. So what uh, credentials or what kind of uh, attributes or characteristics you will be verifying, let me use the blockchain language now, before picking up them? Well, um, next to startups, we're creating also labs, and labs with students of the university. So we have some projects already on our shelves. So we, we can show already for the sport, for example, for example, uh, Sam, we are busy with a sensor on, on a cricket bat or on a cricket hockey stick. And, and we want to make this in the blockchain and, and make this port sensor very good way on the blockchain to develop. But the selective side on your question on startups, it's, it's about how you want to grow in, in, as a personal person. I believe more in the person behind a project than the project himself, because there are enough ideas <laughs> and there are enough possibilities, but it's, it's a challenge for the team to develop himself. And do they have an ambition to be international? And I think in the blockchain, it's a different mindset to think about uh, uh, more countries in a way to develop your way and that you are better fundable in the skill up situation. And that's an, a, a challenge for the team. So we we looking really to the to the to the personality of the persons and uh, how they develop by themselves in the skills and see how they they can grow into our project or our system. And that's that's important. And again, it's also enthusiasm uh, of more things they can do and more startups will be maybe help uh, be in our uh, solution. So it's. It's not that we're not, not only selective and then the stop. Everybody can, can use our code uh, developed on an open source way. So it's everybody, but we need to be selective to, to see, okay, this is a great team um, and on the personality, on, on the skills, on teamwork, what they do to scale them uh, to, a, to an international way. Oh, thank you, Ono Saab. And my one more question is sort of technical for my own ignorance. I want to know about the scalable, of course. Uh, I know the blockchain is not as scalable as we would like it to happen in India. Like we are 1.4 billion people and having five devices each. So let us say about 10 billion devices are there. Uh, and means the scalability of blockchain blockchain and especially when country have ambition to have their own CBDC and so whether this blockchain can scalable in a ambition of the India to have their own currency using blockchain and then uh, the SDG related question is that how we can make this blockchain less energy consuming actually what are the attributes which we can downplay so that the energy consumption is less, but still we can use some of the main feature of blockchain. Yeah, well, on our side, uh, the, the scalability of the blockchain is already developed. Um, we have a, a system, it's hybrid or, organized. So we have a public site and we have a private site in our code. And the other thing is that we have certain levels, uh, five levels, then we can make the security higher or lower. And this makes the performance in a very better way and, and not to put everything in the public or everything in the private way. So you can uh, make this dynamic. Um, yes, the, 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 the processing will, will be more on the uh, local device uh, in a way that, that you're processing that uh, uh, on a D app situation. But 
Um, for us, we have no big issues on the scalability of our platform. So we, we can go and, and quantum is also a very interesting direction what is going on um, to make this more, more active and in a good way. I hope it's answer your question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, this is it's, very good, very nice. Good. And okay. I'll get back to you, Mr. Ono, again, but okay. let me uh, pick the brain of, of our friend Krish Kajanj. And you were already there, and a lot of questions were there, and a lot of questions were kept waiting for this session. First, let me ask uh, Mr. Chris one question related to what I asked uh, Mr. Ono regarding these option with the Indian government and Indian Central Bank, RBI, where they have been given a task to create the digital currency, which is equivalent of fiat actually, not a cryptocurrency in that sense, a digital version of fiat. What I will like to call it a virtual digital currency or a digital twin of a fiat currency. And I think uh, the government have to think whether to use blockchain or can they have some alternative and still meet the objective of scalability, basically, uh, and still have the control because I, I personally believe blockchain means there should not be central control. It should be peer to peer kind of thing. But here our, when it is a CBDC, it has to have a central control. So how you can meet all these objectives, whether blockchain is the right technology there or other the distributed ledger technology, DLT, like DAG is there and there may be some other technologies. So because the, every day I'm reading in the newspaper after the announcement by our honorable finance minister about this, every day there is a debate going on whether to use blockchain or not. So, Mr. Chris. Yeah, I think. I think Chris is not there. You can take. Oh, then, uh, then Mr. Ono, Sunil you will sir. have to reply uh, this answer. Or later, sir, you can take Sunil, sir, because he's leaving, sir, now. Yeah, yeah. So, next will be Mr. Sunil. But if this, or, or shall we park this question? Better, sir, please. Okay, okay, then, uh, then Mr. Ono, please get prepared to answer this question, uh, though it was meant for someone else. Now, let me go to our own uh, host also, Mr. Sunil, the additional director general of uh, Doordarshan and also our partner in this event. And uh, Sunil, you have already made presentation, a very nice speech, it's very good, very clear, and a lot of work. But I personally have two, three questions for you, and they are related to the content, because you are from that sector, and it's um, uh, regulatory thing, and it's pricing. So I have two questions, I'll put them together, and then you have to re respond. How can the blockchain decrease IP infringement in media and entertainment content, and how will blockchain enable micropayments in media and entertainment? How will this technology enable peer-to-peer -peer distribution of the content? Because today the content is through MDO, through what we call cable operator, broadcaster, and recently there was a regulator was struggling to create a new tariff order for these broadcaster, which is not getting implemented, getting delayed, and it is threatening to go for the litigation also. So do you feel the blockchain can help here? Thank you. A very nice question. So uh, on the first question uh, regarding the decrease in IP infringement, see this uh, digital piracy, uh, fraudulent uh, copies, infringed studio IP, and duplication of the digital items. These four things basically, they cause the film and TV industry very heavily. So enterprise Ethereum is one thing which allows artists and creators to digitize the metadata of their unique content, manage and store IP rights on a time-stamped immutable ledger. I repeat, time-stamped immutable ledger. The append-only structure of the blockchain makes it easier for creators 
to legally enforce their rights once infringement occurs. So it is an inherent property of the blockchain technology. So that was on the question number one. And second question, uh, I think you asked on the micropayments. So yes. uh, on that, I'll just like to say that once a content creator has registered their property on a blockchain platform, the blockchain records every usage of that piece of content. This tracking enables real-time, flexible, and a fully transparent consumption-based pricing mechanism, for example, metered billing, just like that. A smart contract can be utilized to execute automatic micropayments between the consumer and the creator. So that was first part of the uh, second question. And uh, again, coming back to same, utilizing the Ethereum, artists can automate a large portion of the business administration work surrounding licensing, contracts, and payments. Once the contractual base usually rife with the intermediaries, it's automated and performed a fraction of cost. Creators can sell their work directly peer to peer. So blockchain based marketplaces for digital content allow creators and consumers to interact without costly intermediaries. See, intermediaries are very costly. Just for an example of the audience here, I'll tell. See, if 1 billion uh, is spent on creating a particular content, uh, how much does the content creator get? It is only 20% of that, 12%. So a very small, a very small fraction comes to the uh, creator. The rest all goes to the intermediaries. So just to avoid these possible intermediaries, this is the process what I've just explained. So thank you, Sunil Saab. But I have one or two questions more. One is regarding this DRM, digital right management, I think in the CDN. And there are a lot of uh, you know, struggling uh, from the technology point of view. Do you feel the blockchain have a solution to that also? Yes. See, uh, I'll say at the moment, uh, the customers pay the content aggregators to access advertising and media like YouTube, Hulu, Tidal, and all. Uh, Netflix uh, is there, uh, then Amazon Prime is there and all. As customers are bombarded with stream, streaming services, there are a lot of streaming services uh, right now, and uh, there is a sort of overload uh, to the consumers. So an opportunity for the pay per use, consumption-based model presents itself. So blockchain technology uh, has the ability to log an intricate record of the media usage data and enables efficient micropayment pricing models. So here is how uh, the uh, rights portion gets managed. So thank you. And my last question, Sunilji, is regarding the DAS, where, where there is a mistrust between the broadcaster and cable operator and media distributor in between uh, about the number actually number how many customers they are there how many subscription they have and because of the revenue share so what is your solution if we were to use blockchain there so we have already explained earlier that it is a distributed ledger technology where everything is stored at every point of time so the number of times you view a movie, the number of times you listen to music, everything gets stored and at what point of time. So uh, since the things are recorded and they cannot be uh, altered or debated, there is a record of each transaction which the consumer makes on all these accounts. So these things are taken care of. Oh, thank you, Sunil. Very nice uh, answers. And I have learned a lot to, uh, myself as well. Thank you very much. So now can I go back to our friend Ono Saab? Uh, will you be able to answer my last question, which though was not directed to you, but I hope you understood the question. Yeah, I didn't understand the question. Sorry to ask it again. So okay, it, okay, let me explain. Possible? Yeah. So the question was like our country have taken the mandate of creating our own CBDC the central bank uh, what they call it uh, digital currency so you know what i mean and uh, our uh, people at least in media and the general people are still struggling to know how it will be done whether it will be blockchain based or it will be some other digital ledger technology or it may be a known distributed ledger technology, whether it will be private blockchain or public blockchain, whether it will be permissioned 
or known permission. So we are all just wondering, of course, the job is to be done by central bank. They may be doing, they may have expertise or not, but mm -hmm. we as the citizen who will be the final beneficiary of that technology. So we are still struggling, means uh, whether it will be expensive to uh, trade through that kind of technology and whether it will be scaled up or not. You know how many nodes we have in circulation and whether, whether it will create problem for the end user because if you use blockchain, it becomes, uh, uh, you can say what they call tracing it actually, traceable. Yeah. So normally when we deal with cash, we don't want it to be traced actually. That is how we like to deal with cash. So if, if I have a digital currency, I trade with that and it gets traceable means. So will I have any problem or, or can there be a digital currency which is not traceable? Well, it, it's, it's, of course, it's, it's the, and part of the blockchain, um, you can make it more in a privacy way and you can make the rules on that um, to make it more or less uh, uh, information to share. But the whole point is the, and that's in general also going with normal banking, the government is, is evolving there and have checks on, on all regulations. So it's not the question I think on the blockchain or crypto or situation, it's more the government in the regulation, how it's organized. And what you see also in Europe, it's they copying the situation as, an, as it is at the moment. So what is the changeable situation in general? And yes, um, you, you can split it off, in my opinion, and in, in make it a more anonymous uh, situation, but then you're getting in a situation of maybe a black, black money situation, but then you need to, to agree on a tax situation that you, you have a payments uh, uh, delivery. So it's a traditional world in general. At the end, the banks uh, didn't accept in the beginning uh, the Bitcoin, and now they are adapting it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it will be integrated in a way in a new digital solution. And I think it's an advantage um, to work their way and, and make maybe possibilities to, to make better pension funds or better uh, way of investment on the other side. So I see also the, the economic positive things you can generate um, instead of the old model and banking has a lot of influence on that, you get more an open model that can be stimulating the economic way. So it's, it's, it's true. <laughs> there are some good and positive and negative things in it. I, I understand, but the, the, it's a better uh, liquid situation you're getting in the economic way. So I think also that the government needs to support also a way. So uh, I'm, I'm seeing pumping up uh, a lot of free zones, for example, to, to create more business and have a period of tax less. And then, and that's the thing that you can do and organize in crypto world much better in, in a good way. So also to the employees, for example, to, to get in crypto, the, the part of the company and, and go with them instead of the company shareholder has all the shares, you, you can go in a in, in way. So it can be more uh, uh, where you put your energy in, um, uh, in a company that you are also a part of it. Um, so that's the flexible thing I see, but the regulation is, is there. <laughs> Yeah. Or you need to change the regulation, but um, that's a general thing. And one thing I must say, you see in the G20, the big, big overall situation, they are speaking of an, a better tax system in the global world. So you see that that they are changing also a little bit the, the competition in, in countries. So it's more and more generated. So I think at the end, it's less influence to, to the consumer. Uh, and more organized than it was maybe on the stage now. So I think that blockchain can change that in regulation better uh, because yeah, that's the, the part of the blockchain is the smart contracts. Uh, so it, it, it's a part of it, but it takes time. You know, the government has their rules already. So, and the regulation. I hope uh, sir, that's sir, the answer to your question. Yeah. Satya sir, uh, yeah. can you ask a couple of, couple of questions from uh, 
Ms. Lakshmi also, yes, then, yes. We'll I, I the, then we'll open up. Then we'll open up for the audience. Yeah, yeah. I have to go back to Madam Lakshmi also after my last question to Ono. And uh, Mr. Ono, my another question is like when uh, the central bank creates its own digital currency, which goes directly to the end user on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. So what happens to the banks which are intermediary in the conventional one? A short answer, Mr. Ono. Yeah, I think it's a better way to do that direction. And it's because now it's, it's a, a bank transaction by bank by bank, and then it will be peer to peer and you can make more solution out of it. So it's a, a better way of, of making this development. And yes, they are under the regulation mm -hmm. of the finance. So that's the same, a little bit the same uh, answer my last question. Yeah, thank you. And Mr. Ono, you have to be ready for the questions from audience also after I interview my last expert, Madam Lakshmi. And uh, Madam Lakshmi, let me first compliment you to, for your presentation, a great presentation I've seen during these two days. It was say it all kind of thing for me also and a lot of audience feedback. One or two questions from my side will be like, and there is a question from audience also, uh, how you interrelate the blockchain and AI, how they interrelate with each other. And uh, you do you foresee that if the Reserve Bank approaches your organization, or Ministry of IT, are they capable or have the competency to develop a digital currency for the nation? Yeah, so I'll take up the first question, sir. Uh, you asked something about uh, blockchain and AI. Yes. Uh, sir, actually, if you look at uh, these two things, uh, the purpose of each one is slightly different. See, now, like when you say blockchain, so we are uh, thinking about a single source of truth to enable the layer of trust through the technologies. So the mm -hmm. objective is verifiability and accountability. That's what is yes. something. Yes. Now, A is something like, see, when you talk about uh, artificial intelligence to be built, what is required ultimately is you need to train. We should have large large data sets and you'll be training and uh, uh, building the, the intelligent program so that they, they can try to like uh, tell us like uh, that, that's what is happening. The intelligence you are trying to build so you are trying to generate programs uh, from the data, so which will help us in trying to predict the future, right, sir? So in this case, actually, we can definitely, when you have a lot of data available on the blockchains in the time sequence manner, so we can definitely on these data sets or something coming from the, the blocks from the, 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 the blockchains. So on top of it, definitely there is a requirement for uh, these kind of things, uh, the analytics and uh, AI kind of things which are going to be applied. So definitely the once we have the applications and other things, so the intelligent player will be there because see whatever we are doing, the data sets are currently from the databases, whatever we are trying to get. So blockchain in some manner, so we have the, it's a database which is in a time sequenced manner which we are storing. So definitely we can think about applying A on top of the blockchain data. So that is one thing. So second question you asked about whether uh, the mighty or CEDA can think about Sir, actually, definitely, see, our focus is more in terms of permissioned sir, blockchains. So the efforts are not more in terms of uh, public and crypto kind of thing. That we are not done. Even if you look at a strategy, also government strategy. So the strategy is more in terms of how we can try to use the blockchain or permission blockchain for better governance and other applications like that. So if you feel like, suppose if uh, uh, the RBI is uh, trying to look at uh, having some kind of Central bank issued digital currency, something like a representing uh, the currency as an asset, asset and try to see something like uh, fake currencies and other things to avoid it or anything of that objective. Maybe we can think about using these platforms uh, to that particular. But uh, completely crypto kind of public and all, the system is not there, sir. That uh, is not uh, there in the present. Yeah, the, thank you, madam. And one more question is suppose, because there are two options with the RBI. Right, sir. One is e to e, B2B kind of thing, that they create a currency uh, uh, which they give only to banks, and banks then uh, distribute it further in a normal way. So I, I have two questions now as a part of this. One is whether I'm uh, correct in assuming 
the digital currency is equivalent to the digital twin of a fiat currency digital twin you i know you understand yeah. and the second so i am not very sure yeah. sir yeah. Achha, you are not yeah. very sure about digital twin okay yeah so what i feel no sir actually when you said that they may give it to the banks and other thing yes maybe is definitely difficult sir i feel uh, we can have in the hierarchy from rbi to some level the maybe this uh, blockchain and all can be implemented but uh, uh, thinking about last mile uh, that is up to the citizens yes. i don't know whether it is immediately feasible kind of oh, okay yeah maybe it can maybe <coughs> evolved in phases or something like that that's what is my opinion sir oh great and ma opinion. madam now let just jokingly i like to give you a message two years back i had read a public news where where the government have already named the digital currency that was two years back and it was lakshmi your name so so you should charge copyright from government if this news is true <laughs> So, so but, I copied uh, from someone's <laughs> already my name. <laughs> okay, okay. Th thanks a lot, madam. And now, you. Dr. Shiv, you can open to our other uh, participants from because this this panel, I'm really honored to ask my questions. But I think we should give opportunity to other participants also. Yeah, welcome, audience. Now, its time is yours. You switch on your video and please ask the question. Preferably one question, then we can go for the second round. Please. Parag sahab, you think you are going to ask questions, but you are not doing it. Please ask, whatever. Yeah, Parag sahab, you are going to ask questions. No question? Okay. Yeah, please go ahead, sir. Uh, we had a presentation where uh, the property management system, the certificate verification system, uh, uh, a very nice detail of uh, that was uh, given. And also there was a talk on universal uh, uh, unified uh, platform. My question is, as of now, every entity, let, let's say Karnataka government wants to do a property management and registration system, they are doing uh, their own, uh, uh, using their own blockchain uh, technology and uh, developing that. Uh, similarly, the Goa uh, government, they did it on um, uh, liquor management, Some somebody spoke on that. Now for, don't you think that uh, there is a necessity of maybe an international uh, controlling body uh, which controls all these things. Otherwise, different platforms with different technologies will be used. And uh, where the one individual may be having something in Goa, somebody will be having in Karnataka. So how to interlink for the same information in the different states? So is there a necessity of an international body controlling uh, for the similar kind of projects throughout the world, or maybe a national uh, uh, regulatory uh, who can decide on the uh, the platform as well as on the technology. Before Anybody the question is answered, uh, uh, Dr. Satya sir, we have the another panelist, Sandeep Shukla, on board now. Okay. Yeah, Dr. Sandeep Shukla. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe maybe. maybe. Professor Sandeep, you can answer this question of Brigadier Pandey, I think, as a beginning, then I will have some questions for you. Right. Okay. So, uh, in terms of controlling, uh, you know, it depends on what you mean by controlling, because if you're talking about standardization regula regu regulation, uh, then answer should be a, a sort of yes. But uh, if it is controlling in the sense that they... <coughs> no, sir, I didn't mean controlling. I'm, I meant the standardized platform throughout the world. Right. right. So, uh, so I think that there is a need for a regulatory body in India that will uh, put some requirements in the sense of uh, security and privacy. How Because blockchain, if it is proper, not properly designed, then it can... Uh, be both uh, insecure and both, you know, leaking private information, right? Yes, yes, so, yes. so, so there has to be some regulatory body with regulations 
and possibly standards to actually uh, adhere to to uh, make sure that uh, those uh, basic uh, privacy and security properties of every implementation is uh, maintained. However, uh, the uh, uh, I think the uh, standardization is often done by uh, bodies, uh, uh, international bodies. Like for example, right now I am on a standardization body for uh, um, uh, blockchain in energy sector for renewable energy. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, selling and uh, buying renewable energy, uh, but uh, uh, those standards are uh, ne not necessarily binding on any specific country or anything, unless the regulation says that this uh, uh, any implementation of this energy, uh, uh, you know, selling or uh, procuring blockchain exchange blockchains should have these this properties or it should adhere to this standard. So regulatory body has to decide whether a particular standard is uh, directly applicable to our country or they should come up with their own regulation. Uh, standards help us to shorten the regulation body. I mean, the, if the regulation is uh, the, you know 100 pages long, nobody will be able to regulate, uh, implement that according to regulation. So it's often we refer to uh, regulations with respect to standards, like in security, we say 27001 or 62443 uh, has to be uh, adhered to. So uh, that way, I think there is a need for regulation. I think that uh, there is a good amount of research being done on blockchain interoperability. So we don't have to necessarily have the same blockchain architecture, same uh, data structure, uh, this kind of stuff. So that can be because uh, then it will be very difficult to uh, do integration uh, uh, because uh, today Karnataka is done, right? Tomorrow West Bengal may say I will get it done with another organization. Their uh, the architecture would be slightly different. Their data structures may be slightly different. So interoperability of blockchain can can play a big role if in case these two blockchains has to interoperate. So I think I think that uh, putting uh, those kind of restrictions about in terms of architecture, data structure, etc., would be too binding and bad for innovation. But certainly, regulatory requirements with respect to security, privacy, and uh, performance, etc., might be uh, might be there. So that would be my 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 take on that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh, Professor. Uh, sir, uh, sir, sir. Uh, yes, please. Uh, Sir, I've yes. got a question from Atul uh, from audience. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, he can the, uh, now uh, uh, ask. Yeah, Atul, yeah, go I ahead. can ask that. Yeah, Atul. Yeah, professor. I think let me give it to first. Ask the professor. Yeah, professor Sandeep. There is a question from Mr. Atul Kumtekar, and it is about getting stamp papers on blockchain at national level. Some states have done it. Second one is about getting all funding announcements public and tracked on blockchain verifiable by any citizen all the way to spending details. So maybe he wants to know whether blockchain can do here to bring transparency to these kind of things, Professor. Atul, you can, Atul, you can actually also speak. So go ahead, please. Yeah, so... So I think that the stamp paper, yeah, you know, the way blockchain would be used in, in case of stamp paper, because stamp papers are tracked. Like when a Trump stamp paper is sold, it is given a number and government has to track the stamp, stamp paper, right? So therefore it makes sense to put that on a blockchain. However, uh, the uh, public spending, whether you want to put in a blockchain will depend on uh, various things. Uh, this this may also include uh, political will and, and other stuff. It might be a good idea to uh, do it uh, uh, if you want transparency. But the question is, uh, like like we have proposed uh, to police uh, about putting FIR on blockchain, and they never agree <laughs> because uh, FIRs are always. Uh, uh, Apparently, you know, uh, post post facto uh, various things uh, are done, but evidence custody chain right? that should be in the blockchain. That could be done in blockchain, in my opinion. 
so it depends on depends on the how, what is the appetite for the transparency uh, it can be made transparent certain things may be not what i mean not uh, suitable for transparency i don't know but uh, that that's a call that the administrators has to take it's not difficult to uh, make it happen uh, i mean implement it it's a question of uh, various kinds of uh, other legal uh, legal issues and political issues that needs to be uh, looked into yeah and professor my one more question regarding to your this interoperability issue because i was thinking these open apis what mm. they are talking can bring the interoperability issue but uh, but the you talked about the regulator and in, as far as currency or money is concerned our regulator is our central bank reserve bank of india so it is already there so they may have some guidelines but as far as standardization is concerned actually unfortunately one of our expert panelists j choudhry garu was to come he is not there he is supposed to be the chairman of blockchain standardization committee of our bureau of indian standards bis mm -hmm. so do you feel that that is the right place instead of looking outside as you are suggesting as we do international standard so do we have the capacity capability to have our own standard or, and but of course it has to be on top of the international standard uh, so that it is interoperable uh, at a global level so bis if they are doing or if they can do so why not to have our own national standard on hmm. the blockchain interoperability right yeah so i think having a national standard is a good idea but uh, one has to have the right uh, set of expertise otherwise the standard might be too restrictive or too uh, complex or uh, you know so so also uh, i think we should also look at the international standard so bis often takes uh, an international standard and uh, indianize it uh, so uh, 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 or sometimes they actually do their own standard and propose that to an international body like ISO or uh, ITU to be uh, globally standardized. And usually that's how the global standards develop. Various proposals from various organizations uh, are uh, compete with each other in the uh, international level to be the global standard. Or sometimes they take the uh, various parts of different standards to build the final uh, international standard. So it is a good idea to have a you know early uh, attempt to certain standardization uh, so that uh, we can be the players uh, to actually in the international uh, standardization body. But uh, that does that has to be properly done so that we don't become a laughing stock in the international uh, standard uh, organization in case our standard seems to be you know too out out there. So, so therefore, the right set of people should be there. I don't know who they are uh, currently in the BIS, so I cannot comment on that. Okay, thank you. And now I have got a question for Mr. Ono from one of the participants, Sanji uh, Suresh Behra. And Mr. Ono, one of our friend wants to know, there may be trade-off between speed and security. How do we decide between them? There may be performance issue as there may be verification of transactional data, which uses asymmetric cryptography. How do we address them? So can you take up this question, Mr. Ono? Yeah, it's, it is a technical question, <laughs> but yes. I can answer in, in an hopefully a good answer. Um, the thing is that where you put your security is important, uh, of course, for, for every privacy or security reason. But in some, some way, you don't have to put the security on. So what we're thinking in our technology is that you need to put uh, levels of security. For example, if it's your personal data or personal identity, then your security must be high. And if it's a transaction to somebody without only hash codes, then you need to put it open and in and, and another level. And in this way, you, you are more flexible in your performance uh, uh, direction. Another thing is, of course, the, the local development on, on, on the, the mobile. I, I said it before, this is very important that the processing is also local organized and on, on the server situation. Um, so it's a, a kind of cube we're thinking of 
put security higher, lower, and be more on the public, be more on the on the private side. So that's that's the flexibility you need to build in, and that's that's what how we use in our technology, uh, the, how we build it in inside our code. Yeah, and one more follow-up question, a simple one, Mr. Ono, from Mr. Ajay Kumar. The question is, what is block in blockchain? We can store image using blockchain technology or not? I don't understand the question, sorry. The question basically wants to know there is an image or a picture. Can it work? Can it be converted in a shape of a block and it can be stored there? And maybe something to do with nft that is my uh, thing maybe he's aiming at nft kind of thing i think yeah yeah of course yeah it's uh, i think nft is uh, tremendous strong growing i don't i <laughs> i have an opinion about nft in general but that's um it must be more usable in the in the business model but yes uh, it's storable a smart contract situation you you can build in the in the blockchain um, if I understand the question correctly, I, I... yeah. So uh, I, I I have a, I, I, I think uh, uh, one uh, uh, confusion. I, I we often get some company will come to us and say that we want to put our data on blockchain. So the blockchain is not a data repository. Blockchain is there for certain purposes. The transaction, the you put the transactions in which you suspect manipulation or you want uh, transactions. Which, needs, which are needed to be verifying some further down transaction. You don't put data on blockchain just for because it's a, it can store data because then the, your blockchain will be so heavy that you will be uh, not be able to replicate it across multiple um, uh, devices and the devices has to have huge amount of resources to actually manage their copy of the blockchain. So, so blockchain is not a data repository, it can, Deposit data, but that that just for deposition repository of data, you don't use blockchain. The other thing about NFT also in NFT, the actual picture is not necessarily on the blockchain. Usually, an URI is uh, in the uh, put into the smart contract for the NFT, and uh, therefore uh, you you know you don't start putting in Ethereum blockchain all those images because then Ethereum will be extremely heavy and. Uh, it may not even fit in a block. So, so, uh, so therefore, uh, you know, don't. If your main problem is data repository, don't uh, think about blockchain. Yeah, okay. I would and like professor, to add, one more question for you is that which is the international standard you had in mind uh, talking about the blockchain technology? Like, is it from IEC or EN kind of thing? No, no. I, IEC will not do blockchain uh, standards. So. Uh, the one I am uh, involved in is an IEEE power uh, power uh, system society uh, blockchain uh, standardization effort. Uh, IEEE would be um, one place where standardization efforts might be going on. There may be multiple different ones I'm not aware of. I only know about this one. Uh, there, uh, uh, there may be ISO standards. Uh, there may be IEEE standards, but IEC is more electro, uh, you know, more on uh, uh, electrical uh, engineering and communication related uh, uh, standards. So they, I don't think that they will go and get into blockchain standards. So we have uh, ISO uh, standard, ISO T uh, TC three zero seven standard is there. I've, I've actually mm -hmm. posted the link in the chat for whoever is interested in the standardization. Please refer yes. to it. Thank you, Venu. Yeah, thank you, Venu. So that is great answer. And any other, uh, Dr. Shiv, I think there are not many questions more. So we should go ahead uh, with the next one. Dr. Shiv. So in the meantime, I have one question. I have one question, maybe from Anil Pandey. Uh, so yes. Anil has been raising the hand. Anil, uh, yes. you can speak now. If... Hello. Yes, Anil. Yes, please. Go ahead. Please go ahead. My audible. Yes, you are. Yes, please. Uh, actually, I wanted to know the uh, digital ethics in the blockchain. How it can be implemented? Digital what? Digital ethics. 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 
I think uh, I think uh, Mr. Shukla sir can answer. Professor, yeah. I don't know what, uh, you know, there are a lot of aspects of digital ethics like anti plagiarism to uh, behaving correctly, uh, behaving politically correctly on social media. So, which uh, uh, digital ethic is, uh, is being talked about here? Or Professor Lakshmi, you can. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, what I can, uh, based on whatever knowledge I have and what I feel is maybe something like. See, if you say that, uh, if, suppose I am involved in some kind of activity, uh, whether it is social media or any kind of thing, and based on uh, my uh, transactions or kind of activity, maybe we can try to derive whether the ethics is followed or not from the blockchain data. I think a blockchain helps us to derive some things uh, if you are able to store the details properly, the way the, the details and all are accessed or carried out on the, the digital world. I don't know, maybe is it uh, the right thing uh, for the question? Yeah, and uh, Mr. Ono, you will like to address this uh, question about digital ethics and blockchain. Yeah, I put it behind the both two person. Uh, for me, it's um, it's it's a way how how you 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 store the data and how you organize it. And yeah, that's that's the the way, um, yeah, I think with it. But for me, it's a difficult question to answer, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll take it with us as a forum and try to find out the answers from other panelists also, I think. That is how we like to proceed. And uh, with that, uh, dear panelists, uh, Mr. Ono, Madam Lakshmi and Professor Sandeep, uh, thanks a lot for sharing your knowledge and uh, interacting with our panelists and myself and uh, clarifying a lot of my own queries, actually, which may be generic uh, from this audience. I'm really thankful to all of you. And over to Dr. Shiv, if you are there. Yes, sir, I am there. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. It has been a very interactive and I think very knowledge. Knowledge has flown basically throughout the digital, you know, virtual uh, room we are having today. And uh, Dr. Sandeep Sukla, uh, Ono Pastor, and that Lakshmi Shari, and and uh, hats to you uh, as a moderator, Dr. Satya Gupta, sir. It has been really wonderful. And uh, Sunil, sir. Uh, though he had he was heading for a meeting so i think uh, but uh, really it has been a very informative and a uh, lot of questions were answered in a very simplistic way and i though i have a really lot of interest in the in the blockchain and got uh, good knowledge out of uh, the, uh, such a uh, really the learned and the eminent uh, uh, speakers on the panel Thank you very much. It has been really, really great learning. And uh, so with this, uh, uh, in the next 15 to 20 minutes, we will be basically uh, closing the event, which has been a, one of the, I believe, that, that, that really it was uh, no marketing talk. And uh, it was totally basically focused on the technology and the trends and the use cases, the applications, which is basically uh, being used. So. Very, very, you know, everyone tried uh, basically to give a lot of information. So with that, sir, uh, uh, I will seek a few concluding remarks from you, Satya, sir. And then when you, you get ready for giving a brief about the, uh, you know, that how that uh, you are, we are trying to create the community. And I will, before that, I will give a, you know, the next move, what we are going to do. We have already planned a couple of uh, basically physical and the webinar me, events. Yeah. So we will be declaring soon, uh, one in Hyderabad, Hyderabad Center of IT. They have asked us that they want a physical, uh, you know, that uh, event in Hyderabad. Yeah. So we'll be doing that. And maybe a lot of, I am sure, after this, a lot of demand will come from, looks like uh, Prague is looking like, oh, okay, why I should not also? <laughs> so, and, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, yeah, there will be a lot of demand and I will seek the, support from the from time to time from different uh, speakers uh, so i will i will again bother you from time to time because you have impressed uh, 
all, all the participants so much, all the audience, and there has been demand that once more, it's like once more. Okay. So, and uh, we, mm -hmm. recently we are planning one uh, in the, you know, that how the uh, blockchain can be basically uh, in uh, using the IPv6 and using the, uh, because it's a next generation network, next, next generation internet is going to be on the blockchain based. So we are going to plan along with the Nixty. So we are going to plan a innovative uh, uh, basically type of event. So from the experts, I will take the advice. Uh, I'll, I'll bother you. And then accordingly, we'll plan a, uh, another great event shortly. So there are a couple of, uh, the give us give us a little time because we'll have a, our board meeting next week and then we'll come back to you with the more. And then uh, since we have the information, we'll about your contact details. So we'll certainly pass on the information. And uh, now, sir, uh, you, you, would you like to take a concluding remark for the few minutes and then uh, when yeah, would you would be able to give the, uh, how, to, how to create the community and then, and then the, the most important uh, job of basically uh, summarizing and uh, you know that, that the man who is really advising us is our CEO, Dr. K.V. Damodaran. So then later on, I will request him. Please go ahead, sir. Dr. Shiv, let me just... Yeah. Sir. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Shiv. When, when you your, uh, you know, when, uh, sir, one minute. When you your, I will uh, just, uh, yeah, please, go ahead, sir. Yeah. So basically, and just oh, the normality acting up and what of thanks will be done by you is there. But let me first of all thank all yeah. of you, the organizers, the event participants, and the audience to be there and making it a success. But I will be, I will, I will be failing in my duty. I will be failing in my duty if I don't mention two, three names and especially getting Mr. Ono, Mr. Chris and Mr. Andrea to this conference from the international community. For that, I'm really thankful to Mr. Uh, R.K. Sahab, the, Sahab, the Seven, nine, eight. Indian Blockchain Alliance chairman who could help us to get Mr. Chris and Mr. Ono to add so much value. One minute, sir, one minute. Professor Akhil. And Kamlesh to get Mr. Mr. Andrea there. So these are big value addition to our, and these have to be. I will also, failing in my duty, if I don't thank my friend, Dr. Bhavija, ex Mehdi, who could help us to get uh, basically Dr. Murthy to speak. And you have seen the presentation given by Dr. Murthy and a great addition to the knowledge. And also we like to thank uh, Dr. Sharat, our chief guest for the day who could get us introduced to Dr. Lakshmi Ishwari. You have seen what she's doing and what she knows actually. So th that is what I want to tell. In addition, I will also like to mention General Pant, who has been a great source of inspiration. And despite of being out of the country, he could send his speech, a very inspiring speech, and also deputy his deputy, our friend, Mr. Narendra Nath, to be there and who made a great presentation and same way to Mr. Arvind also. But the, on the conclusion, let me say it has been a great learning for me. We started that blockchain basically, uh, as people feel it is the foundation for Bitcoin, Ethereum and cryptocurrency kind of thing. But that is just a tip of the iceberg actually. Every sector can be benefited by blockchain as we have seen and it can really, society as a whole can be benefited. It can bring efficiency, it can become security. It can bring trust actually. That is what I like to use the word trust actually, trust and, and as I had 
thought it is exactly can do that and a lot of work is happening on the government side we were not knowing a lot of huge cases are already there they are in plan they are in execution and we have to learn from our international experts also so i am really benefited but dr shiv you have a big role to play because a lot of people are showing interest to develop the community to increase our membership to increase our partnership i'm really thankful for the iit local chapter chairs so many of them are showing interest in skill building capacity building joining us joining the forum so lot of work for us uh, as the founder of this blockchain for productivity forum which we registered as a trust actually so because i believe in blockchain cooperative kind of structure actually and that is what this trust has been basically structured or organized as so with that i will really like to thank all of you for sir, this opportunity sir, sir before before you say that our blockchain man the grandpa um, uh, who could not join uh, raj kapoor uh, sir he is a yeah please the, sir yeah, are you getting me mr yeah. he is there mr no, raj sir, he, could not, he could not join it but he is the man that uh, who got the Ono Bastler and the Chris um, who connected us yes. and uh, who is the man who gave me a lot of yeah that is what I mentioned I already mentioned you doctor yeah, yeah. okay sir yeah so he is exactly. the man who really I really I all. would like to thank Mr Rajpur and that is what yeah. I have already done also sir. because we got uh, Mr Ono Mr Chris because of him and it was a great learning from both of them the because they are doing it at all they are doing everything and they have a aspiration and a willingness to help our people here in india our startups our our enthusiast and a forum like us so and his organization and the kamlesh organization they are going to help us to generate the blockchain based certificate for the all the participants sir oh that will be great actually that will be great and that is that was my promise to the participants also yes sir we and are even i to... myself will like to have a certificate for me actually <laughs> so that i can store it safely sure, sir. <laughs> okay. we can show that sir all right so with that when you will you like to take it how to sure sure, sure 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 yeah sure Thank you so much uh, for the audience for participating, having the patience to stick with us for a long time today. Appreciate uh, uh, you know it's been a long day for everybody here, so appreciate your pa uh, time and patience. So first of all, uh, special mention to uh, Dr. Shiv for uh, giving the impetus needed for uh, the entire event, and uh, special mention to our uh, esteemed panelists. Uh, of course, uh, I'll start with my chairman of the board, uh, Mr. Satya Gupta, and of course, uh, Damodaran sir, who is our CEO, uh, and uh, uh, our board members, Akhil Damodaran. And uh, we we are uh, very happy that the event went well without any hiccups, and I'm very glad that we were able to answer a lot of questions. Uh, for those who are wondering how to reach us, our website is right up. We have posted our link uh, on the uh, the chat. Of course, we have our LinkedIn page. Please do connect with us. Uh, and we are pretty decentralized. So, you know, I stay in Hyderabad. Shiv sir is in Delhi. And we people, are, uh, our CEO is from Bangalore. So we are pretty decentralized. Please feel free to reach us in whichever way you could. And we will try to answer as much as possible. We do have our options for memberships as well. We would request you to kind of uh, kindly check that out, and uh, thank you. A special mention to our uh, experts today, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Mr. Sandeep Shukla from IIT Kanpur, Ono Pesler from um, Netherlands, and then of course um, I would also uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Kamlesh Nagware, and of course uh, other team members as well who contributed in the success of this event. Thank you so much for your support. We will expect expect this going forward. Thank our you, Ivan. Yeah, Thank you. Uh, yeah, the man man who has worked behind the scene, Professor Doctor Akhil Damodaran. He is the man who has been basically, you know, taking all the pain for the marketing and uh, inviting, sending all this, getting it designed. He has helped a lot, and the man who is 
just behind the curtain who will keep very low profile but he is a he is a basically motivating motivating force and i am bothering him a lot is the dr k v damodaran so uh, akhil sir would you like to say anything before the dr damodaran comes uh first of all thank you so much for the opportunity shiv sir uh, uh seriously uh, to be very frank is a one of the biggest event uh, uh, happening in india seriously it's not india. because it's a event exactly. it's really, really a big one of the biggest event and i want to really thank all the guests all the panelists all the people coming internationally also so you have taken your time to come here and i want to thank our chairman uh, uh, dr satya gupta dr Sh- shiv uh venu uh, venu and uh, dr kv damodar because the core team is very very important pillar by which this has happened and mm-hmm. honestly speaking to all of you when we started we thought to make it a big event but we never thought it can become a mega event <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and it has become the bahubali of the year <laughs> yes yeah. yeah 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 and and i want to talk, uh, tell all participants that uh, this is the start this is only a beginning and whatever energy and you, you felt uh, don't dissipate it we will come back again uh, you please yeah. follow us in our linkedin profile and our website because there are a lot of updates coming up for you all and we will make it a big blockchain for today ecosystem in the current time to come yeah, thank you so ba- much for your time we you. barely uh, scratch the surface and yeah, we yeah. Uh, we promise to uh, conduct series of webinars to have a detailed discussion of each topic with experts and panelists uh, going forward so please look out for that thanks venu uh, sunil sir and priyanka you are there both of you sunil sir and priyanka priyanka had been a really one of the great coordinator uh, so priyanka yes, is there yeah priyanka please uh, switch on your video if you can and in the meantime i'll request sunil sir who is a basically uh, you know the one of the force who Who, who who basically with him i i worked on the you know the anchor in the morning we, uh, in the two days you have seen the great work from the anchor that is a brain child and i worked out with the sunil sir and he is a president of the broadcast uh, engineering society and he is a additional director general of the prasar bharti the uh, the national uh, dd and also he is the man Uh, he is the, who has really helped a lot um, you know that he looks he is very low profile but he is a very strong personality and when he talks it looks like you know that he captures so fast and he looks like a, one of the expert is talking so sunil sir would you like to as a concluding remark would you like to say anything yes uh, dr shiv extremely grateful to dr satya uh, and uh, the very uh, visioned panelist the very visioned speakers uh, especially from it kanpur uh, from the pmo uh, from it kar uh, bhai all the speakers have been extremely good and to the broadcast fraternity also there are a lot of new people who have joined from the broadcast industry also from the officers uh, uh, cadre also they have got uh, illuminated so well on this technology they were earlier not exposed to this this is the first time the forum has organized such a big event uh, in association with the it with the bes so <coughs> grateful to my audience grateful to the uh, viewers who have connected across and benefited from these talks and uh, to the blockchain forum and the panelists and the speakers so a very nice celebration i'll say a very well concluded <coughs> and now as has been spoken it appears to be one of the biggest events uh, which i have seen uh, in the past uh, years since the time the pandemic has set the it has just surpassed the physical <coughs> events itself so congratulations to dr shiv to you for organizing Dr. Ajay Kumar and all the team members uh, who are present here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, we, uh, Priyanka, you are there. Yes, sir. Uh, please, uh, you know that you have really coordinated well, and uh, you have taken a lot of pain. Uh, you know that coordinating, uh, coordinating with different panelists, speakers. So please, how you felt? How, uh, what is your opinion about that? And uh, how does what do you say there? so the event uh, was it's really very great and um, uh, the thing is that i mainly had uh, firstly done these types of things so if i have done any mistake so i just want right. to say sorry to everybody well. you, you have done wonderfully well priyanka it was a really great support without your support it was not possible such a great uh, success was not possible so you have done wonderfully well and thank you sir
Thank you, thank you, Priyanka. So from IIT alumni and IIT, uh, basically we have, uh, you know, number of chairs uh, here, and uh, I see here Parag Valinkar and uh, anyone else is there from uh, IIT Governing Council or the chairs? Then may I take the liberty to uh, request Parag sir on the behalf of the IT chairs? Uh, yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you. Actually, uh, I'm really delighted to attend all these things because I think, Dr. Shiv, uh, if you would have not invited me, I think I would have, I, 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 maybe I have missed all this. Uh, uh, what latest knowledge actually uh, miss we thought that blockchain is just limited to uh, <laughs> limited to, to, to the uh, you are this currency digital currency or something like that but it is it is everywhere so i think uh, in future we 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 we, we, we cannot ex escape this blockchain and uh, we i see a lot of opportunity so let us get connected and uh, uh, take the uh, advantage of this. Uh, I, I think I will be happy to at, uh, uh, get attached with this forum. It is really interesting. Though I am not from the uh, software side, uh, though electronics engineer, telecommunication engineer, but not uh, in this particular computer field, but uh, it is really interesting. And, Asmi, uh, sir, your, your area is the one which is going to lay pillar for blockchain. So you, you will play the key role. Oh, <laughs> definitely. Uh, let us see. So, and uh, it is really interesting to know all these things. And uh, uh, it is great uh, that our Sunil sir is also there. And so many uh, IIT <clears throat> members I saw here uh, in this. So, let us hope we, we uh, the, you, way, the way blockchain grows, we will we'll also, our relationship also will grow. Thank <laughs> you, Paragji. Being the candidate, I remember that uh, when I was trying to have a uh, set up a center of excellence in Mumbai and Hyderabad. Then I had a lot of uh, basically yeah, yeah. Uh, time. I have to take a lot of pain in order to convince that yes, blockchain is the technology which is coming up, and let us set up a center of excellence. Yes, so, yes. Thanks for being yes, uh, candid. Now um, I will not take uh, much time. So may I request Dr. K. V. Damodaran, our uh, CEO and the man who had been uh, my advisor. I will say that uh, other than the uh, Dr. Satya Gupta. So I take a lot of advice from uh, K.V. Damodaran, sir. sir. <laughs> Thank you, Shiva. I have a word to you. Yeah, please, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Please uh, go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you, Shiva, making me the last word. <laughs> so very excellent presentation, very brilliant presentation, eminent panelists. All we enjoyed the two days program. So an excellent and very, very, very learning process for all of us. So after concluding the three-day program, uh, two-day program, we learned three things. One is that it is a tsunami. It is going to engulf the entire world tomorrow, today or tomorrow. We have to prepare for it. Second thing it is allow the lamb. Means every problem, there is a solution. If there is secure and safety, so will be there. Third thing is that it has booster dose. It is. It will definitely boost the economy, boost the country, and uh, as a booster dose to a person, it is a booster dose to the country. It will enhance our economic capacity, capability, everything. So these three things are very important. So, for passing, so I have some few thoughts on the blockchain technology as a whole. One is that uh, having worked in the regulatory area <clears throat> from the airport sector first. Airport sector was first to open to private participation by the government. They have agreed with some terms and conditions, quality parameter and pricing, and they have opened it for the private and some airport are given to private operator. They have taken charge and they developed the airport with a huge investment. When after a few years, a regulator has been set up. Regulators come out with a new regulation. In the regulatory prescription, they said regulator prescription will be final on the pricing. So regulator has not agreed with the government. They have gone, gone with different pricing options. So ultimately what happened, every operator has gone to court for challenging these orders. And finally, it has taken a lot of time to settle. So 
how we can address such eventuality because today regulation is not the regulator is not in place today we are developing blockchain every case every sector it is developing now tomorrow some regulatory is different what how will face it second thing is what i could see is uh, from the telecom regulation uh, we were regulating the mobile service etc before that uh, many of you will be knowing that uh, there are pager service pager service were very prominent and a lot of investment has gone to it all of a sudden mobile picked up so much marketing market uh, mobile has vanished uh, the pager has vanished investment has gone lot of employment has also lost similarly pco was one of the business because of mobile pco business also stopped but alternative has been given and uh, somehow it has uh, picked up and uh, every person has find to some other alter options so in this situation when the uh, blockchain technology taken care of everything what will happen to the already investment made by other technologies whether it is a uh, upgradation whether transformation will be very easy smooth etc we need to research on this area third thing is uh, now we understood that from the law uh, speakers discussion etc expert discussion this is third party third party is totally eliminated including the government agencies are not uh, in the picture when the transaction takes place in such a case uh, how government revenue is ensured that you know but he will misuse such a facility and go without a no without a notice of the government such a things also to be taken care of this system and with this i thank the uh, chairman and uh, dr shiva for thought thinking of such a wonderful event and uh, concluding such an eminent efficient manner and also i thank all the panelists uh, all the speakers and particularly chris and uh, bk murthy sir professor sandeep shukla madam lakshmi and uh, mr gonu gonu sunil sir and other eminent speakers for sparing their time and giving their valuable thought on us and this is uh, as uh, many of our colleagues has told this is our in starting we will come up with several such uh, webinars seminars and uh, conferences in future we welcome all of you and we wish you all the best for future all the best sir. back to you sir sir. you have given in such a nice summary and that shows the type of the experience you have from the corporates like you have been in the airport sector as an advisor you have been into the telecom regulatory authority you have been into icwi you have been a joint economic advisor of the telecom regulatory the financial analyst in the uh, competition commission of india you got a such a diverse experience and uh, your couple of minutes talk so is that the type of you know that the way you have brought the challenges the research areas even you touched uh, it is really uh, extremely wonderful sir uh, you have you have given uh, some up and our audience such a lovely audience you know that uh, uh, you know otherwise uh, most of the uh, online uh, the virtual uh, webinars you know that they have yeah, a lot of challenges and uh, you know lot of disturbances there and hardly we had any here and it has gone so uh, you know every last uh, audience that uh, you have done a wonderful job sir okay damodaran sir you want to say anything sir uh, unmute yourself unmute yourself sir yes sir no uh, our special thank to the participant without their support this could not have been this much a success i appreciate all the participants for sparing their time and uh, keeping tightly with their schedule and uh, be with us, be, being with us for all the time very very nice to see such events uh, it shows that uh, blockchain is getting momentum now and it will continue to we will be supported we also expect that such a participation and uh, Involvement will be in future also. Ono has given us really valuable time, and uh, same with the Dr. Sandeep Sukla. I requested him uh, back on the demand of the some of the audience that he should be back here. And uh, okay, he agreed that okay, I will take some uh, time out, and he has come back on the panel discussion also. It was a really great value addition 
by all the panelists, whosoever. I don't want to name, take name again and again. I do because we are not here for the marketing, but you know that your your you know contribution is sir. It has really given us a lot of boost, inspiration, and the motivation. And so, one, now, one more point. Can I mention, sir? One more point. Please, sir. Please, please. Yeah. It's now. Actually, yeah. Because anyone can now, speak. Now, yeah. Yeah. Now the data privacy is very important. Data yeah. is a supremacy here. Exactly. It is safety and security. So, exactly. what will happen? Every company will have its data. It will not be shared to others. So, what will happen? Some company will capture so many data, and they will become monopolist. How we can address that? That is also an idea where we have to research sir. on that. We have uh, Jack Maher, uh, journal mentor, our East. Would you like to say anything, uh, Ajay? Ajay Ji, unmute yourself and please. Okay, okay. Thank you, Dr. Sivya Kumar Ji. It was a, it was a great, uh, great seminar uh, on the blockchain. We have learned a lot. It was a great uh, effort put by uh, yourself <coughs> and uh, Dr. Satya sir and all the panelists. We have enjoyed very much and uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Next, uh, I'll say, uh, I'll, can I take the sequence? Uh, Kamlesh Nagware, then uh, Niran, Dr. Niranjan, then Kathleen Naidu from uh, South Africa, our friend. He's also there, so I'll request him. So this is, let it be the sequence. And then uh, uh, Mr. VK Pandey, sir, Brigadier Pandey, sir, because he has attended the full, uh, very, without moving here, he attended. So later on, Mahimal. Kamlesh Nagware, Dr. Niranjan. <coughs> Kamlesh Naidu, yeah, then, uh, then Brigadier Pandey. <laughs> good evening, Dr. Niranjan here. Sir. Uh, it is uh, um, this two days uh, boot camp uh, uh, on the specialized, uh, you know, blockchain technologies and uh, its enormous applications has opened the floodgate. In fact, floodgate, <clears throat> uh, the avenue, and it will spread from here. This is a platform from where it will spread across all the uh, professional uh, institutions of repute, government corporate sectors, government bodies, and all the entities. It, it will take a very, very long lead. I, I, I must thank uh, Satya Gupta, uh, Dr. Sri Kumar Ji, <coughs> and many more. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, concerned who have done uh, considerably uh, put on uh, uh, efforts, uh, not only efforts and given directions, how we can translate this very technology into various applications and for various uh, services. Uh, I hope this will, uh, in coming future, we also in IET centers uh, will spread and take uh, to a greater height. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you very you. much. Before before going to the you know the sequence I have given, uh, before the Dr. Sandeep Sukla and uh, uh, our honor pencilor they uh, pencilor they leave. Uh, can the, you give us some suggestion of what is your feeling or opinion about the event or the future? Uh, how you can make it better? Sandeep Sukla and honor pencilor pencilor. Yeah, <clears throat> well, thank you. Thank you all for, for invitation and, and also to uh, Mr. Kapua that he invited me for this uh, event. And in general, I think uh, to, to buzz this more and talk about it more, the experience to, to connect to each other and make this more and well connection to, to more possibilities. And I think a good topic is also about the international part because we can learn also on other, other, other territories what's going on there and how to bake the bridge. So, and it's very helpful also for me for getting really good picture of India, what's going on. And I, I'm, I'm really honored that I'm a, a bit basic more into India's uh, situation. So thank you. Thank you all for, for having me here on the, on the panel. Thank you. No, now Sandeep Sukla, sir, uh, yeah, your you advice, your, uh, yeah, please. Yeah, I think this is a much needed event. There is a lot more we can do in terms of uh, awareness about blockchain, its uh, usage uh, uh, in various uh, uh, various applications, as well as uh, also ma making people aware of where to not use blockchain. Right. So, uh, you know, there are places where people just blindly want to use blockchain because it's it's new and it's cool, 
And so that has to be also uh, done. And that, therefore, as you said, that you are planning to do many more events. And I think that will play a very instrumental role in uh, making people more aware, more conscious about uh, uh, advantages of blockchain, pros and cons, uh, the uh, blockchain trilemma that uh, uh, people talk about, that uh, security, decentralized decentralization, and the scalability, right? So there was a question also about that, that scalability versus uh, security, but there is also how much decentralized you want to make it. Like permission blockchain are limited decentralization, whereas the uh, uh, on-permission blockchains, public blockchains are fully, fully decentralized. But even there also, we are seeing our research shows that most of the, most of the uh, coins in those uh, uh, blockchains are owned by top 100 wallets or top 1,000 wallets. So which means that if we go for proof of stake, we are going to actually be very very centralized, even though it looks decentralized. So, so those kind of consciousness uh, has to be built in people because otherwise people might think that government is unnecessarily diverting uh, uh, cryptocurrency. But there are real fears uh, and and founded really well founded reasons for worrying about such things. So, so there is a lot more debate and and a uh, lot more understanding of cryptocurrency, especially for small investors, how, uh, what is the risk? This is also something that I would think that uh, your organization can bring to the public and uh, that will be actually uh, really of uh, huge value to uh, getting the benefits of blockchain and not being encumbered with uh, the uh, <laughs> bad sides of the blockchain. So I think, I Thank congratulate you, you all to, yeah. to that you did this and are going to do more. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I noted it and also in one-to-one -one talk, we discussed it and uh, we are committed. We will do it, sir, certainly. And uh, in a very near future, we'll uh, basically. Now, um, the sequence continued. Kamlesh Nagwari, sir, Kathleen, and uh, um, then Brigadier Pandey. So, Kathleen, would you like to... Take it uh, because Kamlesh has not switched on your, his video. Kathleen, you are there. Hi, uh, Dr. Shiv, can Kathleen, you hear me? our friend from South Africa. Yeah, please. Okay, great. Uh, uh, good to see you again. It's on Dr. your Shiv. video. Uh, your video. Yeah, my video is not working at the moment. So sorry okay, about okay, please that. go ahead. Yeah, I try to put on video, but uh, there's a problem here. Okay. So, 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 thank you uh, for the invite to to the webinar. It's certainly been. Uh, you know, a rich uh, 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 environment for, for, for really robust debate. And I see it's very well-rounded, right from triple P partnership to the cutting edge of trade and, and uh, some economic models there as well. So, so um, uh, you know, uh, I think, I think uh, that... There seems to be some problem. Kathleen and Kamlesh, you are there? No. Uh, Pandey, sir? So he's rejoining. So he's rejoining us. I guess I can see he's rejoining. Students that includes for everybody yeah. uh, going forward uh, as a global community. Great. So, uh, Pane, sir, would like to say two words? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shiv, uh, and the organizers of this wonderful uh, webinar. And I re really enjoyed every bit of it. I uh, <coughs> could not attend early morning session yesterday. Uh, I could join only after 12 o'clock. But let me tell you that it has opened my eyes. I had been requesting Dr. Shiv uh, for the last about five or six months that please tell me what is blockchain because in the mind the moment you speak of blockchain it is the bitcoin so perhaps the bitcoin and the blockchain were uh, synonymous with each other and today in the last two days deliberation it has been very amply clarified that what this technology is and as uh, uh, dr satyan gupta said that the bitcoin is only tip of the iceberg where the blockchain is uh, used. 
Now, in my opinion, this technology is coming and it's coming in a very, very big way, like a tsunami, like somebody said. And we have to be prepared for this uh, so that uh, uh, we are not left behind. In my opinion, this uh, technology is going to encompass every part and every aspect of our uh, life and not a very far distant time, but in a very, very short time. The quality of presentations all, by all the speakers were excellent and I have requested all of you through chat that uh, their presentation and the slides should be shared, which Dr. Satyan yesterday said that it will be uh, shared. So once again, my congratulations to all the office bearers of uh, Blockchain Productivity Forum and thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Uh, Prabhu Shukla, you. you are there? Prabhu, you are there? Dr. Gunasagar Reddy, you are there? Okay, Kamlesh, you are back. So, I think anyone want to say, so with that, we'll close it. Anyone, it's open to anyone. Bhatia, sir, you are there? Professor Bhatia, sir. Uh, professor uh, Akhil, can you make uh, hello? Professor, uh, hello? professor, uh, uh, yeah, sir. professor sir. Akhil, can you make uh, Professor H S Vadia, Harjinder Singh Vadia, as a panelist? Kamlesh, okay, yes, Kamlesh, go ahead. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, overall this um, event actually really good, and 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 uh, unfortunately, I think. All the government officials in the different departments are present here. I is very happy to know, like <clears throat> all the department and official understand the blockchain and what are the importance they're given. I think now is very easy for all the corporate on the individuals to uh, boost the blockchain economy in India. And because like earlier, because I was a blockchain from last six years, so earlier is very hard to explain or very hard to convince someone what blockchain can do. Now we are uh, talking about the like Prasar uh, Bharti, Mr. Sunil, and uh, uh, Premier student like IIT Kanpur doing the blockchain implementation production, and Dr. Shiv and uh, Kavita Madhuran, and many such, Dr. Satya Sen, all know about the blockchain and importance and putting this effort to uh, put the blockchain technology in front of, uh, to boost the Indian economy. So I think that is all about, I think it's really good. And thank you for inviting and be part of this event. Professor Professor Akhil, can you make the Professor Dr. Yeah. Gunasekar Reddy yeah, and see, others? See, see, yeah, I'm now, now I'm online. Yeah, yeah they are made. Make the Gunasekar Reddy also, sir? Yeah, Bhatia, sir, sir, Bhatia, sir please. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Can I say something now? Yeah, please, sir, please. Yeah. I want to first congratulate both of you mainly. Of course, the whole team is there. Dr. Shiv, Shiv Kumarji and also the Satyaji. Both of you have done a wonderful job. And I'm really very happy, although I had a difficulty in joining yesterday. But uh, thereafter, brother, completely I have attended every bit of it. And as you have been saying that it's coming as a tsunami, and I consider black, um, this blockchain as a breaking all the chains of hindrance for our trust what you're working in a technical domain or a social domain or anything of that nature because that's what it really revealed from this one. And it is a technology, not for tomorrow. It is from the today itself. That's wonderful. And each speaker as in the form of presentation of the papers, panelists, and uh, people who are really worked in this one with a lot of experience and other things, they really poured every bit of it on all of us. And we are delighted about it. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to attain this. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Shiv. Thank you, all the team. Uh, Gunasekar Reddy, sir, can you switch on your video and come? Prabhupada Sukla, can you do also? Dr. Reddy, sir, can you do it? Can you speak? Try it for Dr. Gunasekar. Yeah, yeah. Unmute, unmute yourself, uh, Reddy, sir. Sir, uh, good evening. Uh, I'm, uh, I really, I'm, I have no words to say the way 
three giant organizations. The first time I can, I can say that I'm seeing such a wonderful program of colgamation of the highly professional institutes. First is Broadcast Society of India. I really want to congratulate them. This is their first brainchild. But you know very well, most of us are also members of what you call Broadcast Society of India, as well as the next one is IET. But it's not the least, but the inspirator for this program is the Blockchain Productivity Council Forum under the leadership of the chairman. Uh, such a great event as uh, so many people have, uh, what to call, not very clear about the blockchain technology. So, sir, I, the leaders on the forefront of Broadcast Society of India, Dr. <laughs> Sunil, sir, uh, sorry, Sunil ji, under your leadership, and uh, meticulously the program was, two days program was wonderfully handled, which uh, you know, I have a great applause. It's one of the very successful program, which enlightened so many of the participants, great information on what is exactly happening. Sir, in particularly the, the moderator, Dr. Shiv Kumar, he has shown, I can say that, there was no interest one year before blockchain technology by even on the IET council and IET COP members. Now the interest shown, or uh, persuasion, what you call, he created in this forefront is extremely excellent. And we could really see some reality in what you call penetrating into the wonderful promising area. So this, I hope this type of trust enthusiasm and professionalism with the three organizations have taken will take us into very high heights and we'll be able to do a wonderful job on this forefront technology. Thank you very much. I'm very, very happy to be associated for the last two days with this program because I'm, as I said, I'm a council member. I was a past vice president of IET and I know so many seniors, and uh, by name, I don't want to what to call Thank take you, sir. Thank time. you, sir. It's so really... many senior members of IET is there, and BS, and the Broadcast Society of India, they have all made this program wonderfully well. And finally, my great thanks to the uh, what you call Black Chain Productivity Thank Council. You, Thank you very much, sir. We have the Prabodh Sukla. Can you unmute yourself? He's a uh, my friend, my younger brother, and you know that he's a, uh, in the corporate office. He's a BSNL in the BSNL. He's an official. And incidentally, we worked together on the one of the technology INET, which was the PSPDN in the early days. So, Prabodh. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sue. Really, it was a great experience today while seeing you as a leading all whole the organization. I remember those days in 1991, we were working in INET in Department of Telecommunication. You are my boss that time and uh, you are leading a, a, a one international seminar. I can say that it was a great experience for me also because blockchain is going to be a big revolution. As we say that time, 33 decades back, the data communication was coming in the India. And the, again, under the great leadership of you people, Dr. Satya also, because I have a good uh, uh, knowledge about uh, the NGN that time I, I was interacted with him. It is again going to be a game changing. Uh, what I realized that being a telecom person, I can say that uh, India is in the era which we can lead internationally, we can say that. Every time we were <laughs> looking after the ITU standard and other things those days, because that time the uh, Geneva is uh, leading and other international forums were leading. But this time I am very much sure because a lot of uh, dignitary, dignitaries who are paneling the, this whole uh, event, they are going to lead. And I can say at this moment, after uh, listening you all people, you are going to make the standards for that. Whatever the panelist was telling that. I really appreciate and I, I am very... Thankful to you also to given us uh, the uh, this opportunity to share with all of you. Thank you.
Any other? Uh, Kamlesh, I think you have already spoken. Any other? Sir, we are very much interested to get the certificate of participation certainly, of this wonderful yes, event. Certainly. Thank you very much. With that, Sabiko, Namaskar. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. have made it successful. Kamlesh, yeah. would you like to say anything? Your voice is not coming. No, no, actually, I already. Yeah, you already spoke. So, yeah. with that, uh, thank you very much to all. You have made it successful. Actually, it's a really great teamwork and uh, including the audience. So, all of you have made it successful. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, great work, Shukumar ji. We thank could you see sir. you such thank a you, highest potential with you. It's called a uh, moka uh, milna chahiye. Hindi mein bolta hai. Then you 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 will be able to know the capabilities. Thank you. Sir. I think this is one of the wonderful platform. I could see you tireless, continuously moderating all the programs. Thank you, you. Thank you, sir. 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 I have, with your blessing, I have taken as an honorary secretary general. He said, no, I defer. <laughs> he said, it, you are going to make it secretary general honorable. <laughs> <laughs> That's also, see, so your thing was also sir, very good. You are having, sir, uh, yeah, yes. ka pyaar hai. thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Good evening, Bhatia ji. Good evening, Mr. Basar ji. All, we hope we'll personally meet this time after a long time. We yeah, like the council sir. meeting. <laughs> We are eagerly yes, waiting you, for, a, for a wonderful, fruitful meeting. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank sir. you, yeah. Damodaran, sir. You, you have done excellently well, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. If I exit, then the webinar will be closed. So I mean, so I, think I have I can to name the uh, great yeah. Puruji Gupta ji because he is such a uh, motivator for this.